have to fend for yourself this dinner time. We're flat out at work. Skin. Put four pounds on the worktop. Mm, try not to spend it all at once. Nice shirt. Nice? Yeah, with it. Yeah, well, it's going back to its shop. Why? Because I've just gone off it. It's funny, that. Have you got any of that hand gel? That bloke just sneezed into his paw and then opened the door with it. No. Oh, so it's just a big free-for-all for James, then, yeah. Could you uh, wave or something when it's my go? Cheers. Your go has gone, Miss McIntyre. You're winding me up. You're five minutes late. Could you be a bit more anal? Doctors are very busy people. While you were buying your coffee, I had to let someone else in. You had to? You missed your slot. So give me a new one. Please. By all means. Monday. Three o'clock, OK? I'll have gangrene in it by then. 2.30, any better? Today. Monday. Enjoying yourself, you power-crazed midget. Not keen on Monday, then. Huh. I've got a great big appointment book, industrial shoulder pads and a swivel chair. Oh, you've so made it. Yeah, do you want to do us a favour and just call the Burns unit? We should look where you're going. Listen, a simple sorry would go a long way. Yeah, well, Mum says apologise makes you look weak. So I don't anymore. Not even to her. It drives her insane. <sighs> um, well, if you don't pull through, who shall say croaked it? Uh, Dave. Tina, I know. I'm not buying you a new shirt. Nah, don't worry about it. It looks better now than what it did ten minutes ago. Well, yeah, you said it. And it was for the charity bag as well. Not even the pubs are that desperate. <laughs> well, uh, minute you're around. Okay. So was you like born angry? Or do you have some sort of personality disorder? FYI, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm like the elephant man. It's hot, swollen, and it's driving me crazy. Yeah, it's um tennis elbow that. Ah, Nick had it as my brother. Did he play tennis? No. Me neither. I have got a very painful complaint with a very stupid name and some midget receptionist from a so-called health centre. Shoulder pads out here. Oh! Won't let me see the doc because I was 0 0.1 zillionth of nanosecond late for my appointment. Gail. The doctor won't see you now. Power goes to people's heads. I wouldn't know, though, because I've never had any. I need a sick note for work. Where's work? Power shop. We've got some lovely new lines in. Three plastic buckets grab you. How much? A pound. Don't we throw this one over you and all? <laughs> Listen, I work in the salon with my grand, so I mean, life doesn't get any more embarrassing than that. Is she training you up? Too right. And I've graduated from... Washing the manky towels to sweep in the manky floor. <gasps> wow. Seriously, though, I mean, if I really knuckle down, ten years' time, who knows? I could be sterilising the combs. Respect. Well, if I ain't died from tennis elbow, I could be flogging my millionth China budget. Yeah, will it still be a pound, though? I mean, if inflation kicks in. Oh, it'll always be a pound shop, trust me. I'm an underachiever. Oh. Right, got that. Um, and if my nan answers, shout because she won't put her ear in it. I don't do waving. Oh, devastating. So uh, I'll probably like maybe give you a call tomorrow and we can like do something. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, and uh, thanks again for throwing a well, not drink all over me. Don't move on. Mentalist attacked me. What? Chill out, Mum. I'm not that bothered. See you later. Oof. Is that eggy bread? It's stinking out, Sam. 
Johnson. I've never made it before. Just fancied it. I suppose I shouldn't complain if you're cooking for yourself. Are you reading this? Yeah. Why? Do you know what it's about? Vaguely. Wouldn't have thought it was you. Tina gave it me. Didn't have her down as a reader. Yeah, well, you didn't have me down as someone who could cook. Well, I suppose appearances can be deceptive. Hmm. Yeah? Aren't you supposed to have a break in like half an hour? Oh, I just uh, felt like knocking off early, that's all. Seen any more of Tina? Yeah. Problem? No. No, no, just wondered. So you two are going out together then? Yeah. And what do you think we're doing? Um, no, nothing. I just, uh, not used to you having a girlfriend, that's all. Well, I'm 17, Mum. Why wouldn't I have a girlfriend? Has she been here much while I've been out? No. I'll tell you what, I'll send her your regards, shall I? about it. I used to have a stepdad. They weren't as bad as mine. Well, it's funny you should say that. All he talks about is cars, because he's a mechanic. Like, but he thinks cars, like, really interest him. I used to have a car. Have your own? Yeah. So where is it? Scrapyard. About this big. David, no car's that big. I know it didn't used to be. But then I drove it into the canal and then the feds picked it up. Mm. So you had a car and you drove it into the canal? Yeah. Why? Sort of like a wedding present for my sister. David, you're so full. Of course, it wasn't the first time I'd been in the canal in a car. It had happened once before, which, as it happens, brings me back to the subject of my stepfather. Forward. Oh, she's a right little fish wrap, I think. Well, she's had a great effect on David, or at least something has. Yes, well, I had noticed that. Ever since he met her, he's been bright, cheerful, looking forward to things. If she's the cause of that, then I'll forgive her anything. <laughs> yes. Well, I can understand that, yes. Oh, hello. Hello, Gran. Hello, Mum. You going out? Uh, just uh, going to your Gran's for uh, half an hour. All right, Tina? Well, I'm not sure after what he's been telling me. Yeah, what was that? No, it's just a little bit of family history, that's all. Anyhow, we'll see you two later. After you. Oh. Um, yeah, hey, now... You can't go back in there now, now you said you're going. And look, whatever they're getting up to in there, there's a million other places that can get up to it. Yeah, you're right. Come on. You all right? Yeah. Why don't I look all right? Pretty good, eh? Uh... What? Not across our Well, that as well. Don't you think it's a bit cramped down here? When I've got, um, a private room upstairs? What? A bedroom? Yeah, all right, there's a bed in it, but there's other stuff as well. <laughs> the bed'll do for me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like on a film, you know, where they can't wait and end up here on the stairs. Well, like this, you mean. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Back already? I am, yeah. Should I have knocked before I came in? No. Why? Um, didn't want to interrupt anything. No, we, uh, we, we just got to level ten. On uh, motocross alley, mum, it is my new game. What else? And does that include the buttonholes? Oh, sorry, I'm really confused now. Can you read this all back to me, please? Yeah. 
Ah, uh, I see. The buttonholes are extra. Somebody getting married by any chance? Oh, okay, well, no flies um, on you, are they? I'd never have an expensive wedding. Okay. Think what you could do with the money. Look, That's you'll get wed one thing. day, and when you do, you want Bye. it to be a very, very special day. Well, then you better be rich. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm spoken for. But are you rich? Oh, I'm a slur. Do you know what? This is never ending. Yeah, well, it's like my phone bill if you carry on like that. Sorry. You know, I still don't know why you're rushing it. Well, that's none of your business, is it? Oh, come on, Maria. Everyone knows you're up the duff. Steve Well, Grant, I mean, it's not like in your day, is it? You know, when you just had to get married to show some respect. Nobody cares anymore. Well, that isn't why I'm doing it. Well, then why are you? Oh, now, David, come on. As Maria said, mind your own business and don't be so cheeky. Anyway, look, there's some towels that need collecting from the laundry, so go and pick them up. Make yourself useful. Thank you. <clears throat> I got this to cheer us up. Why? We said on the radio we needed it, so... What is it? A horror film. We got a load of the shop, so, uh, I borrowed one. Have you seen it? And why do we need cheering up? This time of year. People haven't got any money. Credit card bills and Christmas coming in. It's been cold winter nights for ages, so people won't commit suicide. Cool. <laughs> Gotta make us laugh, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a scary film that actually scared you? Uh, not since I were about five, so... <sighs> Any chance of a coffee? Yeah, yeah, sure. Ew! Don't they just make you want to puke? Oh, two towels. Make me sick. No! With enough pictures on. We've got a load in the shop. Sheep of the Lake District. What? Like you want to wipe your plates on the sheep backside. People do, though. People do what? Oh, hi. Didn't tell me Tina was coming round? No, we only fixed it up like a couple of hours ago. Is that a problem, is it? We were just going to watch a DVD. What about eating? Uh, probably get a takeaway, something like that. Are you staying in? Well, I've no plans to go out at such short notice. Well, I could, uh, I could do the weekly shop instead of tomorrow night. Yeah. Only don't let us push you out, though. Heaven forbid. Pull that. As if we could get down chimney. <laughs> hey, hey, Santa calling. Oh, sorry, wrong time of year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. What was that? Evening paper. Oh. Oh. No, I'm just watching a DVD. What DVD? Did you did you get everything? Perhaps you better help me bring it in. Yeah. Tina, get a bus, all right? Yeah. Didn't have to go because of me, you know. Not much. <laughs> Sorry I interrupted. Well, you didn't interrupt anything, OK? We were just watching a film. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm glad you found somebody you like. Yeah, sure. I am. She clearly makes you happy, so I'm happy too. It's just, um... Well, what are you getting up to now? You're gonna have to be careful. Mum, please, all right? Don't no, even go there. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, please. don't. When are you seeing her again? I don't know yet. Cos, you know, if you gave me some warning, um, I could make myself scarce, say, if you wanted the house to yourselves this Friday. I do know we need some time alone together. But if you're going to embark on an adult relationship... No, we're not, Mum. Cheers. Friday be great. 
Listen, anything your mother was going to do, I'll do. Oh, Marjorie. No, I'm serious. No, put me down as surrogate mother. Uh, and I, I stress, mother, not grandmother. No, is it? Hey, I'll hold you to that, though. Eight cloth ears. Cattle spoiled. Oh, Vera's notice is here. Very nice. In all our hearts. Oh, that's Liam. We got in some traffic on the M6, but we've got past it now. That's good, isn't it? Hey, just watch this one doesn't get jealous, oh. mine. <laughs> jealous of what? <gasps> My surrogate daughter. Her mother's definitely not coming. Oh, well, does that mean we're surrogate sisters, then? Because we can swap clothes and talk about that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, yes. uh, are you free for a drink tonight? Only I'm leaving David home alone. Well, not home alone, is that uh, routine? Gail. Oh, hello, David. Oh, it's about six, I think. Have I had a shirt for you? And, uh, you know, I'm going to the uh, Rovers for a drink with your grand tonight, so uh, I'll be back about, um, well, shall we say, ten? Fine. I want to give you enough time for yourselves, I mean. Right. And you will be careful, won't you? Mum. Yeah, I, I know you're both sensible, but it is important. Oh, well, I'd best get ready. Say hello to Tina for me. Have a nice night. We've got house to ourselves, so make a room, any room. I'll give me a chance. No, no, I'm just messing. Can I have a drink, though? Um, I won't mess about that. Uh, yeah. There's uh, some squash in cupboard, just help yourself. Is it orange or black currant? Well, I'm gonna call it squash if it's orange. Otherwise, I'd just call it black currant or lime or whatever. Well, if it's lime, it's cordial, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but this is orange. Uh, I suppose I call tropical squash as well. And then if, if it's the healthy stuff, then I, I just call it juice. What is that smell? Beats me. It's not a subject I relish talking to him about. But you did make it clear to him. It's a very embarrassing subject. Listen, I'm sure you'd rather be embarrassed than a grandmother again, huh? What if he took it the wrong way and thought I was antagonising him? Goodness knows what he'd do. But, so, you gave them to him. I mean, is that what you're driving at? Well, I put them on the coffee table. What? In full view? Well, I made sure a magazine was obscuring them a bit. I mean, I didn't want to be too obvious. Anyway, I'm sure he's buying his own. Yeah, but you didn't really discuss it with him, did you? I mean, you just put them where he could see them and fled, right? Maybe I should nip back and uh, make sure he's seen them. No! Thing I'd make him do constant foot massages. Shall we uh, hop upstairs? Mm, just, just keep doing that for a bit. Is that um, is that yours? No. What? Isn't that yours? Oh, uh, oh yeah. I just must have left it there. Your mum bought him, didn't she? No. They're mine. Like I don't get like a bin bag full for nothing. What? Go to any clinic and they're just around like confetti. So, um, have you got anything to eat? Uh, go have a look. Oh, mm, can I have some chocolate? Yeah, help yourself. So, uh, do you like Arctic monkeys then? They're all right. What do you prefer? First album or second? 
Which do you prefer? <laughs> First. Me too. <laughs> you think your mum would know we used a bed? Well, I'm not going to tell her, are you? I like to pillows. Oh, did you? Mm. Pillows in our house like sponges. <laughs> Am I your first girlfriend? What? Was it? Are you serious? Right, well, what's the longest you've ever been with anyone? Um, 25 minutes, half an hour, something like that. In a relationship? Oh, right, I, I thought you meant, you know. I meant, what's the longest relationship you've ever had? Apart from the 17-year um, one you've had with your mother. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, that. <laughs> um, a couple of months, maybe. <laughs> with who? Oh, what, do you want actual names now? Hey, up, Dave. It's the famous Tina. Have you been talking about me? <laughs> the whole street's talking about you, love. Now we're dead chuffed him. Yeah, do you want to show up, Jason? Well, I'm not taking a Mickey or anything. This is Jason, my sister's husband. She ran off to Italy and left him. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, we'll try harder. By the way, when's your court case? It's coming up soon, isn't it? Sorry, you do know, don't you? Yeah. Driving without a licence, driving without insurance. I'm cool with it. Enjoyable evening, was it? Oh, don't worry, she was very discreet. Yeah, she knows the jukebox inside out. She's even taken up darts. Yeah? Doesn't come with instructions, does it? Imagine that. Congratulations on choosing a woman's body. <laughs> I've always said that it's the one area in life where the blind are not disadvantaged. In fact, I think in some cases it might even be a plus. Yeah, well, not in my case, all right. Yeah. Good lad. Hey, we'll be our Daryl's here next, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi. You don't mind me making a sandwich? Feel free. Just take one of these. And an apple. For my lunch, see? No, I'm a burger. But you can't eat junk all the time, can you? And anyway. Cost your fortune. Saves money this way. Sure it does. I thought the sandwich was your breakfast. No. I've already had that time. Anyway, see you tonight. I will. Back about six normally. See you, lover. Good day. Yeah, you too. Do you mind telling me what's going on? What? Oh, Tina's mum's got an oldie for a week, so she's going to be staying here. A week? Yeah. Not a problem, is it? Well, you might have asked me first. Well, I didn't think it'd be such a big deal. Jason lived here all the time, and you were okay with that. They even sent champagne up to the room one morning for breakfast. It was in an ice bucket with flowers and everything. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> well, I couldn't drink any of it, though. Liam had to struggle his way through it. <laughs> we had three nights in a B&B &B for our honeymoon. Reeton Gap. Reeton Gap? I've never heard of it. Near Thylis. Oh. We went on Donald's motorbike and sidecar. Was it nice? Good location. Right on a cliff edge. Oh, that sounds lovely, that Blanche. Except we were at the back, facing a caravan site. Oh, dear. <laughs> Was the food any good? Well, if I said that rationing hadn't been long over, folk didn't so much eat in those days as feed. <laughs> Nearest weekend to a nice bucket, with a jug of cold water they left in our room to wash ourselves down with. Oh, no wonder you only stopped three days. <laughs> oh, we'd have stayed longer. It were all we could afford. Lovely time we had. Oh, Maria, my love, would you go and unpack some more shampoo from the back? Yeah, sure. How are you? Hi. Hi. When's uh, your next break? Oh, I've only just had my dinner. Oh, that's a pig. Pig? Why? <laughs> well, i got the afternoon off. I thought I'd go to a funeral, so... Mm. Can't help you out, though. Sorry. Go on. You can take it off as well, David. What, really? Yes, well, you've worked very hard while Maria was away and you deserve it. All right, well, Aww. thanks then, Gran. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Toodles. Bye-bye. He didn't take much persuading. Oh. Where's he gone? Uh, I've given him the afternoon off. You do know I've got my 20 weeks scan this afternoon? What? Well, it's in the book. I've got to leave in 15 minutes. 
Oh, what are I thinking of? It's all this honeymoon talk, Audrey. Got to your head. Oh. <laughs> a bit early for your plums, Mr. Roll, what do you call it? Oh, sorry, Mrs. Platt. What's going on? Are you feeling 5,000? No, I've got bacon, mushrooms, scrambled egg, beans and sausages. What do you reckon? I reckon I'm going to need to do another fresco shop after work. Well, it's you that's always banging on about breakfast being the most important meal of the day. You two going out tonight? Skin. Mm, for a change. Right. Here's 20 quid. Get yourself scarce, and I want it back. Oh, well, actually, we're thinking of inviting a few friends round, and then maybe we could plan... Oh, uh, David! Few... Well, Mum, if we can't get into the pubs, then what are we supposed to do? I don't know. Cinema? Bowling? I don't know. Well, come on, Mum. I've already arranged a night round here with Daryl now. So it's another night in the pub for me, is it? See? Genius. Thanks, Mum. Ah, oh, thanks, Mrs Platt. Really kind of you. What? It'd be a bit rude, wouldn't it, to invite him round and not be able to offer him a can of lager? I want it back. You'll get it. Thank you. Here. Take a sausage. Go on, treat yourself. Calories, do you think there are in a pasty? No idea. Well, then just uh, just guess. Oh, seventeen thousand eight hundred and forty-three. <laughs> and now you've been silly. You want me to guess the energy value of pasties, and I'm the one being silly. You've been silly. Oh, thank God! Might get some sensible conversation. Look at this dagsy, a schoolgirl. Do you remember those? Ah, to be young. Oh, then again. <laughs> right, create your finest ale, please, shop king. Yeah, she's too young to serve you. So what do you want? Oh, well, we have a taste for the um, strong, yet cheap. Are you having a party? Yeah. A few of us over at mine. You know, hot tunes, cold beers. Should be pretty good. There you go, boys. Cheap, nine ninety nine. Tenner, keep change. Ah. And you're not inviting me? Oh, come on, Amber. You know it's not polite to invite yourself to someone else's uh, soiree. Of course you're invited, yeah. We'd love to have you, wouldn't we, Dagsa? Oh, yeah. We throw a cracking soiree. We're renowned for our soirees. Hopefully it won't get too messy this time. He's just winding you up, Dad. Don't worry, I won't drink. So, uh, we'll see you later, crazy kid. Until the soiree. <laughs> Listen, um, I don't know if it's a good Dad. idea. I said I won't drink. Yeah, I know. It's just. Dad, um... I'm going. I mean, they just take up so much space, you know. I mean, they can't just make a meal. It has to be every pot and pan in the house out, music blaring, smoke alarm going up. Been there, got the commemorative tea towel. Yeah, and these endless box sets, American TV, they want episode after episode. It drives me mad. I can't remember the last time I sat down to something I wanted to watch. Well, tell him to stick to his bedroom. Well, even then, they're up and down the stairs all night, emptying the fridge as fast as I can fill it. I feel like a stranger in my own house. Yeah. Want to buy a shed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, love, at that age, they're all just selfish, loud, rude pains in the backside. He's just being a typical teenager. Yeah. And you don't know what a relief that is. <laughs> If you're in need of a little bit of peace and quiet, you can always come and sit in the kebab shop. <laughs> well, the glamour never ends. <laughs> Gail, you got a minute? Uh, I'll see you later. Now, what exactly is going on your place tonight? Excuse me? Yeah, only your David was around the shop earlier, invited Amber around to what sounds like a right rave up. He's having a few friends, right? <laughs> really? Listen, Gail, Amber's education is really important to me, so I don't want no drinking or anything else. Well, I rather think that's up to Amber, don't you? There's a corn cocktail. Shall? On top of cheese and onion. I like to experiment. Well, I hate prawn cocktail, but I like cheese and onion. Well, it's a snack equivalent of um, Russian roulette then. Crisp's never been so exciting. Right, can I get you a wine or a beer or...? Um, no, I'll just have a lager. Lager. Alright, I'll get you a cold one. Um, and do you want out? Uh, yeah, same. 
So, Lord of Not Here yet? No, I thought she was here. No, no, I'm uh, gonna be here. Well, um, let's hope so, eh? Mum's really pushing the boat tonight, isn't she? Right, time to go. So, um, if I see Lauren, I'll send her round. Go on, laugh. <laughs> Funny, innit? At least you've got Tina to play with. Yeah, no, it's great, innit? Have fun. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Ah, Mrs. Fern's just been raving about that film they're showing at Plaza. Grand seems keen. Does she? Yeah. We should take her, you know. I don't think cinema trips are Bill's bag somehow. I'll see how I'm fixed at the weekend. It finishes tonight. And you want the house to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I said I'd cook for Tina. Oh. It's no biggie. Oh, no. Of course not. So, will you go? Go? I don't need a night out when there's a thriller like that going on in my kitchen. So, how's the patient? Any better? Not much, no. Oh. Oh, well, that's a shame, because I was going to suggest going for a pizza. Ooh. To celebrate. Well, it's a bit of a send-off. But if you're too sick, might pick up. Oh, good. All right, well, you won't be too ill to look after Amy, then, will you? Is it Deirdre's? Well, Deirdre's got to work this afternoon. All you've got to do is watch her watching cartoons. Quality childcare, then. Well, you'll lay there doing the same thing. Fine. Alex? I said I'm fine. I mean, I'm happy to spread my germs around. If you are. So how long does it take to go for some change? Rebecca, mm -hmm. well, as long as it takes her to chat up a builder, kick a dog, or even buy a quarter of pear drops. So if she's in a good mood. Is she in a good mood? What can you tell? Anyway, David wants me to take you to the cinema. Really? Oh, whose social life is he worried about? Mine or yours? It's of course. He's cooking a meal for Tina. What's he making her? Some microwavable, I hope. I didn't ask. I was too busy laughing. Oh, get. I bet Mama Ramsey didn't laugh the first time her Gordon cooked the tea. Bet Mama Ramsey got to eat it, not pushed out for a burger and dragged back into a sink full of dirty pot. Hey, listen, while you're on your feet, Deb, splash a bit of hot water in that, would you? You're right. Do I look like a waitress? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, you have got a very short memory. Mum, I was never anything like him. No, not you, David. I mean, for once... He's not out drugging kiddies or taking shots at folk with his air rifle or even sending guards from the other side. No, for once, he is acting like a proper teenager. Ladies? Oh. <laughs> I took the liberty of adding an extra tea bag. <laughs> Service round here is getting uh, better. Isn't it just? <laughs> so go on. What would you do? Oh, well, grit my teeth and buy a large tub of popcorn. In my own home. Oh. Do you know there's no pleasing? I want to put my gym jams on and read my book. It's a perfectly reasonable request. I'm not allowed to say it. What? Because when Sarah was Davy's age, I allowed her to move Jason. So unless I roll out the red carpet for Tina, I'm the biggest hypocrite. Ah, oh, hi, lovey. Oh, you've been busy. I know. What's that fresh cause like at dinner time? The law of the jungle, my darling. Well, me and this skinhead, right? I kid you not, we had to do a trolley dash for the last bindaloo. Did you win? Win, of course I won't. Oh, <laughs> some real. His body, but he's been taken over by aliens. Listen, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> See you later. You heat this up all by yourself. Listen, it's not as easy as it looks, alright. Right. I had to remove the cardboard bit, mm -hmm. pierce the lid with a fork, <laughs> and then heat the plates up. Oh, you must be shattered. <laughs> so, do you really have to go on tomorrow? Oh, yeah. It's like a ritual. My mum shows me her 10 million holiday pictures and then gives me my sunshine souvenir. Yeah, but you don't have to stay at night, do you? I mean, you can come back. Mm, maybe. If uh, your mum don't mind. Listen, she's had her fun, all right? You're a non-negotiable. Oh, Matt's mum. She used to give me evils after just one night. And he couldn't even cook toast. No word of a lie. 
No, it's not. My ex. So, dump two? Mm hmm. A lady never tells. Okay. He binned me. But then he begged me to take him back. Did you? Mm hmm. I don't do second chances. We're still mates, though, on that. Yeah. Don't be offended. I want hurling. Look. Pure Vindaloo. I'll worry about that when I'm 40. My mum reckons she went to bed at 39, all slim and toned. Woke up at 40, looking like Beth Ditto. <laughs> Are you in a strop? No. Yeah, right. It's Matt, innit? No. We're only mates. He's the only ex I've stayed mates with. Look, whatever, all right? Well, aren't you mates with any of your exes? You're joking, aren't you? Tracy turned out to be a right mentalist. What do you mean? Well, all right, she were fit as, but she just got way too possessive. That's a sacker. Fair enough. And then Maria, well, she just kept messing me about. She couldn't decide between me and this builder block. Unfortunately, he was also a Premier League psychopath. For real? Yeah. It's too much aggro. Oh. Poor baby. Not all of us are mad cows, you know. Yes? You got lucky. No, it's called annihilation, love. I thought you'd have had more practice with that. What's his first thing in the world? Matt. No, he prefers skateboarding. Seen much of him? Not really. He moved away. Right, come on then, let's go to bed. Well, don't get to finish my tea. No, you don't. Do you know why? Because it stains your teeth. <laughs> David! Come on. Plates just left. I'm saying just because you've lost your keys, there's no need to have a go at me. There's every need. There's places a tip and there's only me to clear up. No, no, Mrs. Platt. I'll do it before I go work. Thank you. And my keys have vanished into thin air, so somebody's gonna have to be here to let me in. Oh, I'll have a back about two. Right. Well, if you fancy having the clear around, there's a hoover under the stairs and dusters under the sink. Alright, Mum, she's a guest, alright? She's not clearing up. Don't mind. Listen, you're not skivvying round after her. Yes, I am. You're going out, then. In fact, I think we should offer to make her a nice meal. What? She feels taken for granted. I don't care, all right? I'm not cooking her a meal. Look, if you're nice to her, make her feel appreciated, then she's nice to you. It's an interesting theory. Here. Take these and go after her. Come on. Do it for me. It'll be fun. All right. Mum! Found your keys. Listen, um, what are you doing tonight? Do you want me out of the way again? On the contrary. We want to cook dinner for you. Yeah. It won't be out fancy or out, just that we'll cook it and then tidy it away afterwards. What's the catch? No catch. You can even bring a little friend along with you if you like. <laughs> she wants to move in permanently, doesn't she? No. No, it's just our way of saying thanks, that's all. Well, thank you. I'd like that. Great. Should we say a seven then? Seven thirty? Must be after something. As far as I can make out, it's the thank you for putting her up. Maybe he thinks if he butters me up, I'll get off his case. Uh, well, when was the last time you were actually on his case? All the same. Cooking a meal. If you'd have said that six months ago. Oh, come on, enjoy it. He'll probably flip over to his dark side any minute now. Oh, was it that simple? 
All he needed was a girlfriend. Oh, hello. Come on, is it? Ah, oh, I believe how much I've just spent. You, Mummy, in for the right treat. Mm, well, just think of me stuck with Sarah Beanie and yesterday's leftovers. Well, why don't you come? I'm allowed a guest. I don't want to spoil your fun. Well, I don't mind, Gran, and there's going to be loads of grub anyway. Pinch me. Prove it's not a dream. Uh, dinner shouldn't be long now. Uh, can you come and get the cheese, please? Yes, sure. What are we having, do you know? Uh, Mexican, apparently. Chili con carne. Made it yourself. Ooh, hope it's not too hot. All right, that's done. Blimey! It's enough rice here to feed Africa. Right, grub's ready. Who that? Matt. What, the Matt? The Matt. Well, what's the one? To meet up. Have you got the place ready? Yeah. Hope you're all hungry. Smells fantastic. Be a catch. I said to David. Mm. There's no catch, honestly. Is there, David? No. I know that now, I'm just saying. Oh, God. she can't half spin a yarn when she's had a couple of glasses. I was just saying that I hope you're not doing this because you want Tina to move in permanently. <laughs> I, I don't want to move in. Because if you did, I'd say yes. I'd welcome you with open arms because you're a lovely girl and you make a lovely couple. There, I've said it. Come on, I'll help you with no, this. No, you stop there. We'll do it. So when are you going to meet in them? Who? Your ex. Have you got a problem with it? No. Good, OK? I don't do jealous. Me and Matt are mates. Listen, I ain't got a problem with it, all right? I'm just asking. He's home from uni for a couple of days. Uni? It's at Birmingham, OK? Part of the reason why we split up. We'd probably go to town and get a coffee or something, if that's OK with you. Well, I was going to ask for the day off work tomorrow. I thought maybe we could do something. Well, you never said. Anyway, we could meet up later on. Oh, yeah, all right. Are you trying to make me feel bad about meeting all my ex for a coffee? Because she can stick it! Where are you going? Take it away. Oh, go away. You do me, I did. Yeah, I know, all right? I've been stupid. Look, if you don't trust me... I do, I do. Just listen, all right? I love you. No, you don't. But I do like you saying it. What? Tina. Saying I don't love her. Do I tell her meat? You listening? Yes, but do I smell a meat? I don't know. I do, don't I? See, I think it is a test, right? I think she wants me to prove to her that I do love her. I had a dream that that grew arms and chased me down that street. I had to be back on it since. I need to do something, Daryl. You know, something big. Something that will prove to her how committed I am. Uh, I'm becoming a veggie. Are you joking? No. They hurt, you know. So? No pain, no gain. And what are you going to gain? Tina. I've told you, if I do this, she'll know I love her. She'll know it's forever. Yeah, and so's a tattoo. What happens if you meet somebody else? I won't. Anyway, you should get one. Nah. Besides, I think if we both have seen a tattoo on arm, it's just going to confuse the girls. Ha ha. Go on, I think Lauren will be well impressed. I don't think so. But loads of women are coming in my life. Well then, get some out. I don't believe in all this desecrating your body. Mine's great as it is anyway. Uh, you're just terrified of needles, aren't you? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are, you big wuss. Shut up. No, I'm not. Go on, I dare you. Nah. Well, what happens when I tell Mel and Tina and Larry? Well, it's not that. It's just, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen a tattoo that I'd want to keep forever. Well, that's all right, sunshine. There must be something around here. Yeah. OK, you ready? Man, I pain threshold and that. You had tears in your eyes, didn't you, when you came out? 
Yeah, you only had four letters. I had E N G L A N D. Eight. A seven, you idiot. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. I'm showing you mine. Yeah, and it looks alright, state. I'm gonna keep mine covered till swelling goes down. Alright. I'll let them off. England! England! At least I didn't get a girl's name, you woofter. Well, it's a girl's name. How's that work? Whatever. She'll love me, mate. We all love me. Shut up. <laughs> Just drags on and on. You make yourself a proper tea, won't you? Yeah. Tell Tina to help herself to anything. There's um, stuff for her bolognese in the fridge. Where is she anyway? Thought you'd have both gone out on your day off. Yeah, well, we might do when she gets back. Back from where? Wherever she's gone. She's not a kid, all right? She's allowed out on her own. She's just with friends, that's all. It's cool. Good. See you later. No, I heard the car. Mm. Where's your mum? Work. So, did you get a taxi? Oh, let me get my stuff off, David. Well, sorry. Am I not allowed to be glad you're back? Oh, don't go in a sulk, eh? I'm not. So what then? Did you get a lift? What is this? MI5? Yes, I got a lift. Oh, that'll handy. Oh, I got a lift. From my ex. Okay. Who, the great and wonderful Matt? That's the one. Problem? No, no, actually, I'm really, really chuffed. Because mm. while I've been stood here, yeah, worrying, you've been sat in your ex's car all cosy and warm. So you were standing there, waiting for me. How sad is that? I'm going for a shower. Hey, Nah, I'm just messing about. You got nothing to worry about with Matt, you know. Yeah, I know. It's cool. Good. Can't stand controlling fellas. I trust you, T. You know, I mean, really, I do. No, you don't. What time's your mum going to be home? Oh, we've got ages yet. Good, because, um. We need to talk. Do we? Mm. There's, there's no easy way. I mean, I've been going about it like all afternoon and. All right, hang on. Before you say anything, yeah. What? I've got you a present. Oh. Now trust me, it's something really, no, really special. I, I don't want presents. Oh, you want this one? What do you think? Oh, tell me that's a transfer. No way. Look at it. Who did? And when me and you break up? Ah, well, that's the cutting plan. See, we can't now. Have you lost it? What do you think that makes you look like? Romantic? Yeah, right. Oh, come on, I did it for you. I thought you'd be like... Disgusted? Turned off? Oh, uh, do you want to go out? I got paid today. I'm going home. Oh, no, 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 wait, all right, um, uh, we'll have a quiet night in then. What? With the walking, talking, painted freak? No, thanks. Please? I'll call you, OK? I just need some time on my own. Oh, wait, 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 are you dumping me? I'll call you. And you got me, Mams. She thinks your you're... mother. It's my business. I didn't broadcast oh. it. I tell me, Mam, everything. How am I supposed to keep it to myself now, knowing that David's gran knows more about his life than him? How fair is that? Oh. Atmosphere. Knife. No, you could have waited over the road, you know. Wouldn't there some, would you? Plus, we've got better bickies. I didn't come for the bickies. I came to talk. You come in. Can't we do it here? No, we can't. Hey, just because you're dumping me in public. Who do you think you are? Tony Flipping Soprano? No. 
Thought you girls went to win and stuff like that. Well, I'm not you girls, am I? I'm me. And I'm not dumping you, all right? Not for Matt? No, not for anyone. Good. Listen, all right? Whatever I've done, you know, the tattoo, everything. I'm sorry. I mean, I've been a div, I know, but I, I can learn. What makes you think I'm blaming you? Well, the way you've spoken to me, the way you've, like, blanked me. Well, I'm here right now. Yeah, you're here, but you're not here, if you know what I mean. What? You were doing me head in. What, you could have said that on the phone. Come on, you didn't just come here for chips. No, I come to clear the air. That's it. Give me a break, all right? I'm new at all this. We both are. And it's fine. It's all fine. Except for, um, one disaster. The, um, Falls gig is sold out. Oh. Uh, your grand's been trying to get hold of you. He wanted it the sound. What? I just got here. Well, it sounded urgent, so uh, why don't you get off and I'll sort this lot out. Is that it? I need to get back now anyway, so... Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I could try and get some tickets from somewhere else if you want. I mean, you could sort it out tonight. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, a cup of tea. Uh, tea. Is coming up. To uh, undermine David. Or compromise you. But you have. Babies should be wanted, planned. And you two should have a chance to live like kids before you have one of your own. And in the meantime, what do I tell David for the next four weeks? One. One week. What? You, you said. If you go on the National Health, it's up to four weeks. If you go private. Oh, no. Costs hundred. Five hundred. I'll pay. I could put a call in this afternoon. This time next week, it'd all be over. Hey, that peep out of him this morning. Now look at him. Must be Tina. Oh, yeah. I do wish he wouldn't bring that lad in here, though. Who, Darrell? He's all right. <laughs> Look at his hair. People will think he's a customer. <laughs> you killed me. Yesterday, girl with toast. Yesterday, I thought she was just a moody cow with her ex warming up on the line. And today? The ex is toast, all right? And I'm nearly back in the good books. So? Still a moody cow. Listen, she tried to get us tickets for the falls. I'm in mean, big up to her there. Yeah. Tried. That's sold out. Oh, well, isn't that a mystery of cosmic proportions? Well, that don't matter. Listen, do you still know that ginger tout lad with all the piercings? Shaky Jake? That's the one. Yeah, why? You want a surprise, though? Maybe. Ah, oh, sweet. Chinese? Indian? Uh, pizza? Some of us have had no dinner, remember? Well, can I help it if you're indispensable? Um, uh, I don't mind. Change your shirt if you're going for a kebab. We're only going to Jerry's. It's not like we're having afternoon tea at the Ritz. Yeah, but you do stink a neutraliser, though. Oh. Right, well, anybody like that. Um. Yes, please. For the private job. Are you sure it's what you want? He doesn't want a snotty nose brat with me, and I don't want to be a prom faced loser on my own, so. I think it's the right choice. So, um, if you sort it out for me, like, well, the quicker the better. I can't lie to save my life. Take a cancellation if they got one. Well, we don't want to rush things too much. 
You have to have time for second thoughts. It has to be your decision. It is. I don't want you looking back on life and feeling you've been rushed into it. Well, I'll ring the clinic first thing. I'll come with you if you like. Please. It'll soon be over. You can get on with your life. David need never know a thing. What do you think? Nice one. Cheers, pal. Ta ta. You don't seem in a hurry to get to work. Yeah, I'm gonna try to sort a surprise out for Tina. Well, Daryl's doing it actually. Oh, what is it? Tickets to a gig. She wanted to go see the falls. Oh, is that one of them thrash mental lot? You've been deliberately thick. It's thrash metal, right? It's not thrash mental. When are you thinking of going to this gig? Uh, next week. Uh, is that, uh, wise? Well, yeah, why wouldn't it be? Well, you've uh, only just got things back on track. You can take things slowly. Why? Well, you're both young. You've got all the time in the world. Mum, what is it with you? All right, it's just a gig. I'm not going to ask the girl to marry me. but I've been thinking and I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing. Why don't you sit yourself down? I don't want to do something I'll end up regretting. Well, you said yourself, this is the worst possible time to have a baby. I know. But I've only seen things from my own perspective, Anna. Well, for what it's worth, I'm 100% sure you've made the right decision. It's just that I feel really bad for leaving David out of it. Been through all this. I thought we agreed he doesn't need to know. Did only complicate things. But it's his baby I'm getting rid of. He has a right to know. Look, I know he acts like nothing bothers him. It's all a front. He'd hate me for saying this, but... Deep down, he's a very sensitive boy. I reckon you underestimate him. He's my son. I know him inside out. And he's a lot stronger than you give him credit for. I think I should tell him. Tina, believe me, this is not a good idea. Did you sleep through half of what they said? Telling me I underestimate him. He's a deeply damaged boy. He drove his car into the canal. He didn't want to live anymore. It was an accident, he told me. You say he did it on purpose? He couldn't cope with his life anymore. He was depressed. Desperate. He told me it was an accident. Tina, how well do you know him? I mean, really. Well... No, I... you don't know him like I do. He's a child himself. And a confused one at that. The last thing he needs in his life is a baby. Oh, hello. What are you two plotting? Nothing. Don't be daft. Um, I've got a surprise for you. Go on then. Um, I was going to buy some lunch and then drop off at the salon. Great. Come on then. I'm starving. Okay. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, well. We'll just sit and stare and an empty screen all night then, shall we? Did you enjoy your tea, Tina? Mm. I like chicken Kiev. Mm, just garlic, isn't it? It's good for you, garlic. I know, yeah. Well, there must be something on. With the rent, right. I could nip to the shop and rent a DVD. Yeah, that's a good idea. Come in, then. No, I'll stay here. 
keep your mum company. Right. Toodles. Bye. Nothing too gory. I've been thinking. You're perfectly within your rights to want to tell David about the baby. And if you do, I'll support you. But I do have to warn you. Termination. If he hears about it. Well, I do worry what it'll do to his mind. I'm not telling you what to do. No. You're manipulating me. But, it's okay. I know what you're saying. I'm not going to tell him anything. I'll be off. Hey, babe. Been totally stoked about tonight. <laughs> you want to give us a ring when you get this? All right, then. Bye. You doing that? Well, I thought I'd go different tonight. What you got in mind? I don't know. Distress it a bit. Maybe give it some texture. Back over the head always works. Well, maybe you should uh, speak to Tina before you start changing anything. You know, girls can be very funny about things like that. Oh, yeah, I'm always losing sleep over Liam Blake's quiff. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise, Gran. You know, it's called making an effort. You're perfect as you are. All right, what's going on? Sorry? How come you've been so nice to me? You're my grandson. Yeah, and? And? I shouldn't have to explain. And I don't know. Maybe it's just nice to see you happy, I suppose. Fair enough. Right, I'll make us a brew then, shall I? Grand, yes. Yes. Am I missing something? Maybe you weren't coming. Didn't you get my message? No, I'll turn my mobile off. Can't face talking to David. How are you feeling? Spaced out. You look tired. We should get a move on. It's no rush. I'm starving, okay? I just want to get it over with so I can eat some it. It's all right to be frightened, love. Not today, it isn't. Two hours. I didn't think it's going to be that quick. Are you sure you don't want me to wait for you? I'll be fine. You shouldn't be on your own. Look, you've been really great, honest, Gail. But I just need some space. I need to do this on my own. And David? And what about tonight? You're surely not thinking of going. I'll call him later. Make some up. I'm getting good at that. Tina, whenever you're ready. Oh. Oh. Okay. Suppose this is it. Look, when you get in there, if you have any doubts. How on?
Mm, about time. Oh, I don't believe it. What's the matter? She's blown me out. Open the rest of the afternoon off. He was upset. He missed a gig. What's the big deal? Yes, well, it was important to him. <clears throat> One minute she's right as rain, the next she's dying. Girls are like that. You know, it might be a time at month. No, nah, you don't get it, do you? She's gonna dump me. Oh. Not this again. Well, this is how it starts, Daryl. First, the criticise, yeah, and then make lame excuses. Next, she'll want a little chat. All of a sudden, bang, I'm history. When did you become such a bird expert? Well, I'm not, but I know where my head's been messed with. Now, you need to wake up, you. Girls are all about control. Ooh, there's some generalisation. Oh, so what? You're saying Lauren doesn't play mind games with you? Come off it, sunshine. All right, so I don't have all answers. And yeah, Tina has been acting freaky lately. But, you know, you've got to give the girl the benefit of the doubt. There isn't any. Seriously, I'm telling you this is a mate. Until you know facts, don't throw it away. For leaving her on her own. Oh, Tina's a strong young girl. She's a child. Don't do this to yourself, Gail. I keep telling myself it's for the best. It was her decision. Yes, and I helped her make it. So what happens now? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, judging by David's reaction to her text, uh, I don't think it's going to be a bed of roses for a while. He took it badly. Vera. Uh, he was so excited this morning. Oh, you should... Hello, love. Oh, oh, I heard what happened. I'm sorry. Yeah. Will there be other gigs, David? If you say so. How's she feeling? Well, I'll ask her that when I see her. Going round then? Yeah, I'm sorting this out now. Well, don't do anything rash. You'll only regret it in the morning. David! Oh. Well, don't look at me. I tried to stop him. Just pop on your cough box, you can wrap it down that way. The roses look lovely. Flash your side down underneath. I'll tell you what, the roses this year are going to be beautiful. And what about those tea bags? Not only do they make wonderful tea, and they. What are you doing here? Why? Interrupting something. Seriously, I'm not in the mood. So what's new? I really, really can't do this. Yeah, but you can drink now, can't you? Don't tell me. Doctor's orders. <sighs> Back off! I'm warning you! Oh, you'll do what, eh? Blow me out? <sighs> That's not what I want. Well then, what is it, Tina? Please tell me and we can work it out together. I'll forget it. David! What? I can't do anything right for you? That's not true! Well, then why are you always having a go? Eh? Talking about Matt? I'm not doing this. You You're being. What? What am I being? Immature? Just go away. It's you that's got a problem with this, not me. You can't handle it. Pretending like you're ill. You don't understand. Well, then make me, alright? I'm waiting. I don't think so. I can't! It's over, Tina. All right. Have a nice life. David? Me and Tina are over. You broke up with her? Yeah. It's been a long time coming, if you ask me. Why? What happened? She's lied to me, Mum, all right? She wasn't even ill. The girl's a maniac, all right? I don't need any of her moods anymore. I don't need her attitude. I don't need any of it. Did she say anything? Like what? I just ended it, all right? We didn't have a heart-to-heart. -heart. That girl loves you. No, she doesn't. And don't say that. She's just been trying to control me. And it's not happening. I'm sorry. I'm not. I think she'd appreciate that. Tell her not to give up on David. And your Tina will be all over the place and David's angry. It may not be the best time in the world to interfere. A bit late for not interfering. He's so upset, it's frightening. I know. It's been like a different person since he met her. Now. 
Oh, Gail, you can't protect him from the whole world. Do you know else? Oh, oh no, I should be off. I've got a client in half an hour. Oh, <gasps> I forgot to tell Maria to get the foils ready. Oh, I should be all pushed now because it's Margaret Alice. She's no patient. Are you answering your brain having... or answering question? Oh, t no thanks, nothing else. A bit of politeness won't come amiss. Mm. You have to spend more than £2.20 for that. I suppose if they are apart for a couple of days, Tina can get her strength back. I mean, if they're together now, she might be emotional. It might blurt Summer out. Yeah, but of course she's going to be emotional. Well, at least, give her credit she didn't go into this light. Like. I didn't pressure her. I'm not saying you did. Well, at least I hope I didn't. It was the right decision, the abortion. Baby, this time in her life. Oh, right. Thanks, mm. Wal. It's all right, all in service. Get a lot for you. A couple of squid in here. Mm. Hey, ta. For the actions, not the words. Oops. My hands are foam for the backwash. David! Audrey always threatens to give our mobiles a shampoo and rinse if they go off in work time. David, it's Tina. Your phone, come on. All right, just if my mobile goes off then. Oh, David. Come on, talk to her. What, what is it with you and me mum, all right? Why do you want us to go back out with each other? She's not bothered about me. Yes, of course she is. Will you both just stop going on about her now, okay? You're obsessed. There's number out against her wishes. Gail, I have a right to speak to her. She's got a right to keep her number private. She's had an abortion, hasn't she? Where on earth? She has, hasn't she? No. And I don't even come into this. Sarah. You just not... close ranks and whisper behind me back. Jason, listen. Clam up when I'm nearby. Oh no, don't tell Jason. He's only the father. Jason, you've got this wrong. Keep it to yourself in the family. You like the Weatherfield flaming mafia, you Sarah lot. Sarah has not had an abortion. No? So how did Becky hear you talking about it? Becky. You and Audrey in the calf. Yeah, she's a troublemaker, that one. Probably still angry because you used her. You've always hated me, Gail. Of course I have. Damn me, family. You hate the lot of us. Oh, no, that's just silly. Hey? Can't have a Grimshaw baby in the family? Get rid, cover it up! Is that what happened to Billy? <laughs> was devastated when Billy died. We all were. When Sarah left me, I lost everything. My marriage, Bethany. And now a kid I could have had. Jason, you've got this wrong. Becky, I heard you talking about abortion. Well, maybe we were talking about abortion. But I swear to you, on my life, it had nothing to do with Sarah. So I suggest you tell Becky to get her facts straight before you come storming round here, banging my door down. Did you get that cleaning technique off Hillman? I don't think we need to hear that name, do we? Why? Looks like you're coming up a crime scene. Just a stubborn bit of gravy. Did Gran let you out early? I've been thinking about your offer to let me have some time off work so I could talk to Tina. Oh, great. You've decided to go? No. She lied to me, Mum. I don't like being lied to. Well, maybe she didn't lie. Maybe she just 
didn't want you to see her when she was ill. So why was she drinking? People disappoint us, David. They make mistakes. It doesn't mean they're worth giving up on. You mean like I disappoint you? You've never disappointed me. David, the big disappointment. I didn't say that. I never would. You disappoint people. It's in the genes. Do you think I could pass that on to my kids? Are you all right, David? Did Tina phone you? What did Jason want? Jason? <laughs> you see? Disappointing. You can't even answer now a simple question, can you, around here earlier? Well, he might have popped in, yeah. Popped in? You smacked him one. Your memory is shocking, Mother. Was you not going to tell me? Nothing to tell. He was upset about something. We sorted it. All right, so would you say you're good, then, at sorting other people's problems out? If you've got something to say to me, David... I think it's you that has got something to say to me, don't you think? Let's hear it. As Tina said. Classic. Jason's right. You shove people away. You and Gran, whispering. In corners, trying to get me and Tina back together. The Weatherfield Mafia. <laughs> I like that one. It's pretty funny, isn't it? Would you let his kids live? Sit down, David. I'll get us something to drink. Tina's had an abortion, hasn't she? Oh, David. She's aborted. My kid. Did you knew? Admit it, Mum. I understand you're upset. I didn't want to go behind your back. It was difficult. Yeah, but you managed it. I'm sorry. I was caught in the middle. The middle? Mum, how is going behind my back caught in the middle? It was you I was thinking of. Yeah, right. You've been so ill. What, and you thought that killing my kid was exactly what I needed? And talking that way is not gonna help. Sarah can have a child any time she likes. Thirteen years old, it's not a problem, but the spawn of David. God forbid. Tina's body. Tina decided. What's the Tina's more important? No, of course not. Yeah, well, at least you did a better job of aborting my kid than what you did of aborting me. Oh, David. Did you hold her hand? What? It's a simple question, Mum. Did you hold my girlfriend's hand while you killed my baby? No, I did not! Well, did you go with her? What? Eh? Did you? Going anywhere? No, why? You scared I might kill myself? Frankly, yes! Are you? Well, I don't care. I did it because I love you! I hate you! <laughs> Mrs. Craig, see you, my love. 
Oh, do you know what I could kill David? Going off for his dinner and not coming back like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he's upset about Tina. It doesn't give him the right to go swanning off whenever he feels like it. Actually, I love her. Uh, would you lock up for me? Yeah, sure. Oh, bless you. I'm going down the road, have a word with him. See ya. See ya. girl and I can't get in. I think she must have fallen down the stairs. She's just lying there. You not got a key? No, I haven't got it with me. I'm going on the back. See if any windows are open. Quick, please. Oh, it's all right. Door's oh, open. Grace. She's alive. Oh, goodness. Don't move her. Don't move her. I'll phone for an ambulance. Gail, can you hear me, sweetheart? Please. It's hey, going to be all right, she's darling. Been... Everything's going to be all it's right. She's fallen downstairs and she's, she's unconscious. Look, could you just go and fetch Bill, please? Yeah, of course. Hey. In there, mate. Okay. What's that thing, Kev? <coughs> I just keep wondering how long she's been lying here. I mean, if I'd just come down earlier. Hey, hey, don't be thinking like that. You've done all you can. She's in good hands now. Um, can I come in the ambulance, please? Of course you can. Look, and I'll follow on in the car. Okay? Yeah, all right. Oh! I've got, to, I've got to tell David. I'll have to tell him what's happened. One thing at a time. Let's get her to hospital first, eh? Becky! Oh, hiya! Next time, keep your gossip to yourself, OK? What? Whoa, 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 what, what are you talking about? All that stuff about serving abortion. It was rubbish. But I did it somehow, I swear. Yeah, well, it wasn't that, because all you've done is caused me more trouble. So don't go do me any more favours, all right? <coughs> David, what's up? You on your own? Uh, yeah, why? David, talk to me. What's happened? I've... Come on, what is it? I know about the abortion. Yeah, they... But your mum said that you wouldn't have been able to handle it. <sighs> well, that's typical, that, isn't it? That's me mum all over. Always stepping in, thinking she knows best. Well... Why can't she just mind her own business? Well, she was right, though, wasn't she? I mean, look at her. If you'd have just told me, Tina, that you was pregnant, then none of this would have happened, it would, would it? would! I wasn't ready for a baby. You don't understand. Would you have wanted to keep it, then? It's not about that, all right? It's about my... My mum. And how she always tries to ruin my life. So what I was going through, it doesn't really matter then. Maybe I was right not to tell you. No, look, I didn't mean that, all right? Of course it does. You all right? What do you care? 
We're not even going out anymore. I'm sorry. I need you. Please. I can't cope without you. Yeah. Me too. Listen, why don't we go away somewhere? What? On holiday? No, I mean like forever. Let's just get out of here now. Where? Well, anywhere. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> You're mad. Well, what's that stop us? Uh, jobs, family. Well, then we won't tell them, all right? All we have to do is throw some stuff in a bag and then we're out of here. <laughs> and how are we going to live? What are we going to do for money? We'll worry about that later. We could go anywhere, down to London. I mean, everything's kicking off down there. Or Cornwall, live on the beach, learn to surf. <laughs> I'm serious, Tina. We could be happy. But we can be happy here. No, we can't. Oh, your mum isn't that bad. Aren't you going to get that? Please, just say you will. N no, I like it here. Hello? David? Hi, lovey. It's me, Janan. Listen, darling, I don't want you to get upset, but your mum's had an accident. Well, silly, really. She fell down the stairs. I'm not sure how it happened. Is she dead? Right, no. Uh, definitely, I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay, bye. What is it? It's my mum. She's in the hospital. She fell down the stairs or something. L listen, I've got to go. I'm coming with you. No, it's all right. You stay here. No, I'm coming. Grant. There you are, darling. Oh. Oh, there. You're back together? Yeah. Have you seen her yet, then? No, no, uh, she's... Where is it, Bill? Uh, radiology, I think. Yeah, they're doing a brain scan. So, so she's not come round yet? She's not said anything? No. She'll be all right, Grant. Yeah, of course she will. It's just... Well, things like this you're never prepared for, are you? I mean... I mean, you think of traffic accidents and terrible illnesses, but... I mean, one silly little slip on the stairs, it, it just seems so unfair somehow. Yeah. I'll go get us some drinks then. Yeah. Good idea. Mrs. Roberts? Yes. You can see her now. Has she come round? I'm afraid not. We've not had the results of the scans back, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. I should have stayed overnight. Well, there's nothing you could have done, love. Well, I didn't sleep a wink anyway, so I might just as well have been here. Right. Oh, Doctor. How is she? Well, she's been very unlucky, but she'll live. Oh, oh thank God. So, what's wrong with her? Oh, severe concussion. There's a uh, fracture to her wrist and ankle. And a possible tear to an Achilles tendon, but we'll know when we can give her a scan. But she's going to get over it all. I mean, she's not going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. No, that's very unlikely, although she might need one for a while. So, I mean, just temporary? Yeah, three to four weeks. She's going to need a lot of physiotherapy, but she'll be fine eventually. There shouldn't be any complications. What do you mean, complications? She's, she's not going to be brain damaged or anything, is she? We won't know for sure until she's awake. And when will that be? Hopefully today, tomorrow. She will come round. Yeah. We're fairly confident of that. And when she does, you'll be able to speak to her. I wonder how much longer it's going to be. 
Actually, I'm going to ring Sarah while we're waiting, tell her what's happened. I've got a new number here somewhere. Where is it? Well, you can't. I mean, uh, you're not allowed to use your mobile in here, are you? No, well, there's a pay phone there. I don't know. Mrs. Roberts. Um, Hello, Doctor. This is Detective Constable Weller from Weatherfield CID. Hi. Yeah, hi. Was well, something wrong? Well, um, it's your daughter's injuries. There seems to be some uncertainty about them. Uncertainty? What do you mean? Well, there's bruising on her arm that suggests it wasn't an accident. What? Yeah, we've looked at her more closely after some concern from A&E. The bruising suggests it's more likely there was a struggle than a fall. So, if it wasn't an accident, then... Well, it's possible she was pushed. No. Oh, do that. Well, an intruder, maybe. We well, asked some neighbours if they saw anything suspicious. No, I don't believe that. Are, are you sure that's what happened? As sure as we can be, yeah. So, uh, I'm afraid, Mrs Roberts, it looks like we may have a criminal investigation on our hands. So, what do you think happened? Well, we got to keep an open mind for the time being. Well, you know, um, you don't think it was an accident? It's hard to say. She could have disturbed an intruder. But, on the other hand... What? Well, your grandmother said that she found the back door open. And we couldn't see any signs of a break-in and... There was no damage anywhere, and nothing seemed to have been stolen. So? So? Well, if she was pushed, it could have been someone she knew. Hi. Don't look so worried. As soon as she comes round, all will be revealed. Any brains? Does she, Mrs Roberts? Enemies, no. What well, you know, people she doesn't get on with. Well, no, not especially. Um, what would you say, David? What? No. I'd say she gets on with most people. Yeah, right. I mean, she had the odd falling out with Eileen. That's the mother of the young chap that her daughter wed. But, no, that was just the usual wrangling between in-laws, you know. Good news. She's coming round. Oh, thank goodness. Can we see her? Yeah, absolutely. Now she can tell us what really happened. Gail? Gail? Here, drink this. Oh. Your throat will be sore for a while, so not too much talking. Hospital, sweetheart. You fell downstairs. Fell downstairs? Yes. We found you, don't you remember? Mrs. Platt. I'm DC Weller. We're just trying to find out how you came to fall down the stairs. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Keep it brief, please. Okay. The A and E staff reported bruises on your upper arms. Can you tell me how you got them? Do you remember going up the stairs? Well, what's the last thing that you remember? Or the last person that you remember seeing? I remember. It was Jason. Jason Grimshaw. With Jason. You remember arguing with Jason Grimshaw before the fall? Do you remember what you were arguing about? Did did he grab you? Did he grab your arms? Did Jason push you down the stairs? Do I have to do all this now? She's so tired. Yeah, of course. But I will have to speak to you again. Listen, if she remembers anything more. 
Please call me on this number, okay? Yeah. Uh, we'd like to keep her in a few more days for observation. Right. I'm just a bit worried about this memory thing, though. I mean, why can't she remember what happened before she fell? Well, it's quite common that concussion can lead to some memory loss. Well, will it come back? Will she ever remember what happened? It's hard to say. She may remember something, maybe nothing. It can be quite frustrating, which is why I wouldn't put too much pressure on her. No, of course. We're just oh, pleased and thankful she's going to be OK. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have to go. Yes, okay. Thanks, Doctor. Can you really not remember what happened to you? Why would Jason push me down the stairs? Must have been an accident. Sorry. What have you to be sorry for? I'm sorry you got hurt. I'm, I'm sorry you fell. You know, and I wasn't there to help you. I was worried about you. I'm really worried. I suppose you, you don't know how you feel until something terrible happens. You have to come. I wanted to. I wish her. She's okay. How are you? Okay. Do you want me to go, because...? No. I'm sorry, all right? Stay. It's just a lot of things have gone on, and it's... It's not been easy, I think. I should have talked to you. Yeah. You should. Can I go in and see you? I don't want you upsetting her or anything, you know? I won't upset her. And she still is pretty tired. Well, I won't stay long. Yeah, then. OK. Come on. We could turn back time. Listen, right, it... It don't matter. We all make mistakes. I'm really sorry about you, Mum. Yeah. How did it happen? How, how do you mean? How, how did you fall down the stairs? I can't remember. And you don't know? I would, I know. Has Jason said anything? I don't know. The police spoke to him yesterday. Have you no idea why you hit him? Why would I hit Jason? Doesn't seem feasible. And if I did, for whatever reason he, he wouldn't hurt me back I'm sure of that well how sure has he got much of a temper Jason I wouldn't imagine he has well something must have happened no I, I've never really seen Jason lose his rug before not properly anyhow then again you, you never really know do you looked after by this chivalrous young man. They call him David Platt. Oh, do they now? <laughs> and he assures me it's going to continue once we get home. Look, grapes, coffee, chocolate brownies, three magazines. Yeah, I got one of those magazines for free, though, because it will last months. 
A woman in that kiosk loved me. Hey, do you know they're all volunteers? <laughs> Emily does it sometimes. Yeah? There's all bouncing Eccles cakes as well. He's keeping my spirits up, aren't you? Full of surprises. Oh, yeah. It should be nice and chilled by now. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten to bring up the flowers I bought you. Yeah. Oh, D David, go and fetch them from the car, darling. You don't have to keep buying me flowers. No, they'll probably be on the passenger seat. Or where are you parked? Oh, right over by the entrance to the maternity unit. All right. Not a thing. It's just... Well, he said there'd been a misunderstanding. Go on. Well, as far as I could make out, right, the reason he came to see you was because he got it into his head that Sarah was having an abortion. See? How? Oh, something Becky from Roy's overheard. I mean, he realises now he got the wrong end of the stick. But he did get quite agitated by the sound of things. And so did you. So that's probably why you slapped him. Do you know, I do vaguely. Maybe it's because you've just mentioned it, but I do think I remember him saying something about an abortion. Oh, there you are. Anyway, I don't think that led to this. <sighs> Maybe I don't remember. I don't know. You didn't say anything about Tina's abortion to anybody, did no. you? No. I don't think so. We agreed to keep it under wraps, didn't we? Gran, I couldn't see the flowers anywhere. What? Oh. oh! You know what I've done, don't you? I've put them on the roof of the car and then I've driven off without realising <laughs> 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 You've got some competition here, Mum. You won't have any marbles left between you both soon. <laughs> Will you be wanting a lift home, David? Uh, no. You get off. I'll stay and keep Mum company for a little bit. I mean, this thing was your idea. I know, I know, I know. I'm just... I'm just struggling to imagine my grandson pushing his own mother downstairs. I'll try harder. No, look, as it stands, we have to assume he doesn't know about the abortions. So what are you saying is, you want to go home? No! What I'm saying is, we need to tread really carefully. Or as I keep saying, on and on and on. We should call the police no. and let them sort it no. out. No, no. Oh! oh. Morning, morning. How's Gail? Uh, she's on the mend. <laughs> Touch wood. Are you all right, Audrey? Uh, yes, Ken, fine. Oh. <laughs> I thought of going out for a jaunt in the country this afternoon, but I don't want to lose my place to all these trucks. You had to park the other end of Victoria Street last night. Soon, I'll have to get a bus to get my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's all these blasted builders. Oh, sorry, no offence. I'm thinking of taking up the question of resident parking with the council. Anyway, you enjoy your day off. You too. Every day is a day off of these shoes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right, come on, Nichols. <laughs> oh. Morning, sexy. Um, I wasn't going to open till lunchtime. I'm sorry, I thought I explained. It's all right. You go back upstairs, do whatever it is you were doing, and I'll get things going down here, open a bit earlier than planned. Right, it, it'll be quiet. Listen. YMCA ain't stopped for Easter. Why should we? Uh, no, no, Becky, please. Mm, sorry, sorry, sorry. The truth is, Roy, I, I didn't want to be hanging around my place all day. I went to a right old ding-dong with woman what lives below me this morning. You, maybe you can settle this. What actually happened on Good Friday? Uh, Jesus was crucified. Right. It's all right, then. It's a bit misleading, though, isn't it? Shouldn't it be called Bad Friday? Come in. I was sure it when it came back from dead. So much to do with a big stone in a park and a prostitute. That was Easter Sunday, the resurrection. Don't let Emily hear you speaking like that. David, did you push your man down the stairs? What? Why would I push my mum down the stairs, Gran? 
Who's put this in your head? Is it him? No, listen, listen. Maybe you didn't do it on purpose, but did you do it? Of course I didn't. The police have been speaking to Jason. They seem to think he's done it, don't they? Jason never pushed anyone. Yeah, and what makes you so sure? Just a minute. David, I'm going to ask you something now. And it might come as a shock to you, right? What? Did you know about your girlfriend's abortion? Oh, lovey, no, you didn't, did you? Oh, David. What? When? Well, when do you think? Work it out. Just before this happened. Yeah. Mine. Yeah, lovey, yeah. Afraid it was. Yeah, I was. Did my mum know? We were trying to protect you. We? So you all knew? Protect me? Hey, don't get aggressive with her. Yeah, and what's it got to do with you? How were you protecting me? Oh. David, you can't even look after yourself. So you took it upon yourself to make my own decision for me? No, Tina made the decision. No one else. She just asked your mum's advice. Are you sure you didn't know? Does it look as though I did? Yes. Bill. Because one explanation might be that you found out and you weren't happy. And the next thing you know, Gail was lying at the bottom of the stairs. And you panic and start lying. How dare you come here and attack me when my mother is lying in hospital? Just leave me alone. Keep him away from me before I swing for him. Oh, like you swung for Gail. Just try it, lad. Oh, now leave it, Bill. He's lying Shut through his teeth. David, look, we all love Bethany to bits, don't we? Hmm? But where did Sarah's youth go? You don't want to be a parent at 17, darling, believe me. Saddled with all that when you've got the world on your doorstep. Just both of you. Leave me alone. Right. Well, mm -hmm. give me a ring when you've had time to think, eh? You know, you can talk to me, David Lovey. Mm -hmm. You can tell your nan anything, remember that. Just go. Yeah, get over here now. Hey, you know that. Where have you been? I've told you. We can pay. What are you looking for? Right, okay. Um, listen. The afternoon. My mum fell. You've got to say you was with me. I was with you, wasn't I? No, earlier than that. When it happened. Why? Well, why'd you think? Oh, my God. You nutter, David! An accident. Well, she lost her footing. We were arguing, and all right, I pushed her, but I never meant for it to fall, all right? She just lost her footing. What, do you think I tried to kill her? How, how could a push be an accident? Because I never intended her to fall. Right, well, tell the police it was an accident then. Well, they're not going to believe me, are they? I just found out you and her had cooked up an abortion without telling we me. We didn't cook up anything. We're trying to protect you. That's exactly what me gran said. 
You was all just trying to get it over and done with as quick as possible before I had to say... No, so, so, hang on a minute. That day when you came to see me, she, she was what? Just lying there on the floor. And you knew it. You left her. I was in shock, all right? I didn't know what to no, do. No, no. The only thing you were bothered about was getting away with it. Tina, I was all over the place after what I'd just heard. Oh, don't even turn this round. What? And don't even give me the guilt trip. I can't lie for you. Oh, but you've got to, though, please. What, you can lie about being pregnant, but you can't lie about this? That was for your own good. How many times? Most lads would love to have it so easy. And technically, I didn't lie about being pregnant. I just didn't tell you. Look, whatever your excuse is, all right? At the end of the day, you've got me into this mess. You're gonna have to get me out. Let's... She was gonna get rid of me, you know? She's regretted it ever since. No, she hasn't. What? Did she tell you how she was gonna have me aborted? No. She encouraged me to think about it, OK? Not to rush into anything. Just let me know what my options were. And I bet all the time you were like, oh, she's got my best interests at heart. Eh? Our best interests. What are you looking for? I bet she were practically begging you. No, not at all. I told you, I trusted her. And she offered to pay, so... She paid? She paid to kill my child. Oh, don't say that. She didn't think you could cope, and I agreed. I don't think I could cope. I could hardly see us changing nappies at three in the morning. Yeah, well, if my sister could do it, then anybody could. Yeah, well, maybe your sister had a bit more about her than you think. Listen, my sister has got nothing about her, right? And it's not too late for us. I mean, as long as the police think that Jason no, did it... with forget us. You're the one that lost your temper, and you're the one who's covered it up. What is it? David? And it was an accident. You were upset and she lost her footing. You know, you lie to me, but you won't lie to the police. Do you know how worthless that makes me feel? I'm going to open it. Don't! Hi, I'm DC Weller. We'd like to talk to David Platt. Um, come in. Thanks. David, we'd like to speak to you about your mother. My mother? Why? Has anything happened? Oh, we'd like you to come down to the station and talk about what happened the day of the accident. Talk to me? Right, well, yeah. I mean, if there's any way I can help, then, obviously. Now? Yeah, if you could. I mean, I've been in more shock than anyone. You know, Jason was my brother-in-law and, well, I, I considered him a mate. Right, it's cool. You haven't got uh, a spare chewing gum, have you? No, my last one. Right, do you mind if I just go and grab my coat then from inside? On you go. Don't. Please. I'm begging you. David! Just help me, Tina. Why does nobody ever help me? Will she help him? Find out in half an hour. Do you want me to tell anyone? David! Tell who? No. Range your head as you get in. Um, I'll wait here then, shall I? You've been asked if you want legal representation, and your answer was... Uh, no. I haven't done anything wrong, so I shouldn't need one. Thank you. So, you and Mother's had this fall? Yeah. Except it wasn't a fall, was it? Somebody pushed her. 
Well, I don't know. Did they? There were things between you and her. <laughs> well, she's my mum. You don't like her, though, do you? You don't get on. Mostly we do, yeah. In uh, 2005, you sent a series of cards signing them Richard. What did you do that for? I suppose I thought it was funny. And I suppose now I can see, obviously, it wasn't. What? Now that you're older? Yeah. Still haven't changed much, have you? I mean, just last year we had you claiming that your mother attacked you and beat you up and had she? Well, you know she hadn't. So, what's that all about? I don't know. And then your sister getting married. What did you go and do? Yeah. Drive a car into the canal and try and kill yourself. Look, I'll ask you again, David. What is your relationship with your mother? You hate her? Yeah? No. So what's all this? All right, there have been times when we haven't got on. I would say that half. I didn't push her down the stairs. Then who did? I don't know. I wasn't even there. And maybe you? I was with my girlfriend at her house. OK. Let's just talk a bit more about you and your mother. Because we've been talking to Jason. You know Jason, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Well, he said that you told him that you wanted to kill her. <laughs> no, I didn't. He said that you were both on a roof somewhere and your mother was down below and you pretended to have a gun and started shooting at her. Well, did he tell you how he married my sister? And then she left him and he's, he's blamed our family ever since? You pushed her down those stairs, didn't you? No. Sir? No. OK, uh, you were talking to her. I wasn't arguing with her. I wasn't talking with her. I wasn't even there, right? I told you I was at my girlfriend's. And who saw you at your girlfriend's? She did. Who else? Nobody else. So, um, how old your girlfriend? 17. And how, how long are you going out? 10 weeks. <laughs> 10 weeks? About that, yeah. And you think, in the basis of a ten-week relationship, that she's going to tell us that you were with her when she knows it isn't true? And then, when she knows she's going to be questioned by policemen and lawyers, and she's going to have to stand up in court under oath? It's not going to happen, is it? Well, yeah. But does she hate her mother? Does she want to push her mother down the stairs? I shouldn't think so, no. Then why should she risk her neck defending you? And that's what you've done to yours. 40 hours. So, um, remind me, what's the name of your girlfriend again? Tina. Oh, was that the one I, I saw at the house? Yeah. Listen, see if she gives you this alibi and it turns out not to be true. She could be in a lot of trouble, David. And I'm just saying, because if you think anything about her, which I think you do, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, you ought to think very carefully about what you're asking her to do and whether you really want to put her on the spot like this. Right? Because any minute now, Maria will be talking about maternity leave, <laughs> so I don't know where that's going to lead me. David. Hello, Gran. Bill. You all right, Mum? All the better for seeing you. Yeah, I think we should go, because they don't like more than two visitors around their bed. No, they won't mind. Well, before anybody goes anywhere, can I just ask, who was it that shocked me? What do you mean? Well, up until this morning, it was Jason that pushed you down the stairs, right? Except now he's denying it. Then again, he would. Now, all of a sudden, they're gunning for me. Well, I would have thought what's important is, uh, are they right? No, they're not. So? Who was it? 
Grant? Uh, it was me. I rang him. Bill? Oh, come on, Gail. Anybody that knows him would have done the same. Anybody that knows what he's capable of and what he's done in the past. Yeah, well, thanks, Bill. No, it was me as well. OK, Bill made the call, but I agreed with him. Then I think you both better leave. Oh, Gail. No! I don't want you here pretending to be concerned for me when all the time you're going behind me back and trying to get David into serious trouble with the police. And what did they say? Well, the police. They've said, sorry for wasting your time, Mr Platt, and can we give you a lift anywhere? Oh, come on. We were just trying to get at the truth, David. Yes, well, do it out in the open. Not in snide phone calls. Come on. We don't want you getting upset. Come on, Bill. Hello, Tina. We're back again. Where's David? I think he's going to visit his mum. But actually, it's you we want to talk to. Do you mind if we come in a minute? Yeah. Thanks. Are you spending the day with Tina? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually. Good. Don't like to think of you on your own. I'll just let her know where I am. Especially after the way you've been treated by some members of your family. I can't believe it. Hiya, it's me. Um, just letting you know that the feds have let me go and I'm in the hospital now with my mum. What? Now? Honest? Um, right, OK. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be on as soon as I can. Bye-bye. Everything all right? Yeah. She's just made me a meal, that's all, and just wondered what time I'd be home. Well, you don't have to stay here. Yeah, well, happen I'll go now, anyhow. But I'll call again and see you tomorrow. Well, whatever fits in with yours and Tina's plans. All right, I'll do that. Um, so I'll see you soon. And get well, all right? Bye-bye. Mm. See you, love. Just going to ring you. What's, what's happened? What have you told them? They wanted to know if you were really with me. Yeah, they would. And, and you told them what? I told him. Yeah, you were. And that's what I'll be telling everybody else. And it's even what I'll be saying in court, if I have to. <sighs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Ciao. Sorry? I thought we had a deal. I've had a little, um, I'm not particularly hungry. You're going to hurt the chef's feelings. But I haven't forgotten how to eat, OK? I'm sorry. It's just I... Stop wearing your brain out, love. It'll all come back to you. I 
must be still dreaming. What do you reckon? Yeah. Amazing. Why are you doing this? I couldn't sleep. Okay, stop. What? Stop cleaning. Lose those gloves, cos they're seriously freaking me out. All right, calm down. Just wanted it to look nice for, you know, when my mum gets home. You're serious about looking after her? Well, yeah, I'm a son. David, wake up. A bit of spring cleaning isn't going to keep your gran away. You can't stop her coming round here. My mum doesn't need anybody but me, all right? You can't control this. Well, then what am I supposed to do? Uh, I'm in this as well. Yeah, and I'm trying to protect us. And what if you can't? I'm sorry. I know you're doing your best. Yeah. Still rubbish, though, innit? Oh, I don't know. At least I know you're not a total dead loss around the house. Hi, love. Hello? Brought you some magazines. Thanks. Didn't expect to see you today. Well, I wanted to come. How are you feeling? Much the same. It's really quite cheery in here in the daytime, isn't it? Get her, love. About what happened yesterday. I don't want to hear. No, but we've got to clear the air. He's a guilty conscience, more like. I'm sorry, we both are. It was a mistake. Telling me or telling the police? Well, it shouldn't have come out like that. It shouldn't have come out at all, ma'am. How do you think David feels about it? He's not the one in hospital, is he? He's still your grandson. <sighs> it broke my heart. So you got Bill to do your dirty work Look, for him. David is a very mixed that's up... That's enough. Man. The story Man, that's doesn't... enough. There's only one person in this world that knows what happened. So until I remember... I suggest you keep your opinions to yourself. Right, come on. Hmm. What are you doing? We're going to see you, Mum. What for? Well, she's in hospital, in case you've forgotten. I just want to see how she is, OK? Well, don't you think we should give it a few days? We can't look like we're hiding from this thing. If we don't go and visit, it gives your grant even more ammunition. All right, so what are you going to say? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. How about how are you feeling, Gail? Yeah, that'd be a good start. This isn't funny, all right? Yeah, I had noticed, thanks. Look, I'm not going to break down and start blabbing if that's what you're worried about. But don't let that stop you. Tina, don't even joke about it. Okay? I hate lying to her. Yeah, well, it's too late for the truth. Well, you don't know that. They're not going to believe me. Your mum will. We'll make her. Yeah, well, it's not up to her anymore, is well, it? Well, it was an accident. I still pushed her. OK, that's all the police are bothered about now. So what are we going to do? We stick to the story. And then what? Hello, you two. Hiya. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm OK. On the mend, the doctor says. Oh, that's good. Um... I've got these for you. I know, I know they're only small, but... Freesias are my absolute favourite. Thank you. David, uh, will you just snip down to the nurse's station, sort out a vase for those? Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, have the doctors said when you can come home? Never mind about me. How are you feeling? Um, yeah. I'm OK. And David? I think we both realised it would have been a bit mad, you know, having a kid. We've only known each other for five minutes, so... Must have been a bit of a shock for him, finding out about the termination from my mum. Yeah, I suppose. Are you sure he didn't know about the abortion before the accident? No, um, first thing he knew about it was when Audrey said... Well... Oh. Right, which way's the loo? Um, out the door, turn right down the corridor. Okay, do you want anything from the shop? Uh, actually, yeah, would you get me, um, a crossword magazine, please? I've finished all these. No Sudoku, mind you, that drives me batty. <laughs> sure. Glad you two made up. 
She's a nice girl. Yeah. David, I'm sorry about the pregnancy and everything. Mom. No, please, just hear me out. I know we kept it from you. And from where you are now, that must just seem terrible. All I can say is I thought we were doing the right thing. Tina was in such a state. Well, Mum, you don't have to explain You'd anything. You had such a hard time of it last year. Mum, please listen. I know you thought you was only doing it for the best, and I'm dealing with it. Right now, though, the only thing I care about is you and getting better. Is it okay for you? No wooziness? Well, a bit. Quite like it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be at home by the end of the week. Oh, that's great news, Mum. It'll be good to be back in my own bed. You'll no doubt need a wheelchair for a bit, just for convenience, but I'm really pleased with your progress. Have you got some help at home? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be looking after her. We both will. Yeah, of course we will. I can even uh, set a bed up for you downstairs if you like. Well, with help, you should be fine with the stairs. I'm sure we'll manage. But, um, this memory thing... I still can't remember anything about the accident. It's much harder to predict, I'm afraid. You may regain all of your memory, or you may be gone for good. You'll just have to wait and see. Well, thank you, Doctor. You and the nurses have been wonderful. Credit to the NHS. Uh, tell all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> News. It's brilliant, yeah. I'm really pleased with you. What a tough old bird, aren't you? I've had to be. Mum? Oh, hello, Lou. Wasn't expecting you today. Yeah, well, I thought I'd bring the post from home. It were mounting up and well, I didn't know if any of it was important. Oh, it's thoughtful of you. Oh, I've just remembered something. What? Uh, my credit card, it's overdue. Oh, well, can't I deal with that? Would you? Be a weight off my mind. Checkbook's by the telephone. So have they not said when you can leave? No. Would you want me to have a word? Well, the doctor's coming round later, so let's wait and see what he has to say. Oh, it's your call. I'm going to have the place spotless when you get home, though. Oh, David, there's no need. No, I want to do it. Listen, I'm going to be looking after you and, until you get better, right? Thank you. But shouldn't you be at work? Yeah, well, I've taken the day off. I thought what's more important, looking after you, or just brewing up for some blue-rinsed brewings. <laughs> well, I hope your grand doesn't mind. No, we shall have to deal with it. Well, I suppose a bit of space between you two won't hurt. Not the way things have been. No. Yeah. I'd rather be with you anyway. So, can I get you anything? A cup of tea would be nice. Coming right up. <laughs> hi, hi. Hello, Ma. So, how are you today? Yeah, a lot better, thanks. Doctor says I could be discharged on Friday. Oh, oh, that's great news. I'll get the spare room all made up. What for? For when she comes out of hospital, of course. Yeah, she'll be coming on with me, Gran. I'm gonna be looking after her. Oh, don't worry, take it. No, it's right, ma'am. Oh, okay, come on, how can he look after you? He's a lad. Well, I'm the same age you was when you had her, and she somehow survived. Anyway, you've made it perfectly clear what you think of me, Gran, but I am an adult, and I am gonna be doing this for her, and if you've got a problem with no, that, No, that's to... enough, David. I want to go home, ma'am. I can't wait to get home. And it's important to David that he looks after me. Well, that's what you want. You know where I am. We appreciate that. Don't we, David? Yeah. Of course we do, Grant. Now, come on. I'll just run the hoover around and give everything the once over. I don't think so. We'll be fine, honest. Oh. All right. Well, no huffing and puffing when your mum asks you to do errands, right? And keep the tea flowing. Don't wait to be asked to put the kettle on. Oh, now, yes, now, there are two throws in the airing cupboard. Now, she'll probably need those over her knees, cos you get quite icy when you're sitting stationary. Come on, I'll get them. Gran. It's OK, we'll saw it. Right. See you later. Bye-bye. 
Sí, ahí. She's well on your case. Nah, she's got you paranoid. It's a party piece. All right, well, what if your mum remembers? I mean, what if she walks in here and it all comes flooding back? It'd be like a reconstruction, only she'll be in it. That's why they do him, to jog people's memories. What memory? She's confused a Weatherfield. All right, well, what if it comes back? It's not going to happen. You don't know that, David. I do, though. Trust me. Her short term, it's shot. Oh, darling. Hey, welcome home. We can sing a bit of Peter's and leave, if you uh, like. I'll pass, thank you. Oh, there we go. Back on telephone. Oh, yeah, well, this thing makes it look worse than it is. Hey, good to have you back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We can manage from here, thanks. Uh, look, would you mind just holding on just a second? Are you sure you wouldn't prefer to come back to my place? Ma'am. I can take better care of you, Gail. Grant, what is your problem? Uh, no disrespect to David. I'm sure he'll do his best, but I... Yeah, all right, all right. Shut up, Audrey. Keep your mouth shut. Sounds good to me. Thanks again. Right, come on, then, and let's save these wheelies for later. <laughs> you just keep your eye on the road, you. He's just what the doctor ordered. Yes. <laughs> You all right, Mum? It's so frustrating. Yeah, but you shouldn't rush it. I must have been up there. And then... I just can't piece together the little bits I do remember. Yeah, well, you're stressing yourself out now. It's no good. It's just one big blank. Look, Gran will be on the phone to social services if you get stressed, so... Whoever that is can do one. <laughs> what a charmer. Yeah, well, you need your rest. Re if I get any more rest, I'll go spare. I don't think she's really up to this is. Well, I'll not stop long. Sorry, she's searching my timing. Is that Eileen? Yeah, I'll not keep you, Gail. Let her in, David. Hiya. Oh, I'm um, uh, brought you these. Oh. That's really kind. Well, I'm not stopping. I just wondered if anything had come back to you. I mean, I'm sorry to pile on the pressure. But you'll do it anyway. The last thing I remember is that slanging match with Jason. I'm sorry. Do you honestly think he'd leave you lying there, Jason? No. I don't know. I wish I could remember. Look, I think you better go. If I could clear his name, I would. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll come back to you. I'm convinced of it. And in the meantime, I'm in very good hands here. David's missed his vocation as a bouncer. Thanks, Phil. Don't worry, it's only me. Oh, dear. <sighs> Told you David could manage. Yeah, well, I hope you haven't been overdoing things. Shazam. I'd be very well looked after. I've got flowers from Sarah, chocolates from Eileen, and David's gone to the library to get me a stack of corny romances. Mm. Poor Eileen. It's a phrase I never thought I'd say. Well, with the police breathing down Jason's neck. Yeah, I know. Jason would never leave me lying in a heap. Mm. Never say never. You can't remember, can you? Anyway, it'll all come out in the wash, won't it? Come on, love, you look tired. Try mm. and get some sleep. Tina and I can have a catch-up, right? We'll get to the bottom of it soon enough. Mm. Oh. 
It's nice to get away from that central heating, isn't it? A bit of fresh air. Well, it's nothing like the smell of the old wheeler bin. <laughs> You've got an answer for everything, you, Bella. <laughs> Just a minute, Tina. Um, you know you said David was with you? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, just tell me again what time he came round to your place. Quarter past four. Sorry? Quarter past four. Oh, right. Well, that's very precise, isn't it? Quarter past four. Oh. Yeah, well, it was. It was quarter past four. Now, can I go in, please? I just it's wondered, freezing. though, did you make a mistake? I mean, you could have been confused, lovey. No, I get confused all no, the time. I wasn't confused. Well, maybe David was confused, right? I mean, listen, maybe you thought it was later. But it was David that said it was quarter past four. No, no. I remember the big hand was on the three and the small hand was on the four. Tina, I know how persuasive David could be. We've pussyfooted around him for the last few years, just even him sweet. And I know what a terrible temper he's got and all when he's pushed about. I really don't need to hear this. In fact, I don't think we've done him any favours at all because he's turned into a very nasty, angry young man. Well, like I told the detective, it was at mine at quarter past four. Yes, and I don't think I believe you, madam. So if you're lying to protect David, I think you should say so. Oh, get off my case, will you? I've made my statement. I think underneath all that, lovey, is a very truthful girl, and I don't think it lies easy with you to lie. Can you get out of my way, please? You must love David so much to lie to the police. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? Oh, Tina, come on. There's still time to put things right before things go spiralling out of control, which they will. So come on, now is the time to tell the truth, leader. Your mum's back then. Oh, good news travels fast. How's your memory? She still knows all the words to yes, sir, I can buggy. But as for the important stuff, say, who pushed her down the stairs? Gone. For now. Oh, for good, for all we know. You. Oh, no. Because when it all comes flooding back, she'll remember who shoved her. Yeah, she might. I'd probably leave country if I were you. I hear Milan's quite nice. I haven't done anything! Yeah, tell it to magistrate. Won't be surprised if it was you. You know, I'd love to stay and listen to your fascinating theories, Jason. It's just I've got stuff to do. Mum's expecting her library books. Chicklet, if you're interested. I don't think she's really into whodunits. Look, no one's buying your blue-eyed boy routine, OK? You can twist this all you like, OK? The bottom line is, you was having a row about Sarah and you lost it. When I left that house, Gail was alive and kicking. What, are you sure you were your girlfriend? Stay away from my property, OK? And stay away from my mum. Or I'll have you done for harassment. You know I'm innocent. And she'll remember, and when she does, it'll all come on top. <laughs> Coronation Street continues in half. I should get you some arnica. I've never heard of it, but apparently it makes you feel better. <laughs> oh, David. What? Is it wrong? That's what she said. No, it's right. Never thought I'd see my David running round Weatherfield trying to find little goodies for his mum. Yeah, well, you just take a couple of pills a day, something. David, put the kettle on, will you? I think that hospital's dehydrated me. Well, I don't believe that. So Tina, you all right? Yeah. I thought you said you're going to be five minutes. Have you been round about? We're not. Just having a catch-up. Do you want to come and help us with the shopping? I'll tell you're upset. Am I right? Just tell me. It's nothing. Not really. She just... What? We were just chatting, for goodness sake, David. She keeps on asking her about the day. You know, what's happened? What's going on? Nothing. Ran's upsetting Tina, making out that she's a liar. I don't know why she's doing I it, I have but... not called anybody a liar. Going over and over, when you got to mine, when you left, couldn't I be wrong about the time? Ma'am, I was just chatting. I thought maybe if she could remember somewhat important... Right, there's nothing to remember, right? She wasn't here, just like I wasn't. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. All right, you. David. No need to get worked on. Oh, well, if I can't even chat to the girl... Ma'am, if... stop it. We will not have Tina nagged and bullied. She doesn't deserve it. There you are. Ooh, thank you. 
Got everything you need? Yeah, she's got me and Tina to worry about that. I'm being very well looked after, thank you. Feeling very spoilt. As long as they don't go off and leave you stuck here on your own. Grant, why do you always think the worst of us? I mean, me, all right, I'm used to it, but what's Tina ever done to you? I'm not arguing with you, do. I just don't understand it, Mum. What's in it for her? Why does she want to make it look as I've done this to you? I don't want anything of the sort. You know, it's bad enough getting it off Jason, but my own Gran. You should know better. He's right, Mum. We've had enough arguments and suspicion. I'm tired. I just want to rest. David and Tina are looking after me, and so far they're doing a very good job of it. Right. Well, I still can visit my own daughter, I hope. Visit, yes. Interfere? Look, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I thought you were spending the evening with Gail. Yeah, so did I. Well, I'm meeting Jason. We're celebrating getting the contract. Six months' work, if it all goes well. But you don't look like you're in a party mood. <sighs> David knows what's happened to Gail, Bill. I'm sure of it. And that young Tina isn't as wide-eyed and innocent as she seems. I mean, simple question. She's twitching with nerves. You didn't say anything, though, did you? Just a few gentle questions. Well, you keep this up, and Gail's going to tell you we're clear off. Ah! Well, she's more or less done that all right, eh? Huh? She's made it perfectly clear she's siding with David. <sighs> Bill, I am so worried. I mean, here am I, just, what, 100 yards away? Could be 100 miles away. Look, all you've got to do, keep friendly, eyes and ears open, and keep that mouth of yours shut. Yeah, I know. Just smile and nod. But say no. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, Bill, I hate it. But knowing that she's in that house practically helpless and David's ruling the roost just like he always wanted to. Yeah, just about. It's not going in it. Listen, I'm not going on. Yeah, you are. Are you sure you didn't say anything to Audrey? I said what you told me to say. My grand's a real expert, you know. About getting stuff out of people. Yeah, well, she didn't get anything out of me. I didn't drop you in it, all right? Yeah, all right. But... And I'm sick of people asking and asking and looking at me funny, then asking again. No, no. I'm sorry, don't let it get to you, all right? It's just me and my big mouth. She's asleep. A light's on. Yeah, she's asleep. Well, I can see the light off the telly in the window. OK, she's asleep. Well, when she wakes up... In the morning. Tell her we came. Well, I'll try and remember. And I... Leave them too. This time of night. They won't leave us alone. Yeah, well, who cares about them? It's everyone. No. Them, Audrey. I can't go around to the corner shop without someone asking stupid questions. Yeah, Tina, everybody just wants to know how my mum is, yeah. that's all. And has she remembered anything? And and the look at me. <sighs> sort of. Tina, you're just imagining it, babe. No, I'm not. I have to lie, and I hate it. I hate the way they pretend to believe me. All right, stop it now, yeah? I don't know how long I can keep this up for, David. All these lies. I can look after her, you know. If you want to get off somewhere, you know, take a break. It's OK. I would come with you. I just think that one of us should stay here in case she does remember anything, that it, it's us that she tells it to. You know, and not some nosy neighbour. Then what do we do? Knock her over the head, make her forget again? Baby, can you come up here a minute? Yeah. Look, I know none of this has been a lot of fun for you. Fun? What? The abortion? I wait for your mum's memory to kick in, land us in jail. Yeah, well, you don't have to stay here, you know? <sighs> If I was somewhere else, I'll only be thinking I should remember, Jet. David? Yeah? What? 
don't worry. Keep smiling, keep my fingers crossed. Oh, and keep lying. Mind taking me out, do you, Tina? No, of course not. Shame to interrupt David when he's enjoying himself so much. Oh, yeah, I'm loving every minute of that. And it won't be for much longer. Feeling a lot stronger. I really am. Oh, good. Oh, thanks, Lil. You all right, Gail? I think I am, yeah. I was uh, thinking of coming over later. Yeah? Well, you know how tired you get, Mum. You don't know what we're doing, do you? See how well looked after I am? No wonder I'm feeling better. Yeah, well, obviously, I wouldn't stop if you were feeling tired. I'll see you later. Did I not make myself clear? You're not leaving that house until I've had my rent. And you would have, but you haven't got a cash point in your kitchen, have you? So I better go find one. I'll see you both later. I was going to get my hair done. You are? Well, I had the accident. It's coming back to me. I know it's not important and it's bits and pieces, but it's coming back. Are you trying to reach something, but you just can't quite get hold of it, and you stretch, and you stretch, you just can't quite. But it is getting nearer. I feel it is. There's uh, yeah. some teas and coffees. Oh, it does have its compensations, like being waited on hand and foot. Yeah, I can see. Uh, do you want one? Uh, no. So, um, do you remember anything else about when you were talking to Jason? I mean, I'm sorry to go on about it, but I have to. It was down here. Yeah, I, I gathered that. Definitely down here. Because I think... Well, I think I do. I'm... I remember... Yeah? I remember him going. Going? Leaving. Leaving the house? And I remember him leaving because he slammed the door. And I remember thinking, why does everybody slam that door? One day somebody's going to slam it and it's going to just drop off. I remember, I remember thinking that. And this was before your fall? Must have been. So when you fell, he'd gone, he'd already left the house? I remember arguing with him. It was about Sarah. Something he thought I'd said when I happened. Well, never mind what it was about. I mean, the point is, Jason had left before you fell. He must have done. And that's what you say now. I mean, that's what you believe happened. Where's Tina? Uh, she's, I think she's, she's, she's gone outside. So you argued whatever it was about, and it was down here. Yeah. And then Jason left. He went through that door. Yeah. So he'd gone when you had your fall, which means he couldn't have pushed you. I just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, no, except you don't, David. You don't know. All the time I was out with her, she was going on about how her memory's coming back. It's like she can feel it happening, going on and on about it. I nearly said, let's get this whole thing over with. You want to know who pushed her? It was your David. Listen, shut up. No. <sighs> right. Maybe she won't remember. You know, just some of it, but not all of it. What? So we'll still be lying and pretending all the time, scared to death about what's going to happen next. Because it's that that I can't stand. You don't get it, do you? I want her to remember. I want her to. And then this whole thing will be over. Mum? Why didn't you call me? <laughs> David. You know you find it difficult by yourself? Mm, usually helped on my way, aren't I? That's a bit, you know. Yeah. Well, I might not be getting my mobility back in a hurry, but I can regain my sense of humour, can't I? I don't remember you having one in the first place. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I was biting off a bit more than I could chew. All right, well, come on. Where's Tina? Uh, she's at work. She won't be back till the end of the day. Oh, that's a shame. 
I enjoyed having her as a sounding board yesterday. I just feel that the more I can talk about it, the more I'll remember. Yeah. I told Graham I'm not feeling very well. Who the hell's Graham? My boss. Don't you ever listen to anything I say? So, how old's this Graham? I don't know. Fifty. I'm watching you. Sure. So, what's up with you then? Stress. What do you think? Listen, the only way she's going to work something out is if you start flaking. So, you better learn just to keep you cool. Oh, what? You're going to throw me down the stairs and all? You alright, Daryl? Oh, yeah, alright. I need to uh, see Lauren. No. It's just, uh, I've been trying to phone her, but she's not, not answering. She's using you. Hey, so dumb you can't even see it. She's not using me, is she, mate? Yeah, she is, mate. Still, what is it to say? Better to get treated badly and not get treated at all? No. Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Mm. Check out the GCSEs on McIntyre. Oh, shut up. Where are you going, anyway? I'm um, going to chemist data for Ironside. You're going to be all right? Yeah. All right, good. Whoa, what's up with you two? Oh, shut up, Daryl. So you... The time, I mean, deja vu, for example. Oh, well, I, I, I can tolerate that. I mean, it's relatively inoffensive, isn't it? Mm. Hey, hello, love. How's Gail today? Fine. Has uh, anything come back to her? No. Mm. Well, you give her our best, won't you? Yeah. Come for a paper, have you? What's that? I said, have you come for a paper? No, um. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, cigarettes, chocolates, and magazines. All right, Tina, what's the latest? What? Do I have heard Gail spoken to the police again? No. I don't know. <sighs> Sorry. with all this, me like this, wondering how an able-bodied 49-year-old ended up at the bottom of the stairs. I just wish I could help more. I wish I saw something, or, uh, or I knew something. Saw something? Well, you know, if I would have been here, if I had something, I could tell the police. But if you had, you'd have told them, wouldn't you? You'd have told them already. Yeah, of course. But I wasn't here, obviously. Are you feeling better? Yeah. Yeah, fine. I've taken some tablets, so it's easy enough now. I was at the top of the stairs. On my own. I'm sure Jason had gone. But there's something... Something elbowing its way back into my mind. Yeah? I think there was another argument. I'm sure there was another argument. Must have been on the stairs. <sighs> it's a funny thing, you know. Memory loss. It's like looking through a fog, waiting for it to lift. I've got a very strong feeling it is going to lift. And when it does, I'll know. Tina? What's the matter? I'm going home. Tina? Tina, if I've put too much pressure on you, I apologise. Come and talk to me, though. I just feel that by going over and over it, See, I think I'm starting to remember the argument. I think it's starting to come back to me. I think David might have come home. I think he might have been here before the accident. Tina? I'm sorry, I can't take this anymore. Tina, what's going on? I don't know. 
I don't know anything. Was he here? I'm sorry, Kate. All right. Yeah, why shouldn't it be? Well, you're allowed to pick them up and browse, you know. Uh, we were asking about your mother earlier. Is, is she any better? Yeah, she's all right. Oh, good. Who were you talking to? Beg your pardon? When you were asking after her. Oh, uh, why are you looking at each other? Well, we were talking to your Tina, as a matter of fact. It is Tina, isn't it? And? Well, she seemed a little bit fragile, if you must know. Yes, well, we, we just you know, asked if there'd been any developments and, and she shot through that door like a cyclone. We didn't know if we'd said anything to upset her. Nor did Jason. Well, what's he got to do with it? Oh, he was here. Don't you think we're finding it hard enough? With my mother practically crippled? David, I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't. Oh, hello, David. How's the invalid? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's all right. Well, he will tell her. If there's anything she needs, David and I are more than willing. Right. Hey, that wife of yours is highly strung, isn't she? I beg your pardon? She's reaching a certain age, Molly, but she could do without people like you shouting across the street about it. No, no, I meant David's. She was stood in here before for, like, 20 minutes, like a waxwork. Dad kept calling her Tina Tussaud. <laughs> How long do they think she'll be in the wheelchair? Not one. Tina? Oh. She's gone. Well, gone where? Home, I think. What have you said to her? I haven't said anything. Come on. What have you gone poking your nose in this time, Mother? She seemed upset. Was it any wonder? All we do now is run round after you, fetching your prescriptions, wheeling you up and down. I remembered something. What now? What do you remember? You. You're what I remember. I think you might have been here. I think we might have argued. I was at Tina's. Well, I told you. you. I was at Tina's. I told everyone, all right? I've told the police. Everybody knows I was at Tina's. Had you just found out? About what? You're not making any sense? You were here, weren't you? You were here when I fell down these stairs. I was nowhere near you. We were at the top of the stairs. Both of us. You're going mad. You know that. You finally lost it. Did you push me, David? Will he own up? Find out in half. I was cleaning the cooker. You knew I'd been talking to Jason. You knew about Tina's abortion. You wanted to run away. No. I tried to stop you. We were both upstairs. You were so angry. It must have been you. No. Jason had gone. You're completely wrong. I wasn't even here. You know, I don't know what's going on in that head of yours, Mum, but you're all mixed up. Maybe there's something in the painkillers, or... Maybe you want to believe it, I don't know, but what I do know is I'm not staying around here and listening to this pack of lies. David! You all right, mate? Yeah, fine.
Hi, it's David. Is Tina there, please? Look, I need to see you. You're turning into a woman. Oh, please, don't make me throw up. Now, why would you want to throw up? Because you're trying to talk to me like an adult. Yeah, but I thought you wanted to be talked to like an adult. Not by you. Yes, I am trying to help. And what makes you think I need help? Well, because the way you were looking at that chef, Paul tells me that you need help. You saw that? <laughs> oh, yes, I saw that. Sucker. What? I was doing it to wind you up. To wind me up? Yeah. And you are so easy. Relax, all right? When I'm ready to start the dating game, I will pick someone a lot more unsuitable <laughs> than Paul. Yeah, all right, now, don't play games with me. No, you know who I really fancy? Oh, uh, uh, who? Pete Doherty. I don't know, maybe <sighs> someone a bit more dangerous. Now you are winding me up. Oh. You see right through me. Uh, yeah. And then he pushed you. He must have done. But you don't remember him actually pushing you. I know what happened. Where is he now? Gone to Tina's, I suppose. She must have lied to cover for him. He wasn't with her when it happened. You should call the police. No. Oh, Gail. If it was David. If! I thought you said you knew. I don't know why he did it. Well, I'll tell you why he did it, shall I? He did it because he found out you'd help Tina have an abortion. That's why. Don't start me. Your mum knows everything. I... I didn't tell her. Can I get you out? Uh, no, we're fine, thanks. No, oh, one drink between two, is it? This is a cafe, you know, not a social club. Yeah, well, do you need pain to leave me alone? Please, Becky, I just want a minute's private. All right, well, when you do want something, you know where I am. I didn't tell her. Honest, I didn't. She says she took your stuff. She was going on at me. I couldn't take it anymore. She was asking questions, trying to work it out. I had to get out. Yeah, well, you didn't have to take your stuff. Dina, you can't leave me, not now. I never knew it'd be like this. Listen, you've got to back me up. If she remembers everything, then what's the point? The point is, my mum's going to hate me for the rest of her life. She's going to think I try to kill her. I can lie and lie all you want. But it's just going to be her word against ours. I knew they're going to believe her. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. It's over. We're finished. No. Yeah. Tina, you're the only thing keeping me going right now. Do you know that? If you bail out on me... I don't over. Just give it time. It'll be all right. I can't do it. I need you. I'm sorry. But I love you. Tina, if I can't be with you, then nothing else matters. Yeah. We should have thought about that before you push your mum down the stairs. She helped you have an abortion behind my back. Yeah. And it was my idea, not hers. You should be angry with me. It's, it's 
it's not gonna work. Tina, I can't let her find out the truth. I just can't. I won't tell anyone. Ever. I will lie for you. We're not going out anymore. Okay, I I've got to go. No. No, please. I'm sorry. That's on the house, love. I'm sorry it could be something a bit stronger. Look, I still say we should call the police. Would you call the police if I shoved you down the stairs? I certainly would. Well, maybe not at once, but... Do you know if he were mine, I'd have the local cop shop on Speed Dial. Well, he's not yours, he's mine. Yes! And he left you for dead at the bottom of them stairs. He's still my son. <sighs> of course he is, Gail, I know that. Darling, it is not your fault that he's the way he is. So whose fault is it? Well, these things happen. It's in his head. I mean, the wires aren't connected right. I don't know. But we both know he's capable of doing some hurtful, terrible things. And you know, one day it's not just going to be broken bones and ruined weddings. One day he's going to kill somebody. Oh, that's ridiculous. But Bethany poisoned. Jason falling off the balcony, you being pushed down the stairs. Gail, that lad has been really lucky so far. Any of you could have died. Are you all right? The thing is, um, David boy, I really need to lock up. I haven't had my tea yet. Bet you can hear my guts rumbling from there, eh? Grrrr. <laughs> staffed. I know it's staffed. This is a cafe, there's loads of food knocking about, but, um... Don't feel right eating where you work, do you know what I mean? All right. Right. Great. Have a nice day! Say something. Well, if I had my way, there'd be a police car waiting for you outside. I didn't do it. David. We know you did it. Why did you do it? There's no point talking to you. I mean, both of you stand there all judge and jury. You've, you've driven Tina away from me and now you want to get me locked up. I was never here, all right? I didn't do it. He's lying. I just want you to tell me the truth. What's the point? I try talking to your mum, but you can't hear me. And, and you'd rather believe lies. Oh, come on, girl, let's get going. What do you mean? Going where? David, do you honestly think I'm going to leave her alone in this house with you? Huh? You've tried to kill her once, my lad. I'm not going to give you another chance to do the same. Stay back in. You know, you don't have to go. Well, I know I've done some things in the past. But I wouldn't. Don't go, please. All I want to hear is the truth. Your mind is playing tricks on you. All right, it's, it's all in your head. It's as though it's a false memory. I mean, if you think about it, like, really try and think, you'll know it wasn't me. You were in the house. I remember that. No! I was at Tina's! All right, how many times do I have to tell you? It's all in your head! Hey, 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 hey! Back off. We're going, right? 
Come on. Mom. It only takes ten minutes to get to mine. What do you need I'd tissues? I'd like to have tissues in my bag. Thank I you. I told you I need to get home now. Well, I don't know why you're in such a rush. I shouldn't have left David on his own. Well, at least if he's on his own, he can't hurt anybody. Yeah, oh, don't look at me like that. It's true. Your own son pushing you down the stairs. I could have been arranging your funeral, Miss huh? Just think about that. I have been thinking about it. All night. Mm, well, you know my opinion. I've told you I'm not calling the police. I'll get the truth out of him. He runs rings around you, that lad. Man, yeah, he's laughing at just you. Just get me home. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Pop, can you make a start on Roger's van? He needs it for this afternoon. He's got a job on. Yeah, no worries, boss. Uh, MLT, is it? Mm. Oh, yeah. All right, need them? No, fine, thanks, Kev. Girl, you okay? Yeah, fine, thanks. Be back to normal soon. As long as she doesn't overdo it, honestly, she is the most terrible patient, this one. If I turn me back, I swear she'll be climbing a mountain or something. Oh, Kev, mate, wait a minute. Go on. Can I have your old man's number? I had it, and I had a press summer at night. It's gone up in cyberspace, wherever these things go. Yeah, it's the, it's the smoking shelter we're having built. Oh, yeah, in the back. Because I'm a project manager, you see, but the workers have bogged off. Not that I'm bothered, you know, the musicians like me, so when the muse calls, you just got to go. <laughs> well, the muse and two grand cash in hand. <laughs> there you go. Right. She'd never have left him on his own. Yes, he said. David? You never spent the night on the city. Hey, now, nah, come on, Milato. Time to stop all this nonsense. Come on, tell your mother the truth. It wasn't me. Oh, for goodness sake, David. All the trouble you've caused, and all you can say for yourself is it wasn't me. Well, this time, we know it was you. Honest, your own mother! How could you do such a That's thing? That's enough. Oh, I haven't even started yet. Haven't you got work to do? What? Leave you alone with this thing? I'll phone you later. I've done nothing wrong. You left her for dead! Like I said, I'll phone you. Um, yes. Thought about what you said. You seemed to think that I was confused. That I got things mixed up in my head. I lay in bed last night and, uh, believe me, if there was a button I could press in my head to make these terrible memories go away, I'm telling you, I'd press it. So I'm asking you, David, please talk to me. Make me understand. I remember we were arguing. You pushed me. I fell. That much I can understand. You were angry, you hit out. It was an accident. Do you know what I'm really struggling with, David? Why didn't you pick up the phone, call an ambulance? You know I should go on holiday. What? Get one of them jeets in France. This is your idea of a joke. Talk nonsense, get worried. Or is it more straightforward than that? You want to take me somewhere remote? Finish the job properly? Please, Mum. So, there I am lying on the floor, unconscious. Tell me, did you have to 
step over my body on your way out? Did you panic, thinking I was dead? Or did you realize I was alive but left anyway, hoping nature would take its course? How did you feel when you knew I'd been found? Were you relieved? Or were you annoyed, angry with your gran for sticking her nose in? You lied to the police. You made Tina tell lies. The pair of you could end up in prison. You let Jason take the blame. Don't you dare walk away from me. I haven't finished with you. How long do you think you can carry this on? A week? A month? A year? As I'm telling Stop. you, I am not out of my mind. I am not imagining things. You can deny it till you're blue in the face. I know you did it. I'm going to my room. You can't stay there forever. Just leave me alone. Not until you tell me the truth. Just admit it. You pushed me down the stairs and abandoned me. I didn't. There's not a single doubt in my mind. I didn't, right? I, I didn't mean it. What did you say? I didn't mean it. But you did push me. And what were you thinking when I was lying on the floor, not moving? Shut up, shut up, shut up. But you were glad, weren't you? You blame me for everything that's gone wrong in your life. For every horrible thought. Well, now you know. To put me out of my misery. Oh. I'm the police. No. I mean it. What is this, some grand gesture? Phone them. I've not finished with you yet. I want to know why. Why? Why? Mum, I don't even know why. I've told you everything now, right? So please, will you stop just going on and on? You can't bear to look at me, can you? Is it because you hate me so much? Or maybe you hate yourself. no point telling the police. I'll tell them I can't remember. They can't prosecute. Not without my evidence. This is between you and me. We're gonna stay here and we're gonna work this out. I don't care how long it takes. I want to know exactly what was going on in your head. Oh. Come back, David! David! That's one way of expressing yourself, but things get worse in half an hour. What are you doing? What were you doing? That's what just fucked you with you. Give us just back. Keep away from me. David! What are you doing? Give us a jack and the mouth, David! Hey, keep away! David, listen, mate! Oh, I'm phoning the police, is not. Shall I go and tell his man? What's she gonna be? Man, the flaming windscreen! Please, please, quick! Oh, it's the neighbour who's going up to me, Gallagher, he's smashing everything up! Can you hear him? Save me! What did you do to 
do him fail his MLT. Wish they'd turn that thing off. It's giving me a headache. It'll be hoodies. Shall we turn the music up? This area's going to the dogs. Look at him. What's going on with this? He's just sat there. Look, I can do without a running commentary as well. What's all the flaming racket? Hey, that's Roger's van. Yeah, it's all right. I phoned the police. Eh? It's not the police he needs. It's the men in white coats. I'm going to go and tell his mum. What's he done? Well, you saw him out. He smashed up all the cars. Roger, can you get here now? David, what are you playing at? Just get here, will you? All right, I'm on a year. He's not making any sense. What's happening? Oh, don't go near him. He's off his head. He went for me with that thing. David, just calm down. Come inside, we can sort this out. I am calm. Do you know what? I don't believe this is happening. David? David? What's the matter? David, are you all right? Do you want to back off, all right? <laughs> David! Oh, oh. Nutter, that's my house! With that? You're flaming greeted. Have you called the police or what? Yeah, I phoned them, mate. I'm sorry, I should have stopped him. What have you gone and done that for? Yeah, yeah. No talking to me. Oi, Pratt, I've got a word with you. I'll have you caught for this. David, this isn't the way. Oh, my God. My mother lives in that room, you stupid... If you have harmed one hair of her head, I'm warning you. What is his problem? Will somebody stop him? Please! Bounce up and one day you want to count your lucky stars, he's not got a gun. Now will you believe me? The boy's mad. Mad? He wants sectioning. I'll pay for any damage. He's frightened the living daylights out of my mother. When do you put your foot down? When do you say enough's enough? He's shouting in the street's not going to help. He threatens to kill her and she still excuses him. When is it going to end? When I'm choosing your reads. Deirdre. Oh, mother, get inside. Oh, here we go. Another day in paradise, eh, girl? Just do one, Grimshaw. David, what are you doing? Give it here. I'll use it. Right. Jason, be careful. What do you think you're doing? You win the... Say that! You're just going to break out! I want to die for you! I'm not going to do it now! Oh, you don't... Be careful. What's your name, son? David Platt. I have the misfortune to call him my grandson. Do you want to get off me? David Platt, I'm arresting you on suspicion of criminal damage and a Section 47 assault. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you'd like to rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Oh, just get rid of him. David. Lock him up. Throw away the key, please. Show's over. You can go home now. Uh, he vandalised my property. And the rest. Yeah. Let's get you home. <laughs> oh. And now the whole street knows I'm not a natural redhead. It was harmless, but it was harmless. Call that harmless. <laughs> that is worse than when I wrote a fancy Miss Dayu in Abbasop. No, hang on. You weren't a Dayu. Tell a lie. Or a Datsun. And you wrote it in pink. Well, it's Kayla I feel sorry for. Well, she went in Abbasop. Oh, David. Oh. You're yeah. having to live with him. Mm, no. Still, she has got a lovely head of hair on her, so it swings and roundabouts, innit? it? Mm. So. It's been dead lovely gas when you've been here. We should go for a pint sometime. <laughs> well, I'm not doing pints. <laughs> oh, well. I'm only being friendly, love. Don't worry, you're right about it. That's it. <laughs> no, is it? Hey! Shut up. Oh, 
shocking, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get over it. Hey, I know what you're thinking, Billy Boy. What's that? Go ching. Uh. <laughs> Look, there's really no need for this. Well, Toff, you're going to the medical centre. I've only sprained my ankle. Oh, yeah. And since when did you get X-ray vision? Now, come on. I'm going to get it checked out. Have you seen this? He didn't hit you, did he, Ken? The boy is a psychopath. Have you seen our bay window? My mother was sitting in a chair when it happened. Oh, that's shocking. I know. Come on. I doubt I'll ever get over it. Apparently, he was the one that shoved her down the stairs. Who told you that? Audrey. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't heard it from the horse's mouth. Oh, I wouldn't put anything past that family. Oh, she loves a drama, that Gail. Loves a drama. Practically encourages it. Don't say that. Never happy unless she's got someone else's hands around her throat. Fancy a brew? I fancy somewhat stronger. I'll get my coat. Excuse me. Would you mind making a statement about what just happened? <gasps> Try and stop me. Shh. Oh, dear. I knew I shouldn't have left you with him. What happened? I need a drink. she goes like I'm some sort of leper I mean she really has got a face that you want to smack and you know the worst of it our Jason Knight gets arrested and all the time David knows that it's really and well it's like I've always said never wear a choker with a halter neck your old family's screwy well oh, that's a top up oh I think I could force another one down it's put me that on edge it were like the May Blitz all over again <coughs> Rita just a double <laughs> you're round Right, lad. On your feet. Let's go. Morning. Morning. Heard you hobbling about. Don't know what time it was. Yeah, well, I barely slept. Wondering what was going on in my son's head to make him behave like a madman. If we knew that, my love. Oh, well, I'm ringing the police station. Right, now, um... I'm going home to change, then I'm going to the salon, right? But whatever you're doing, you're not doing it on your own. I'm coming with you. OK. I don't suppose you've had any breakfast. I mean, have you forgotten you're supposed to be convalescing you? Hello. Um, it's Gail Platt speaking. You've got my son, David, in custody. Oh, well, I just wondered what was happening. Remember... You're not going anywhere without me, OK? Hey, up, there's Audrey. What's happening, Audrey? Got your David locked up where he belongs, have they? What was he thinking? He could have killed somebody. He's still at the police station, that's all we know. That's where he belongs. Spent all night picking up glass. Could have had somebody's eye out. Got screw loose. Has that for ages. Yeah, well, he'll have his head loose if he tries that again. Mm. Better phone Roger. Let him know how long his van was going to be. So, you accept that you committed criminal damage at the following addresses? Yep. Hang on. Numbers 1, 2 and 9, Coronation Street. The garage on Coronation Street. And 18, Victoria Street, yes? Yeah, look, I, I can't really remember. Then, of course, that. there was the assault on the police officer. Yeah. You remember that? I didn't mean that. But you accept that it was you? Yeah. Right then, what I'm going to do now is to ask you to read through that. What? Look, I know I've not really got a right, but there was this detective that I was talking to, um, Wella, she's called, and I just wondered that if she was here, could I speak to her, please? Well, you've been having some fun. Not really. I was told you wanted a word with me. Yeah, it's about, you know, what happened to me, Mum. Go on. It was me. I pushed her. <sighs> Change your tune. Yeah, I know, but I did. I'm sorry. I 
I pushed her. Deliberately? No, no. Look, I didn't try and kill her, if that's what you mean. Well, what did you mean it to do? I don't know. But then I left her dinner and lied about it, so... Yeah. I might as well as meant to kill her. This is true, is it? OK, look, um, I'm going to ask one of my colleagues to join us and we're going to turn the machine on and we're going to have this conversation all over again. All right? Yeah. Roger. You all keep asking me what's happened. And where's that lovely young man who works here? Oh, Marie, well, it's none of their business. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that he's off sick and we don't know who's put the window in. Now, what do you think you're doing? I'm all right. Well, you won't be if you fall over. Uh, I finally got to talk to somebody who knows something, so I'm going to the police station. Yeah, well, you're not going on your own. I've told you I'm coming with you. What have they said, Gail? Well, they've interviewed him, and now there's something they want to talk to me about, so... Are you ready? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll just be a sec. I'll see you outside. Outside? Why? What, what, where are you going? Gail? Where's she going? Don't ask me. Oh. Boy, I'll be in this afternoon. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, it's only been for a couple of hours. You can't wait on tables with a bad foot. What are you going to do, hop? And if this is right, I'm going to tell him. Oh, hello. I thought I should come and say something. Well, yes. Come in. I'd have rather he broke every window in Weatherfield than what he did to Ken. Oh, don't worry about me. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. I was just telling her I'm fit enough to go waiting on table. Though he's not going to. I'm sorry. I feel ashamed. Well, you mustn't. Look, Gail, if there's one thing we've learned in this house, it's that you can't be responsible for what your kids get up to. Sons or daughters. Well, thank you for seeing it like that. After Tracy. How else could we see it? ...question about the criminal damage and the assault on the police officer. All which she admits. So what's going to happen? Well, he'll appear in court before the magistrate. Will they keep him locked up until then? No, no, no. He'll be released on bail. Thank heavens. Well, why I wanted the word, Mrs Platt, um, David also told us that um, he was the one that pushed you downstairs and caused your injuries. Yes, I wondered if he might have said that. Might he said that to you? Yes, he has. Oh, come on, girl. You're not going to deny that, shall I? Well, he said it. <gasps> it's just he was in such a state. Well, I mean, you know the state he was in because you know what he went and did. Well, the thing is, we now have David's statement. And on top of that, if you're willing to testify, I think we've got a strong case. You know, something that we could go to court with. Yeah, well, uh, maybe the time has come when that's what's needed. Perhaps. Well, it's something for you to think about. Anyway, um, you'll still be charged with the other offences. There's no shortage to witnesses to them. Anyway, here he is. I'll leave you to it. Goodbye, Mrs Platt. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you. Hello, David. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, are you? How many times have we heard that before? Yeah, well, I don't think this is the place to talk about it, eh? Come on, let's go on. What, am I still allowed in? You're allowed in, yes, but... Come on. Nice job for all of us, won't it? Yeah, it'd be nice if she made the gesture, though. A window like yours. That costs a fortune. Never mind the windows. What's she gonna do about him? I'll keep watching. Might just find out. All right. Here he is. The bad lad himself. Thanks, love. Come on, let's get inside. Uh, ma'am, I'd like a word with David on my own, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, yes, OK. Well, I'd better go and see what's happening in the salon anyway. Right, uh, see you later. Open the door. Yeah, get him inside and keep him in there. Ignore him, David. Come on, open the door. 
Feel any better? Yeah. Are you ready for something to eat? In a bit. So? So I just go out there now and let them lynch me? Solve everything? Sorry. Why did you do all that? Turning on friends and neighbours? People we'd known all our lives? Mum, if I knew that, I'd just tell you. Try. All right, it's like... One minute I was in here talking to you, shouting at you. The next... Somebody's just going mad on the street, and we're all watching him, thinking... This guy's crazy, you know? But it's me. Can't be me, but... It is. Do you think you need psychiatric help? Probably. <laughs> I'm being serious. I mean, all this on top of trying to take your own life. Oh, Mom, no, no, you see, you're doing it again. What? Oh, we're doing it. I'm doing it. Doing what? We're going along with lies, and all right, it's not your fault, because I'm the one that's told them. What lies? Lots of them. All right, listen to this. The main one. I was never trying to take my own life. I was just doing it so I could spoil Sarah's wedding. And yeah, I fixed the scaffolding so Jason would fall. And I also tried to make it look as though he was seeing Becky. <laughs> just so I could ruin things for Sarah. I mean, if you don't believe me, Mum, please just believe that. No, sorry. Why? Mum, why can't you believe me? I can't believe you hate your sister that much. Well, it wasn't that hard. And anyhow, it was as though it was a little project I had. You know, the, the only thing worth living for in my life, the only thing I had going for it. I never tried to kill myself. Well, if you're telling me that... I am. I have to believe you. And was it another project? To push me down the stairs and see what happened? You know why I did that. Do I? Because of Tina. And what happened? The abortion was what she wanted. What I did, I thought I was helping both of you. It's fine, Mum. I mean, it's just like always, isn't it? You've got an answer for everything. And never mind me out there smashing windows. As long as people think it wasn't your fault. You did the best you could. And why shouldn't they think that? Because... You really did. You did. Right. Um, I'm going to get some breakfast because the stuff they gave me wasn't really up to much. Did you tell DC well? It was you who pushed me down the stairs. Because it was. You've denied it before. Denied it and denied it, so why tell her now? Guess I got tired, Mum. You know, and I wanted things to be different. A new start? Yeah, I suppose. So why didn't you tell me? We could have kept it between ourselves. No. I'd have been getting away with it again then, wouldn't I? Just let them lock me up. Whatever. They won't, though. I won't testify. Not against you, my own son. No, I won't. Mum. No. I'll say it was an accident. 
I'll say I remember what happened, and it was an accident. What, in court? If necessary, yeah. You can't. I can, David. This is something we have to sort out between us. You and me. Nobody else. Ty looks nice. Yeah, well, the sooner I get it off, the sooner all this is over, the better it will be for everyone. No, David, listen. You can talk to the solicitor. Just tell him everything you told me last night. I mean, if you explain, they'll understand. Mum, I've had enough, all right? What's the point explaining things? You know, stuff only gets fixed after somebody else has paid for it and I've broken a lot of stuff. No, David. Look, I've already spoken to DC Weller. I've told her I won't give evidence, so there'll be no charges for that. We can get through this. Mum, I know you think you're doing right by me, but you're not, you know that? Let's just get this done, eh? And whatever happens, happens. They say they were coming. Oh, this afternoon, I hope. Yeah, when they're finished with Jerry's. I hope your David don't think he can roll up for court any time he wants. I'm worried about him. I really am. Oh, how many times have we heard that? Well, at least he's taking responsibility for something. That must be a first, eh? But is he responsible, though? I mean, for the damage, yes, but for everything that led up to it? I'm not so sure. He's still apologising for it. Well, a bit of a kick up the backside won't do him any harm, if you ask me. Exactly. If you can't be more supportive, just don't come with us then, eh? Hey, you're going to be late, lad. Yeah, sorry. Just tell the magistrate about Tina. Everything. They'll understand. Mum, what do we have to? David, morning. Oh. Good to see you all. You must be Mrs Platt. Yes, sir, and this is my mother. Uh, Audrey Roberts, I'm very pleased to meet you. Actually, my husband was Councillor Alf Roberts, uh, you might remember. You're looking very smart, young man. Yeah, well, it's not smart enough, is it? Or else I won't be here. Well, should we just go through the procedure once more before we start? Listen, can I don't just go in there now and tell them everything? Sorry? Well, what's the point spinning it out? I mean, we all know I did it, I've no excuse for it. So how about I go in there, tell them that myself and... Save you the hassle and time of even being here. David, what have we just said? What have you just said? If he thinks he's doing right, just leave him. David Platt! Look, am I legal obliged to even have you in there with me? Well, no, but put it this way. I'd strongly advise it. So I'm not then? No. David. <laughs> You've got... I must admit I'm somewhat reluctant to proceed with this case without a duty solicitor. Do you intend to seek alternative representation? Uh, no. No, I'm fine, thanks. I very much doubt that's the case. What's he doing, Mum? He's doing all right. Just leave him. Uh, I, uh, could go on about some things that we haven't said. Finally. Just, um... I don't think it'll change anything and it'll just keep us all here for longer. It might change everything. It'll just... I'm touched by your consideration for the general well-being of this court, young man. But under the circumstances, maybe one unorthodox approach deserves another. I'm prepared to move on to the next case and readdress yours in an hour when you've had time to consult with your family and seek a bit more considered advice. Yeah, but I don't want to, though. No, but I do, and it's my court. Speak to your solicitor. Well, you're always saying he needs to grow up. Not like this. Get off. It's like he's saying, I've done all this, and now punish me. Well, is that wrong? He's not even trying. Oh, Gail. Adolf Hitler explained himself. Well... I'm not making that comparison of us all. If he's not going to tell the magistrate what led him to all this, I'll have to do it myself. I'm not sure that's allowed. Besides, what led him to all this is the way we've handled him. The way I've handled him, you mean? Oh. We've had a bit of a chat. Well, I hope you decided to be a bit more sensible now you've had a chance to think about it. Your son's going to speak for himself. No, David! Gail! Mum, please. Let me do this, all right? I want to. Let's just get it done, eh? Are we ready to proceed? I have spoken at length with David. He wishes to represent himself. I've had everything explained to me, and I understand 
that it's not the normal way of going about things, but I know what I've done, and I know what I'm doing. And you're happy with us? He might be. I'm not. Oh, shh. So, are you ready to proceed? Yeah. Yeah, I think I am, sir. Thank you. That on the 7th of April 2008, to go through every he assaulted detail. Mr. Kenneth Barlow, thereby damage. occasioning him actual bodily harm. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And finally, that on the 7th of April 2008, you assaulted a police constable, namely PC Joanne Murray, in the execution of her duty. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Oh, David! You've been a very busy lad, David. Yeah, well, there are reasons. It's not as simple as that. Is there anything else you'd like us to take into consideration? Yes, there is. Quite a lot, actually. Shut up, will you? Uh, no. No, there isn't. I think that pretty much covers it all. In that case, all that remains... Excuse me! No! I'm his mother! Now, you've heard from everybody else. Now, will you please all listen to me for a minute? He didn't mean to do any of this. Sit down, please. There are mitigating circumstances. Okay, Mrs. Know. Platt, you are not a solicitor. Stop trying to act like one. I just want you to know he was under a lot of strain. So am I, Mrs. Platt. Now, if you persist with this behaviour, I have to ask you to leave the court. Gail, sit down. Come on. Sorry, very sorry. This case... Carry on. This case is adjourned for sentencing, pending a pre-sentencing report until 11.30 on the 18th of April. So, so what does that mean I can go? For now. What on earth possessed you to do that? Well, if he's not going to speak up for himself, somebody has to. Well, no, they don't. So I've refused a solicitor, remember? Which just goes to prove you're not in a fit state to decide anything. Oh, for goodness sake, Kale. Just leave him to get on with it, will you? Talk about control freak. Well, she said it. Janice. I want a word with you, you little scumbag. Ignore her, let's get inside. Oh, that's right, run away. What gives you the right, do you think, to just wander around smashing up other folks' vans, eh? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, and that's supposed to make it all all right, is it? Yes, well, you'll have to do for now, Janice. Come on. I tell you what, he wants locking up him. And I don't mean prison neither. No, I mean loony bin. Come on, David, let's get inside. Because he's sick! All right, that's enough. Come on. Oh, poor Gail. Um, he smashed our shop windows. Yeah, well, it's here I feel sorry for, not him. So how long do you think he'll get? Depends. If it's magistrate court, he's looking for up to six months. If it's crown, then... Will you two shut up? Go get me a drink. I'll be round in a minute. Shop, by the way. I don't know, thinking straight. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. What happened? Why'd you do it, man? Don't know. This thing's got on top of me and... Snapped. You told him not to email that. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday, by the way. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bring it at pub, but, you know, I don't really fancy getting spat on. Yeah, me neither. Oh, and you were right. She never got this tattoo. She dumped you? Yep. Oh. Still, if it's any consolation, I kind of got dumped as well. Yeah? Yeah. Women, eh? It's like he's on autopilot. Heading for the edge of the cliff. Hope I can change his mind about a solicitor. Gail. So what, I just give up and watch him go down? If that's what he wants, yes. I mean, he should be punished with what he did to you and the rest. He needs help. 
not punishment. And if he can't see it, then I'll just have to make him. Oh, come on, let's get tea started. So, you could actually go to jail? Yeah, I could actually. I think we should have chilled out about that. I ain't. I don't tell anyone, yeah? Right. When we go to the sentencing, we're not in for any surprises, are we? How do you mean? Well, you're not going to be pleading insanity at the last minute. Ma'am! Well, for all we know, this could be another of his little pranks. How can you even say that? With his track record very easily. Well? No, I'm not, all right? If I go down, I go down. It's only fair, really. Hmm. Maybe you're growing up at last, eh? Ma'am, why don't you go and join Bill in the pub, eh? It's been a long day. Well, what about you? No, I'll stay here. You sure? Mm. Well, I'll pop in tomorrow, my darling. Look after your mother, right? David, do you hear yeah, me? Yeah. Yes, right. Well, you'll have me to answer to. My darling. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Pleading diminished responsibility. I mean, would you credit it? It was on the infant and MOT, now it needs a new windscreen, new lights, a lot. And meanwhile, he's earning no dash. Don't you start, Janice, please. I've had a hard enough day as it is. Well, of course, it's been dead easy for us, what we amount of work and all. Yeah, well, my business is affected as well, you know. I mean, there's not many customers that want to sit looking at a boarded-up window. Some would call that poetic justice. Seeing as it was your grandson, what's responsible? Janice. Oh, and of course, your family's whiter than white, isn't it? With a prostitute for a daughter. Oh, well, if you want to get on to family history, love... We're not. Come on, come and sit down. Oh, that's all I needed. How did it go? Oh, well, he refused a solicitor and pleaded guilty. Good. Oh, anyway, how's your day been? Not so good. Looks like I might be signing on the door. What? Let's talk of this project folding. You're joking, but you've cancelled all your work for the next six months. Exactly. Teach me to take a risk, won't it, eh? And all for a few lousy bats. I know you want to face up to the consequences of what you've done. But it doesn't mean you have to make things worse for yourself. You know this uh, pre-sentence report thing that you have to fill in with your youth offending officer? Mom. No, just listen to me. It's a chance to explain how you were feeling. Make them know the pressure you were under. I, mean, I could come with you if you like. We could explain it together. Well, I don't want to explain anything to anybody, all right? I don't want to have to keep going over things that I've done. All I want you to do is just leave me alone. But I can't... Well, there's no buts about it. You've just got to let me do this my way, all right? And stop trying to make things better for me. You know, Gran's right. You should listen to her. Not really. Me neither. Have you actually thought this through? You could go to prison. Yeah, I know. Well, saying it's one thing, reality's another. Months. Are you sure you're prepared for that? Well, as much as I can be. <sighs> Mum, you know how you always want what's best for me. Well, this is what's best for me. You're just going to have to trust me. Come on.
When do you actually hear? Uh, Friday. So, you know, you want to book a seat. I think there's still some going. And you could actually go to prison? Yeah, you could actually go to prison. So you don't want to miss it. Do you want to come in and get some brekkie? Well, I don't know. Is your dad about? Just a sec. Where's that been? No, he's gone to the shop. Right. Yeah, you can come in. You are looking better. And again, you can look much worse. Oh, hello. And when do you get sentenced? Isn't that the question everyone's asking? Yeah, that's because we all can't wait. Dave, want some food? I uh, know, Ta. And you're going to work today, yeah? You know I am. And you really and truly don't remember what you said to Dad last night? About you not working there anymore, about you resigning? I said that? <laughs> yeah. What, and Dad's just forgot? No, but he knew that you would, because you'd had that much to drink, so he's just pretending it never happened. Why didn't I use that in my defence? Too smashed to remember. So did you mean it then, about resigning, or is it like Dad said, just the drink talking? I don't know. I mean, I have thought about it. I am like slave labour. <laughs> Not much like, because slaves work hard. I just didn't realise I'd said it out loud. Harry, right. Right. I have told him. Yeah. So you can't make me work there? No. Right. I mean, I, I will come in with you, all right? It's just I don't really think it'll change anything. Well, I'm just going to go in and tell him. So I'll be right out. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, love. Tell now. Bye, Jerry. Where have you been? Get round here now. Hang on a minute. Hang on nothing. You're half an hour late already. And it's coming out your wages. But I thought I said I wasn't going to work here anymore. Well, then you want to be grateful I didn't take any notice. Because I understand what drink does to them that's a bit soft in the head. Makes them say things they're going to regret saying later on. So get your apron on and get round here. Now! Move it! Oh. Well, thank you very much for your help. Yes, I'll do that. Th thank you. Bye. Well, I've spoken to them, and it's up to you whether I come with you or not. Well, I'd rather you didn't. Look, David, what's the harm in me just coming oh, no. with you to the office and waiting outside? Because I'd rather go in on my own, all right? We we we've spoken about this, and it's not a court or anything, so nothing's going to be decided. This youth offending officer... I mean, what he says and what he thinks could have a serious effect on whether you go to prison or not. Yeah, and I know all that. All right, I'm not going to lie or try and wriggle out of anything. I know what I've done, OK, and I'm ready to take my punishment. So you keep saying. Right, well, I'll best get off now anyway, so I'll, I'll see you both later. You all right? You don't want to be seen fraternising with public enemy number one, do you? Public idiot number one, you mean? Where are you off? I'm just getting on bus to go see my probation officer. I might be seeing one of them soon. Why? No, I'm just feeling a bit sorry for myself. So is that what you got? Probation? No, nah, it's just preliminary stuff. I'm not back in court till the end of the week. You're mad, you know that. When I saw what you did, you know one of the first things that came into my head? What? That day on the roof. When you were spouting off about witches and bitches. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd go on the rampage. Thought you had a gun or something. Yeah, well, things have just been building up inside me, haven't they, for some time, and I couldn't cope anymore. Oh, it's my boss. I'll see you around, Jason.
mother pales by comparison. Hey, and it could get more exciting when Roy comes down. Why? We're accompanying Roy on a top-secret mission. Hey, will you be back for your tea, or now I've got chops? Well, we don't know, do we, Becky? Nope. All we know is that Roy is determined to bring Tony Gordon to book. Mm. We're short! Oh, hey up, hey up, bolt the tables down. No, it's all right, I've just come for a quick where we can, that's all. Have you come to apologise? Well, yeah, I have, as a matter of fact. Well, be my guest. I am sorry, Ken. You know, I never meant for you to get hurt. Has your mother put you up to this? Did he? No, no one's put me up to this. Well, he's not doing this off his own bat, is Look, he? hang on, hang on. This can't be easy for him, I know that. So, thank you, David. Yeah. I am genuinely sorry. That's all I came to say. Thank you. Are we all set? Aye, aye, Captain. Ready and waiting. I'm sorry to drag Ken away, but this is a matter of some urgency. I'll keep his tea warm. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the sign to close, Becky. Hi, Tina, it's me. Look, you know, it'd be really great if you just answer your phone and then I won't have to leave message after message and look like a right prat. If she's going to ring you back... Oh, do you mind? She'll ring you back regardless of how many messages you leave. Right, well, could you just give us a ring? Thanks. Um, I can do it on my own, you know. Where are you going? Well, if I'm not going to be here for a few weeks, well, then I need to see a few people. David, I wish you'd try and be a bit more positive. I mean, you can still think about seeing a solicitor before tomorrow. Even with a guilty plea, you could be looking at a fine instead of a prison sentence. All right, well, as soon as I were being positive then, how about I nip into town and get a few bits and bats for later and we have a little early birthday bash? I mean, I might not be around to see it tomorrow. David. I'll be back at about half twelve, all right? Okay. <laughs> Stay, you too. Pair of wasters. Uh, excuse me, I'm in between jobs right now. Oh, so you did it then? Oh, yeah. I don't even know how you've got the nerve to come out of your house. Well, coming out to see my neighbour is not exactly flashing a big banner about, is it? So go on, what does it feel like? Everybody hating you. Well, you tell me. Mm. Uh, he's not the one who's going to be strung up by his neighbours, though, is he? What is this? The enlightened modern police force talking here. All I did is come round to see my friend to say goodbye. What do I get? Earache off D.I. Jane Tennyson. And I unpay my debt to society. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Oh, you're gonna be Mr. Popular inside. I can see that. I so I'm not being funny. I know. You're just being weird. I mean, what did you expect? Eating a copper. It's to pay for a ticket so I can go out there. Oh, when well, you want to get gone. If somebody offered me a trip to Milan on my birthday, I'd be off like a shot. Especially if there's nothing to keep you here. So you've got David banged up in prison as well, have you? I mean, maybe I just better wait and see what happens before I start leaving the country. Oh, Gail. Look, Deirdre, please, tell her. Her going on holiday to Italy isn't going to make any difference as far as David's concerned. Well, I'd have gone to the moon sometimes to avoid our tracing. Can't we just wait and see? Although, if she'd needed me here, I couldn't have gone anywhere, daft though it sounds. It's part of the madness you sign on for being a mother. Don't I know it? Yeah, and you're a grandmother as well, aren't you? Little Bethany's over there. She'll be missing you, I'm sure of that. David did apologise to me and Ken, by the way. I should hope it did. Yeah, I know, he said. At least he didn't walk off and pretend it never happened like he usually does. And I've got to get some work done. Hey, yeah, listen, what else are you doing for your uh, big 5-0? Not in the mood, considering. Oh, well, if you're not going to organise something, we will, eh, Audrey? We can't have you moping about on your 50th. Oh, do we have to keep saying 50? Well, at least it might take your mind off David's silly tricks, if oh, nothing else. Wow. Oh, ma'am. You need a party, lady, and you're having one. I'll see you later. Tina? Well, he said half past, so uh, he should be back any minute. I should really get going. It wasn't such a good idea. Oh, don't say that, love. He'll be so pleased to see you. And... If anybody can help him through this. I meant to ring first, but 
There's just some things you don't really talk about over the phone, is there, eh? <laughs> You're the first person your age I've ever heard say that. You could stay and have something to eat with us. I just thought I'd try and see him, you know, before tomorrow. Just in case. Seeing as I'm here, though, um, I just, I just wanted to say, as well, I shouldn't have lied to you. I'm really sorry. It was, um, it was pretty stupid. Well, now it's done with. So let's not even think about it. Come on, stay and have something to eat with us, eh? It's a shame to come all this way. Shall I ring him and see when he's due back? Well, it might speed things up a bit. OK. And if you speak to him, you might think about seeing a solicitor instead of all this not caring what happens. Hello? Learning about this thing in history, yeah? Where, like, in olden days, if you was to steal something, say, like, a turnip or a pig, something like that, yeah? David, do we have to? Mm, because what they did is they got this red-hot poker, yeah? And they rammed it right through your ear. <laughs> There's a tattooing bloke down at Sudo. That would do that for you. Oh, the summer's nearly here. Are you going anywhere nice? Uh, not far about yet. Oh, but, um, I went to this holiday camp last year. Talk about rough. It was like, uh, <laughs> Um, well, I would go back there anyway, put it that way. Well, I remember what you said, um, you said it was like a prison camp, didn't you? I'll be able to tell you soon enough. Well, I'll leave you to clear up, eh? Cheesecake was lovely, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to put 50 candles on it. Well, we'll leave birthdays till tomorrow, shall we? Yeah. Won't be much else going on, will there? Just kidding. David. Your mum's really nice in that. But, um, could we go somewhere else? I mean, I come round to see you, not here. Uh, yeah, well, she'll be going out soon enough, anyhow. Yeah, well, I'd rather do it now. Yeah, all right. Mum thinks she should get a solicitor. Yeah, well, my mum thinks I should get 100 lines in an hour's detention, but it's not going to happen, is it? Hey, listen, if I get sent down, are you still going to come see me? Is that a good idea? Well, I think it is, yeah. Right, well, that's the reason why I come round, really. I don't, David. I don't think I can do it. How bad can it be? It's not going to be that far away, is it? It's not that. It's these past few months. I just need a break, that's all. I mean, what happened with your mum and the police and the baby? You mean you need a break from me? I suppose, yeah. I'm sorry. Bad enough. Well, what are you doing? I'm getting the bus. Oh, come on. Surely this is just a break, all right? I mean, you'll still be here when I get out. You no, know, we can make it work. It might be a little bit weird, but we can. No. I mean it, David. Let's just forget it, eh? I can't forget it. Look, I've so what if I go down, OK? I told you, I don't care about me. I only care about you. Stop trying to tell me I'm in the wrong, then. You are in the wrong, though. Tina, please. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Look, wait. Uh, please, I mean, I don't care wherever I go as long as I still get to see you. Tina, you can't do me, not that way. Please. <laughs> Oi, 
Sorry. Now, if they're for a charge, I'll go for something a little bit more expensive. Funny man. But let me finish. If they're your way of saying sorry to some of your victims, I'll go for something a little bit cheaper because you're going to need an awful lot of flowers. Yeah, you know, I am kind of sorry, actually. Yeah, sorry I didn't do your windows and all. Oh, excellent. Well, and you think I'm funny? Today's the day you get sent to prison in Ah, good news really does travel fast, doesn't it? This time tomorrow you'll be somebody's girlfriend. I'll be glad when today's over. So you still think you're going to go down? Yeah, maybe. What's that? You're getting an ad in the Lonely Arts column? You're lost. It's for jobs. Jobs. Finally turned you back on being Crown Prince of Kebabs then. Well, they weren't all that glamorous, to be fair, mate. You know, when they abolished slavery, they forgot to tell me old man about it. Yeah. Wish you'd tell him that you can't play on your ski electric, then that'll teach him how to be mean. <laughs> See you later, Dave. Thought you were still in bed. Couldn't sleep. I got you these. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. And uh, these came for you as well. I've got me water. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not much to remember your 50th. You shouldn't have bothered. I just thought, you know, you should have something nice to remember today by. Mum, you all right? What do you think? I think he needs us today more than he'd like to let on, so come on. Do you really think he knows what he's letting himself in for? I just hope the court realises how mixed up he is. But this is enough to bring him to his senses. They're not going to let him off with a telling off, sweetheart. You know, he may not be coming home with us, you know that? Ma'am, please, don't even say it. Right, come on. Let's get it over with. Platt, sir. Ah, uh, yes. The young man who doesn't think he needs representation. I take it that's still the case? It is, sir. David, I know we've had this conversation before. But I'm offering you one last chance to get yourself a solicitor. Thanks, but No, thanks. You do realise the implications of these proceedings today, that you may well end up receiving a custodial sentence? I do. Um, um, can I just talk to him for a minute, please? Well, I would have thought you'd have done that before now, but... Very well. David, they're bending over backwards to help you. Why don't you let them? It could make all the difference, David. A decent solicitor would know what to say, what the court wants to hear. And exactly, what does that mean? Going over all the abortion stuff with Tina? No, it's not fair on anybody, though. Tina would understand. She knows how important this is. I thought you two were finished. Well, I hardly think protecting it should be your priority just now. Mum, you are always criticising me for not caring enough about others. Now when I do? No, I'm fine as I am, thanks. In that case, let's proceed. David, you've heard the case against you. Do you have anything to say? No, no, not really. David, please. Oh, it's a bit late for I'm sorry. Do you really have to make things worse, David? This is nonsense, you know, honestly. This is totally out of character. This. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Roberts. But it is becoming abundantly clear that your grandson is well aware of what he's doing and the implications of his actions. Here, yeah, David. Thanks, ma'am. Oh, dear. Seem to be taking a long time. I think that's good about. Well, at least they've seen us. And they can see we're not a family of scratchers from some sinker stage. Do you think that helps? Okay, I 
I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Yeah, well, I know one thing. I'm going down. David. What would be the point? It's not like you're a hoodie or a druggie. Yeah, well, last Christmas, that's exactly what you thought I was. When you believed me then. Well, it's a bit late to start going over that again now, isn't it? Yeah, and it just. <sighs> anyway, your mum's right. You know, you might be lucky, just get community service. Yeah, that'd be for the best. You could do some good. Instead of being locked up with the scum of the earth. Hey, it's my future helmet she's talking about. Don't joke about this. Well, Mum, what else can I do? For sentencing, you need to be in the dock. Hey? Is that necessary? It is, yes. All stand. Let <clears throat> you remain standing. David Platt. We have read and considered the pre-sentence report. We looked carefully for any gesture of remorse. We found none, save that you had the good sense to plead guilty. Neither a fine nor a community sentence can be justified. We may have taken a different view had you not compounded the damage you caused by assaulting a police officer. We are therefore going to make a detention and training order. This will be an order for four months, which, in our opinion, matches the seriousness of the offences. No! That's ridiculous! Had you not pleaded guilty, the sentence would have been for an order of six months. I'm sorry, Mum. The right decision will be back in half an hour. open some of your cards. And I said, but you're not moving the card, Roy. Your floppy-haired friend is. To which the other one says, I object to that. Uh, Ken, this is. Yeah, so I've got one leading me the right act, and I've got the other one driving this ridiculous car at one mile an hour. Honestly, I thought, what have I got myself into here? <laughs> well, it sounds like you met your match. What are you going to do to make amends? Yeah, this isn't funny. You're going to have to fob him off until he goes away. No, you're not. That's Hayley's husband. You do what he wants and put it to bed. I don't know what he wants. I'm dreaming about this guy. You know, I actually had a dream about this guy. He's driving me insane. Toothbrush, sponge, salt and some sweets. How are you feeling? Yeah, all right. I'm going to go through the rules, and then I'm going to show you where everything is. Any questions, just ask. What's your name again? Rob. Rob. Will I have to share a room with anybody? Let's have a look. You are in with... Graham Proctor. It's a fiasco, but you'll be all right. Lace is undone. What do you think, then? Hard done by this morning? Um, no. I'm, I'm guilty, so I, I deserve everything I get. Really? Better let you go, then. 
I don't want you corrupting all these innocent souls. Hey dear Gail, happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, they've, uh, they've given him four months. Gail! Where? Oh, some young offenders institution. I mean, the chap did tell... Where was it, Gail? I'm so sorry. If it's any consolation, I know how it feels. And the first night is the worst. I don't know how I feel. I'm just numb. Look, I've had an idea. I mean, well, since they're here, darling, let's carry on as planned. Are you seriously suggesting we celebrate my birthday? Well, yeah, look, there's a load of people coming round. So I can either go round and cancel them all or we'll, well, we'll have a drink and, you know, we'll keep our spirits up. I'm not in the mood for a party. Well, maybe not, but I'm your mother. You're 50 years old and you're having one. Uh, let me take it. Hello? Sarah. Look, um, well, I'm going to get Bill round. He can start blowing right. up the balloons. And uh, why don't you go and open no, that wine, my darling? Um, yeah. yeah. Doors lock nine o'clock, lights out ten o'clock. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope. That doggy's for sale. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Graham. You all right? This is David. David, eh? I've been doing art, Rob. And today, I painted a tree. We all painted trees, except for Taylor. He did a picture of Jordan. And we all cut our trees out and stuck them together to make a forest. <sighs> OK. Well, first of all, thanks for coming in. Pleasure. Um, oh, I haven't received a CV yet. Oh, well, uh, my sister's printer's broke, so... Maybe you can forward it on. I'll drop it in. Right. No... curriculum... <sighs> Is this really what she wants after news like that? Audrey bullied her into it. It's quite tricky inflating balloons, isn't it? I mean, you blow with all your might and you get nowhere. You need that, that sudden breakthrough. Yeah. It's tying them up, I don't like. It helps if you stretch them like that. Oh, OK. Right. Not having a drink then, Gail? I've had half a glass of peanut butter. We were just saying, Gail, these pretzels are very nice. <laughs> yes, I thought so too. Nice and crispy. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, mm. how, how does it feel to be 50? <laughs> he can't remember. Oh, and you can. <laughs> I haven't had much time to think about it, really. Well, no, you won't have, will you? So, how old are you then, Norris? Actually, Sarah's invited her over to Milan. I mean, but she's not having it. I keep saying, Gail, it's going to be the best thing for you just now. How can I go to Milan with him in there? Well, there's nothing you can do here now. You can visit him, support him, be close to him. How's he going to feel if I go swanning up to Milan? Perhaps he should have thought of that before he started oh, running him off. Give it a rest, will you? Uh, Top up white, please, yeah. Thank you. I get no respect off my boys these days. Tell our Josh do something, just ignores me. I think lost of dressing room. <laughs> our Jason called me Eileen this morning. Does it now and again, just to keep me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> then the daddy spider said, well, from now on, you can stand on your own eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, our Tracy's got it hard. I don't like to see a neighbour in distress, right, but they let that boy walk free, right? And my faith in the British justice system would have evaporated like milk. Well, maybe it'll straighten him out. Oh, he'll be like a frightened little mouse in there, having to mix it with all those hard nuts and chaffs. Actually, according to girls' leaflets, they can have PlayStations in the room so that they behave themselves. They're playing table tennis all day and smoking the weed. Yeah, it's a fool's paradise, Deirdre. What do you think the shortest plan we can stay for? Well, we can't leave yet. 
we could always uh, go to the pub, you know, if you fancy a change of no, scenery. Um, I want to stay by the phone. Yes, David's allowed one phone call. Ah, fair enough. Oh, 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 sorry. Bill, Bill. Yes. I think I'd better stay here tonight, just to make sure she doesn't get too drunk. It's me. I wish your phone was on. I just need to speak to someone. Anyway, I'm in the slammer now, four months, and I miss you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Candles, I'm afraid, but that's one for every decade. Oh. <laughs> Blow them out then, girl, eh? Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Oh, you're not going to make me speak. Oh, well, if you're not going to, I am. Anyway, shh. I'd just like to say very, very happy birthday to a good daughter. Good mother and grandmother, of course, <laughs> to little Bethany in Milan. God bless her soul. But most of all, to a, a good friend, a really, really good friend. Yeah, OK. Um, thank you. Thank you all for coming. I mean, I know she's had her ups and downs, hasn't she? And she's uh, never been very lucky in love, Lord knows. But one day, darling, one of them will stick. And nobody deserves happiness more than... than Gail, we call her, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finish, Ken. Uh, she Gail. Oh, right. Gail. 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 Children. Hmm? Yes. Hmm. You know, Gail, there's no one in that room that hasn't called your boy David a toe rag at one time or another, right? Uh, hmm? Yeah, I, I imagine. Hmm. But if he was my boy, I found myself in your position at this landmark age of 50. Thank you. Then I hope I could conduct myself with dignity and the pride that you have shown. So happy birthday and thank you for having me, Bill. Oh. You're most welcome. Come here. <laughs> thank you. Dry your eyes, mate. I know it's hard to take, but her mind has been made up. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Dry your eyes, mate. I know you want to make her see how much this pain hurts. But you've got to walk away now. It's over. Bye. Bye. Oh, sorry, darling. I'm going to have to go to bed. I'm absolutely sussled. <laughs> Will it be all right? I expect so. My night, my My night, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, dear. Don't you worry. It'll all be OK. Just to get bars on my phone. You have no new messages, so why haven't they phoned? Menu, write message. So where are you and Simone? Send message, Dan's number. 
Where have they gone? Uh, hey, mate. Big day today. Who have you got coming? What's it got to do with you? Some fit birds with massive grey. Yeah, it's my mum, all right? Like I said, some fit birds with massive grey. <laughs> Bonehead, yeah. His mum comes in. She's well tasty. She gives me this look. Like, she's looking into my soul. She's proper up for it. Oh. Yeah, what time's breakfast in here? The birds, man. They just can't get enough of me. Oh, dear, it's really bright, isn't it? Mm, got hangover. I've got a great big bruise on my arm the size of Withenshaw. Must have bumped into the bedside cabinet in the night. <sighs> Takes me back. <sighs> to what? Being a little girl. Getting drunk. You getting drunk. Oh. Oh, I was going to come with you, wasn't I? Well, I don't know what the fashion is for prison visiting, but I don't think it's dressing gown. No, I can easily put some clothes on. No, ma'am. I'd rather go on my own this time. Well, do you think that's a good idea? No, I think it's a terrible idea. That's why I suggested it. Well, it might be easy with the two of us. I mean, we wouldn't run out of things to say, would we? Go back to bed. Go on, I'll tell you all about it tonight. Oh, well, if you're sure. Ooh. Um, ma'am, mm -hmm. do I look all right? I mean, I don't want to show him up. I don't look frumpy. Darling, you look fine. I've got to go to work. Oh. How's your Gail coping with everything? Oh, well, the patron saint of suffering, that one. Whereas this morning, I am the patron saint of hangovers. I feel dreadful. Well, you're self-medicating. Emma? Yeah, I was on the radio the other day. They say, like, if you drink loads when you've got a problem in your life, and they call it self-medicating. Uh, excuse me, I'm not an alcoholic, Maria. I didn't say you were. I just had one of the eight, that's all. Then a few more on top of that. <laughs> and then one for the road. Oh, it's just, it's not just tough on our girl, you know. Oh, no, I don't know how you do it. Do you know, I hope she makes the most of this time he's away. She should go to Italy and be with Sarah. That's what she should do, instead of worrying all the time and fretting over it. Well, that'd certainly give you more time with Bill, wouldn't it? Well, that's another problem. I've been so stuck with her problems that he's probably forgotten what I look like. Which, uh, judging by this morning's offerings, mightn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, mate. Yeah, no difference since last time you asked me. Bonehead, you bonehead! Watch me kex! He's got to look me best for when his mum comes, innit? Watch out for him during visiting, yeah? Who? Bonehead? He grogs on the seats. And one time, yeah, he put a razor blade on one. Stupid screws never clocked it, and Wayne Shire's old man nearly bled to death. <laughs> Barrel of laughs here, innit? Come and have a kick about. Nah, you're alright. I know. You proper sound me. Nah. Thanks for nothing! Aye, aye, who rattled your cage? Do you want me to go and sort him out? Oh, don't, Jerry. I'm not in the mood. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong today. I'm trying to get to see David, but that shower of amateurs has no recollection of me booking. And if I get a bus, I'll be late because I'll have to change twice. And, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Where are you trying to get to? David. And what time do you need to be there? In an hour, but it's the other side of Manchester. Well, I'd better put my foot down then, hadn't I? Come on, young lady, your carriage awaits. Are you sure? I wasn't dropping in, it's honest. I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. Oh, thanks, Jerry. I'm desperate. Aye. I bet it was Eileen. I bet she did it on purpose. What's that smell? Onions. You never go hungry in my car. <laughs> Oh, 
what we need to do we try to be all sentence plan that's like any education and training you want to do while you're in here you can do mvqs a levels yeah i'm only in here for a couple of months mate i think i can rule out a phd don't get psyche with me dave you want to keep on my good side it's david can i see some maturity is that too much to ask look i am mature hey but all I want to do, yeah, is just is keep my head down, stay out of everybody's way, you know, I'm not really bothered about doing exams. Failure to participate in your sentence plan means you'll forfeit certain privileges. Like what? Whatever I deem appropriate, Dave. Use of computer games, the right to wear your own trainers, I'll find your Achilles heel and get you where it hurts. Oh, oh. I should be doing this to you, really. Hmm. No, we can swap over if you want. Oh, no, thank you. Not while you're doing your wonders. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss you when you go on your maternity leave, sweetheart. Mm. I'll be nipping back all the time. Mm. Mind you, it might not be the same with a screaming baby in the background. Oh, no, <laughs> right. I've done nothing about getting your replacement, you know. I mean, I just haven't had time. I've had so much on my plate. <sighs> so, when you've gone, I'll be here. On me lonesome, lonesome. No, yeah. And I did want to go sooner rather than later. Just so unprepared for this birth order. I've got nothing ready. And Liam, yeah, he's painting the nursery. He only wants to paint it Man City's colours. Oh, dear. I know. <laughs> I said to him, why can't we just do it a neutral colour like yellow? But he said no, because it'll make the baby look like they've got jaundice. <laughs> oh, well, that's the point, yeah. But... If you need me here... No, don't be daft. No, I'll ask around. I'll put adverts up. I will miss you, though. Yeah, you'll miss this. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, then. What colour would you paint the nursery? Well, darling, do you know, I don't think you can go wrong with a nice magnolia. Shop! Oh. Oh, sorry, Blanche. No, it's fine. <laughs> Anything to get away from our Daryl, to be honest. What? He looks at me sometimes with such disdain. Oh, how can that happen? I mean, one day you're teaching them to ride a bike, to kick a ball, and he thinks you're God. And the next, you're the thickest person on the planet. I think our kids are sent to try it. Oh, sorry, me and my mouth. I don't know how long I'll be. be as long as you like. Gonna have a snooze. Oh, Gail. Be strong. Yours will be the first friendly face he's seen, so don't go ruin it by snotting into your handbag. Oi, Platt, sit down. I, I, was... I said sit down. Oh, hi, Dave. Yeah. We're really mature, aren't we? It wasn't me. Where did you get that? It's not mine. You know you're not allowed to go. Yeah. Look, it was somebody else, all right? You're on a warning.
So how are you finding it? Yeah, it's fine. Do they treat you okay? Well, I get a few whacks at night on the back of my legs with a wet towel, but other than that, it's a joke, Mum. Well, don't, David. I'm at snapping point. Sorry. So how is it, really? Well, I've achieved in one day what you've been trying to achieve in years. You know, I go to bed at ten, I get up at seven, and I, I even have to clean the toilet. I thought you might have phoned yesterday. With it being my birthday. Yeah, I did try, honestly. Just, it was a really long line. I, I think you have to book it in advance as well. Did, did it go all right? Well, put it this way, I had two very good reasons to get drunk. Mind you, your gran didn't have any, and she was well out of it. Yeah. Should have seen her this morning. <laughs> so, are you all right? I'm coping. I want a coffee or anything? Only there's a machine there. It's just I'm not allowed to leave this seat. Yeah, that's a very good. Oh yeah, um, apparently, you'll never guess what, I've got to do some studying in here. Are you going to? No, I don't have much choice really. Well maybe I should have come here for parenting classes. <laughs> what are you going to study? Uh, I did think about doing like an hairdressing course, like an MVQ. Um, but then I decided against the idea of giving my right out. <laughs> You know, just once. I wish we could have a straight conversation. We are. You know what I mean. You talking to me without me having to constantly read between the lines. Yeah, well, talking's overrated. Really? Well, if we had, you might not be in here. Yeah, but I am. And there's no we can do about that now. Well, it doesn't mean I'm not sorry for what I did. For smashing up half the street? No. I meant what I did to you. Well, I wish it hadn't come to this. It's not all bad. I mean, they've got a telly and a table tennis as well. And look, I even get to wear me on trainers. Wonder how she's getting on. Thanks very much. Bye. Hmm? Gail at the boss. Uh, at the training centre. Oh, right, yeah. Aw. Oh. Well, it can't be easy for her. No. They have a family day, you know, where you can all go and look around. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, yes, won't it? I mean, next time I can take a picnic and have a day out. Sorry, Audrey. Oh. No, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Ignore me. Right, we'll put you under the dryer now, Mrs. Stainton. Hey, we'll put you under the dryer now. Two sugars and just a drop of milk, please. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. So is it your day off today then? Oh no, I'm at the dentist. <laughs> well, do you want me to pull some teeth out while I'm at it, make it look kosher? Oh no, thank you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Big Brother's back tomorrow then. Oh, don't remind me. You know what they say, absence makes the art grow fonder. Uh, absence, yeah, is presence, no. Yeah, sit there. No. I mean, what do I have to do to put him off, eh? Grow facial hair? Develop a phlegmy cough? <laughs> Here's you could do both and it still won't make a difference. Mm. Right, what do you want? Oh, I don't know. Something different. Tell you what surprised me. Mm. Right, time's up. Say farewells now, please. I feel like I've only been here ten minutes. Yeah, well, time flies in this place. Is there anything 
you want me to bring you next time? Um, yeah. A few cans of lager, maybe. My games console. No, I'm fine. Right then. I hate leaving you like this. I want to get to that telly before all these lot. I'll see you soon. And your phone. Go on. This morning, and for a second, I lay there relishing the silence. Thinking any minute now that radio will start blaring, and Sarah and David and Jason will start bickering, and Bethany will throw a paddy. And then I remembered. I didn't realise silence could be so suffocating. Hey, come back to ours for your tea. Are you sure? You're not the only one, Mrs. Herd, kids. Oh, Thank you, Betty. Hold the check. You were all right before we go to work. Well, that's very kind of you. Is everything okay? As well as it can be. What you want doing? Look, if you've come to persuade me to go to Milan, I've told you the answer's no. Sorry, sorry, what did you say? Milan. Yeah. You were telling her to go and stay with Sarah. Yeah, well, what about it? She's been like this all morning. They say dementia comes on slow. They might have to think again. Hey, don't be so cheeky, you. No, I'm just worried about David. When are you going to see him again? Friday. Well, I'll come with you if you like. I wouldn't say no. I'll check the visiting arrangements, but I'm sure it'll be OK. All oh, right, my darling. We'll speak later. Hey, and watch it, you. One of them mothers who just goes on about the kids all the time, but here I am, boring you stupid. Oh, don't be silly. Hmm. Well, you all right? You just seem a bit... What? I don't know. Just a bit not with it. I'm perfectly all right, thank you, John. Hey, be a love and get Mrs Turner a coffee. No coffee for me, love. <laughs> now, have you heard from him? Not a dicky bird. Audrey, why did you never tell me about him? I thought it was all dead and buried and they'd thrown away the map. Fair enough. What are you going to do? I'm the funniest. You've got his number, though. Yeah, I'm not going to ring it just like that, am I? Funny, the name. Ted. My last husband was a Ted. Oh, yes, of course. Actually, better not talk about it here. How will you fix later? Any time you like. I'll phone you. OK, then. See ya. Bye. Ted who was we to run about like that? Oh, never you mind. Huh? Get that coffee. Go on. <laughs> so, how old were you? Oh, I was just 17. And had you had Stephen by this time? Oh, yeah. I can't believe I'm dredging all this up. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I pushing it? No, it's fine. I need to talk about it. Yes, I'd had Stephen. But my dad made me give him up. Well, he said I was irresponsible and far too young to be a mother. <sighs> I was upset, obviously. Mm. So I hatched this plan. I thought, if I could get married and have another kid, then he could see that I could be responsible and he'd let me get Stephen back. And what happened? Well, then I met this Ted. I mean, he was one of the first to come along, if the truth is known. <laughs> so, I got myself in the family way again. Deliberate this time. Heaven knows what I was thinking. Um, did Ted know you were pregnant? No, no, well, that was the point. See, I was going to tell him and say maybe we should get married. Mm -hmm. 
And then I looked at him, Rita, and I thought, no, this isn't fair. I don't love him. I'm just using him, and it's all going to end in tears. So, well, I dumped him. And he still didn't know? No. Doesn't know to this day he's got a kid. But Gail knows about him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I told her a few years ago. She doesn't know that he's got in touch, though. What will you do if he phones again? I have no idea. Do you want to see him? Well, I don't see the point. I mean, opening up another can of worms, eh? Anyway, I don't want Gail bothered just now. Well, for mm. obvious reasons. Mm. But why has he phoned after all these years? No idea. Aren't you curious? Well, like you've been doing that years. Yeah, well, I don't want the morning to drag, do I? I want to keep myself busy. Oh, uh, you don't still think this Tina's going to show up? Oh, yeah. She might. But anyhow, you know, even if she don't, Look, she will. You'll be lucky. The guys I've seen living for visits that never happen. Oh, yeah? Have you got anybody coming to visit you? I hope not. When you've been here as long as I have. What? Four months? I hate you. Sitting there with nothing to say. Everyone going on about how the shame nearly killed Nan. Anyway. It was only a little fire. Three fire crews came and put it out before upstairs caught. It's time. She don't want to know, mate. Yeah, shut up, will you? Do me, I didn't know. I bet you she's bottled it. Tina! No way. Yeah, I told you she was fit, I don't think much to yours. Jailbird. It's good to see you. Some of my mum's off to the dentist. She's doing not issuing you over there. It stinks in here. Does it? It's probably too many blocks. I've got a search on the way in. Big glazer. Can't keep her hands off me. <laughs> it's probably because she fit this bird in here, that's why. Too right. I bet you're not his girlfriend. He must be his sister or something. Hope not. Otherwise, we've done something very, very wrong. Why are you him? Chucked a pot pie at our next door neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time criminal is our Graz. He's a regular on Crime Watch. Yeah, I came up like a golf ball. I, my backside, and the rest. Arson, that's what he did. Set a flaming fire. Shame of it nearly killed his poor nan. Do you want a ginger nut with that tea? So, how is it? Um, I just keep my head down, you know. There's loads of mad lads in here. Are you allowed to watch telly? Yeah, when they say. Are you allowed outside? Well, we get an hour's exercise every day. Hmm. Bet the food's rubbish. You know the toilet cubicles? Have they got doors on them? Yeah, of course they have. Anyway, enough about me and my lavish lifestyle. What about you? I'm good, yeah. Fine. Oh, I do my head in, being locked up. Is it not driving mental? Uh, it's weird, you know, sort of like having your freedom taken away from you. You, know, you don't feel like you anymore. So, has your mum been in? Uh, not for a while, though, actually, no. Got a little bit awkward. But neither has knew what to say to each other. Right, well, <clears throat> I'd best make a move. Yeah. It's gone by so fast, you know. I mean, the rest of the time it drags like you wouldn't believe. Shall I come again? Would you? Honestly, if you did, it'd be amazing. Right, then. I will. Come on, please. Time to go. Look, I'll sit down a minute, Tina. Look, I know I've said things and I've given you loads of grief and I'm sorry, yeah? But, I mean, the rest of the stuff were good, wasn't it? And me and you, we were sound. Yeah, we were good. 
And I have, um, I've missed you. Well, a bit. So what then? Does this mean we're back on? Yeah. <sighs> right, you won't regret it, yeah. It's been hell not seeing you, and all I've done is think about it. All right, calm down. Don't have a cow. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of dying for a kiss. Yeah, well, it's against the rules, isn't it? They told me in the way in. Yeah, I know. One little kiss, that's not going to work, is it? You'll stress out that fella. You could be swapping more than just spit. You know, you are so romantic. <laughs> that's what I love about you. <laughs> yeah, well, you just have to wait. And wait. Yeah, it's a hell we waiting. Come here. <laughs> you know the rules. <laughs> Hi, Rita. Hey, hello. hello. Hey, you're pretty nifty on that thing. Another day or so, and I'll be rid of it. Ooh. Can't wait. <laughs> you look busy. Come and do mine when you've done yours. Oh, I don't know about that. It's like painting the fourth bridge trying to keep these windows clean. As <laughs> soon as I've finished, there's bird muck where I started. <laughs> Should get Norris to do it for you. Ah, well then, it'll be like painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel <laughs> the length of time he did. Rita, can I ask you something? Hmm. Did you know my man was in touch with me dad? Well, I'll not lie to you. Uh, thought as much. What do you know about him? Well, only what Audrey told me, which is practically now. And I don't want to be rude, but isn't this a conversation you should be having with your mother? If I could pin her down, I would. Anyway, I'll see you. See you. Bye, love. Bye, love. See you in Thursday next week, if that's any good, two o'clock? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Audrey. Uh, there was something else. Your Gail was asking earlier on about Ted. Oh, what she want? Only to find out what I knew. Which is now. You two talking about me? Don't let me stop you. Hey, now, you two keep me out of it. Audrey, thank you. Gail, goodbye. Bye. Bye, Rita. Oh. You're more elusive than the Scarlet Pimpin now these days. Look, huh? I am sorry. I've just been so busy. Obviously. Oh, Gail, don't start. I've had a belly full this week, honestly. It's Maria, she... And this is really confidential, right? She's lost the baby. Oh, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Poor girl. Mm, she's still at mine. She's in a right mess. And my head's all over the place with it, I can tell you that. I mean, I even had to break the news to poor Kirk this morning. Well, that's not easy for you. If there's anything I can do to help. Thanks, love it. I mean, Bill does his best, bless him, but he does have a habit of putting his size tens in it, if I'm not careful. Well, it wouldn't be my number one choice for counselling, oh. no. <laughs> anyway, um, I've come to ask you for my dad's telephone number. Really? Is that a problem? Well, not for me, it isn't, no, but I mean, I can't answer for Ted. Well, I'd like to meet him eventually, so, um, might be good to talk to him first. Yeah. Right. Okay. But look, if and when you do phone him, promise me that you'll tread carefully, eh? Because I'm not sure how Ted's going to take this. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? This night, it was called The Riot Act by Theresa Morton. I'm serious, though. That's gone now. I was on the van, wasn't I? I'd like to bedtime story once in a while, that's all I'm saying. Well, I'll read you one tonight, and then I'll tuck you in, and I'll hold your hand. How's about that? David used to like the Care Bears. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Don't let his new mates know. Hey, you've got a spring in your step, considering. <sighs> My father's coming to visit again. Do you know what? I think I'm a daddy's girl. <laughs> Roy, will you? Because I was just on my way round to his for an egg and cress sandwich and two eclairs. You greedy wench. No! <laughs> One was for Natasha, but she bought her own sandwiches in today. I smelt these and I couldn't resist them. You know what it's like when you've got a craving. You're not pregnant, are you? Oh, oh that'd be all right. Wouldn't it triplets, huh? No, I'll be honest, it wasn't the smell of the chips that lured you in here, was it? It was my aftershave. Yeah, obesity by Calvin Klein. Oh, no, well, that's not very funny. No, it's not. I'm getting sick of your jibes. Well, have you know, I was very fond of a man who was on the larger side of life. 
If you ask me, I think it comes with a certain degree of... Um, Kicks. Stature. Just out of interest, um, you know when you're asking Roy for an egg and crest sandwich, you don't tell him not to tell Jerry, do you? No. Oh! <laughs> Jerry! <laughs> well, that's wonderful, dear. I'm very pleased for you. I'm calling him Dad. Well, why not? Th this has got DSP, you know. Well, what's that? Uh, digital signal processing. Uh, we, well, we should think about having some of these around the house. Uh, and it's got very good IC as well. That That's image control and, and, and excellent anti-blooming. Are you making this up? Uh, and it's got more than adequate S stroke N ratio. Uh, 3.6 millimetre lens. What is S stroke N ratio? <laughs> yes, yes, it's a very, very good piece of kit. This. Does anyone fancy a cup of tea? Norris, Emily asks you a question. What is S stroke N ratio? No, no sugar, Mr. Cole. Oh, please call me Norris. I'll uh, just go and put the kettle on. Shall I? You do that, Mr. Cole. Kenzie drug the calling. And he's just the half of it. There's a girl at the middle of all this you might know. Oh, don't they grow up quickly? I still think of Chesney as an eight-year-old. No, he's a big gangly drink of water with a crush. <laughs> he spends more time in that bathroom than Kirk, and that is saying something, Audrey. <laughs> have you just had chips? Oh, yes, they were beautiful. Oh, uh, hey, and have your wits about you in that shop after yesterday, by the way. Need eyes in the back of your head. Oh, yes, I know. Well, I don't keep too much money in the till, actually, Fizz, so unless they want to steal a couple of bottles of conditioner, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> well, you can't be too careful. No. Anyway, i better get back to Mrs Frog. Mrs Frog? Hey, tush, tush, tush. <laughs> Always welcome to one. And I'm hardly Timothy McVeigh, am I, compared to some of the lads in here? Oh, I did. We'll put a few windows through. And push your mum down the stairs. Yeah. Well, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. It's quite sexy seeing you in here. Yeah. It's a pity we couldn't get one of those conjugal visits. I'll have to wait then. So what, your dad gets final say then, does he? That's what he thinks. How Victorian is that? I wouldn't know. The olden days sort of, like, lumped into one for me. Father's strict in Victorian times. No, he is, he is all right, actually. Once you've worked out his sense of humour. Oh. Uh, he's not one of those people that think they're funny when they're not, is he? You don't have enough of those bad boys in here. You should hear me fake laugh. I've got it down to a T. Go then. Well, says something not fun. Um, beans on toast. Beans on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Beans on toast. <laughs> you know, I was um, thinking of asking my dad to meet you. Maybe get his seal of approval on you. Has he been in? No, he wants to, but he can't. Why not? Visiting orders. Like gold dust, you know, you should consider yourself lucky. I do. Disrespectful to the customers. What, in general, or a specific incident? Mm, he claimed it was lateness three times. But I know what it was really about. Pray tell. I had a stand up row with this woman trying to return L plates. Wait, hang on, she wanted the money back from a pound shop? Mm, yeah, one pound for L plates. Which had been used, by the way, because they had mud all over him. Well, obviously, she passed her test. You think you're joking? She wanted to swap them for the green ones. No way. Way? I mean, how this woman could pass her driving test is just completely beyond me. The boss said to me, you might as well just give her the money back. It's only a pound. So, so I said to him, with that attitude, you'd be out of business in a week. It's like, how much are these lighters, love? Oh, only a pound. You can have him. Don't matter anyhow. That place will be beneath you. Yeah, that's what your mum said. Anyway, I'm sick of retail. I think I might try something different. Um, professional tennis player? <laughs> I'm too old. Lion tamer. Picking up chairs all day? Don't think so. What way, maintenance? <laughs> now just being stupid. <laughs> well, then come on. There must be something you fancy. Well, actually, 
I was thinking of having a crack at hairdressing. Oh. Did you now? Did you have a particular salon in mind? Well, you wouldn't happen to know of any, would you? Well, I might. I might. Really? Imagine that. Just depends, though. Are you ready for the constant smell of product invading your nostrils eight hours a day? I think I'm ready. Right, then. Well, um, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. You're welcome. Love mugs of curlers, eh? Hey. <laughs> well, have a word with her. Seriously, would you? Of course. Ah, oh. But it must be wicked having a family business. Didn't you ever fancy it, being on the scissors? Being on the scissors? <laughs> can you see me cutting hair? Can you see me being on the scissors? <laughs> Why not? Well, I couldn't be on my feet all day, for one thing. Yeah. I like talking to people, though. I got to do that in my old job. But the customers are all skin flints. No, that's not true. There's many a time I've been in that pound shop for ice cube trays or pegs or candles for Bethany's parties. Well, I never saw you in there. That doesn't mean to say I haven't been in. It doesn't help. <laughs> so who's making tea tonight? You and me, because I was hoping it was going to be you. Absolutely. I'm sorry I haven't done it a bit more, to tell you the truth. Especially what you've had to put up with. Parents, eh? <laughs> Hello? Oh, hiya, Ted. How are you? Oh, well, you retired folks. You have it too easy. That's the problem. <laughs> hey! If I was in charge, I'd have you picking up litter, doing something useful. <laughs> I know, I know. It's all about bingo or fair technology. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I've said it to myself many times. Ah, oh, Ted, shut up. Hey, um, any decent blokes on the horizon? <laughs> Yeah, I'm that Tina. You got a problem with that? It's not here. Shut the shops. Cos we ran out of milk. Cos she said she'd go first. Well, she'll be back any second. Oh, you just hang on a minute. I mean... Oh, right. I refer to it to you and all. I knew it. If she just waited two more seconds. If who'd waited? Sarah. Sarah phoned? Mm. I said to be straight back, but she has to go to work. She's got a bit stropper. Don't know if it was me. I'll phone her later. I know what she wants. Been promising our visit for ages. Well, why don't you? Want well, to see me pass up a trip to us away? Well, me neither. As soon as I know David's OK. Today's the day. Why don't you let me look after David and you go off to see Sarah? I just might do that. Is that semi skimmed? Yeah. You're just going to have to use twice as much. So, will you miss me? Cry myself to sleep. <laughs> hey, you should look us up, you know, when you get out. I'll treat you to a free haircut if you like. God knows you need one. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get out? Well, you've seen Tina. What's if she's not gone off with someone else while you're in here? Hey, if she has, I'll hunt them down and I'll kill them in cold blood. Might be back here before tea time. Fish pie tonight. Oh, it's almost worth doing it for that alone. Don't come back, yeah? Yeah. I'm only joking. I know, but you're not like the rest in here. Come on, steady on, mate. I mean, you're clever. Yeah, you're right. I'm too clever to get caught. How chaff is this, eh? Waiting for our man to come out of jail? It's a young offenders institution. Have we seen the looks we've been getting off people? They know why we're here. Well, maybe it's all part of the process to make us feel ashamed. Do you hug him first? Hug him first? You know, when he comes out. I just thought, 
being his mum, you've got to give him a first hug. I don't mind. Yeah, but if we both go in our balls flying, then I'll someone's eye out. But if you don't want to hug him, I'll fill my boots. No, I do want to hug him. OK, you can go first. OK. But don't take too long, though. I haven't hugged him for a long time. I'll be quick. Somehow I think he preferred to hug you than me. No, oh, I'm sick of the devil. <laughs> That was quick. He hasn't been inside five minutes. Can we help you? I hope it was a sharp shot, cos it certainly was short. He's been punished. I've heard it's like a holiday camp in there. I want my son in UA for a fortnight. I'll not leave it out to you. Next, if you fancy. <laughs> Molly, after bottoming the salon, all I'm fit for is a gin tea in the Rovers. Mm. Great minds think alike, eh? 460 that, OK. Not sure we think alike. Otherwise, you wouldn't be rejecting David when he most needs support. Gail, I hope you're going to lighten up before Ted gets here. You not being around might help. Oh, listen to her. Do you know Ted was lucky to miss her teenage years? <laughs> so is your dad coming again, then? Yeah. Oh. Yes, and I will be near because he phoned and said we should all go to the Rovers later. When? So have a word with your face, eh? You don't want him going off, yeah? When did he phone? He did a part with flashing on. <laughs> Yeah, get you in, like, an accident for then time you're out, Nah, I'm not squeamish. I work with kebabs. Yeah, I thought it'd be an ace horror film. Having someone on that spinny thing of yours. It's called a gyro. Really, and slicing them up. It's not as easy as it looks, you know, slicing kebabs. Give over. I could do it with my eyes shut. Five, I said you come. All right. Oh. I can't imagine you're here to help me with my hair traps. I want you to cancel the drink with Ted. What? Why should I? I've made plans. Well, how am I meant to know that, Gail? You're not talking to me. I want you taking enough time off us. Oh, come on, don't start. I mean, I forfeit the first 50 years. Now I'm not allowed to go for a nice walk in the country with him. Find a quiet pub for our tea. A walk in the country? <laughs> What's wrong with that? When did you last fancy a walk in the country? Well, I fancy it now. You used to suck for days whenever I dragged you near a bit of green. Who are you trying to kid him? You really are, eh, Julie Andrews? You don't want a drink with me any more than I want a drink with you, so why deliberately ruin me evening? Sorry, I'm late. No, come in. Let me take your coat. I was making good time until the car conked. I had to be towed off the M602 by the mechanic at the road. You broke down? Oh, I had some flowers and left them in the back seat. <laughs> is the car all right? Nothing you can't fix first thing, he said. Kevin, is it? It's been nothing but trouble from the start, that car. I should have driven it into the canal. Oh. Not sure that would have been the answer. I'll get the flowers, and then I'll have a ring round and get the price of a higher car in case it takes longer. I hope you haven't got anything planned for this afternoon. Nothing concrete. We're a bit tied, aren't we, meeting my mum later? Audrey? Was she cancelled? Something to do with Bill's accounts? Right. Get the vase. Uh, how big? About three ninety-nines worth. <laughs> Came in at dinner, you shot? Don't you start. We're understaffed due to unforeseen heart attacks. Go on then, spin the wheel. What? <laughs> Five off. Me making a kebab with my eyes shut. She's getting me chips with her winnings. Come on, then. <laughs> okay. Right. okay. Turn that on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Ow, ow. Oh, spin yeah. round, spin round. <laughs> right. Nice. Where? Yeah. 
pitta. Don't mix them up. Right. Let me have it. Whoa! Go downwards. Oh. Watch this saw through. She's probably imagining that's my mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won it until you said that. Alright, you leave a bit of room for some chilli. Alright, ready? Uh-huh. Voila. Oh yeah. You so owe me a fiver. What? What's wrong with that? What's this for? Well, it's just to uh, make it a bit easier. Cheers. Yeah, well, you defo owe me a fiver. Call it my uh, first hour's wages. Wages? Well, yeah, he shot staff. I'm a genius, okay? Why don't you just give me a job so your dad comes back? He failed to get me in the salon. Yeah, I failed to get myself in and all. All right, then. Sound. There you go. Your first and only free bear. Does it come with instructions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ted, hey. Gave up on Bill's accounts, did you? Gave up on what? Oh, no, no, I'm just going home to do the now. <laughs> it looked like you were going into the pub. You've got time for a quick one, haven't you? Uh, uh, no, no, I was only just going in to ask Liz Summit, uh, the landlady, but uh, look at the time. No, I'll have to ask her tomorrow, so uh, see you soon anyway. Bye, you. Bye, ma'am. I was going to say she's a terrible liar, but history suggests that's not true, doesn't it? Why would she lie? Exactly, why would she? She doesn't want to see me when... I am. Um... Oh, is this what they call a power breakfast? Kind of implies there is a breakfast, ground. Thought you'd have had yours. But I didn't have time, did I? I'll make you some toast I'll if you like. I'll make her some toast. I'll make my own toast, thank you. I just wanted you all to know that at last I'm going to visit Sarah. Rome. Right. Milan. Pick it. Well, about time. Do you know, little Beth would have forgotten what you look like. It's two completely different cities. Same country. All right, so if someone was to say, are you from Guildford, you wouldn't mind. She's flying out tomorrow night. Says our man in the know. I had to discuss it. Look, you don't Ted, have to explain. So that he was around while I was gone. What? You, you're leaving Ted to babysit? Yeah, she wasn't going to go. I thought she thought we'd trash the place. Mm. Wild parties. Telly's out the window, that keeper. Mm. Chance would be a fine thing. Mm. So you're with through a wild party? All right, Norris knocks if I put the volume up to three. My next door neighbour's a copper. Supernova Heights, it ain't. That's no Gallagher's old. All right, I got the drift. Now, I offered to stay. It was either me or Audrey. And the way I look at it, it's not my job to please you. Well, but she thinks it is. If you behave like adults, I'll treat you as such. We'll leave us to it. Well, we will, won't we? Do you mean it? I do. The question is, do you? Or are you going to prove your grandma right? Is it then, is it? Well, he's met me mum, so he just have to meet me one day. Yeah, but coming round again, it's not really a style. He's not a team biscuits kind of bloke. Well, what kind of a bloke is he? Well, he don't do chat. Is he the strong, silent type? Weather, gardening, celebrity weddings. Oh, forget it. He don't like much. Footer, fishing. Filling around behind your mum's back? Hey! Well, if you were married to my mum, you would have filled around. But I best not mention it, eh? Mm, well, it's quite sarcastic. You don't say. Very sarcastic. He probably thinks, like, 98% of people are just a waste of space. You know, you're bigging him up, you know that? No, no. He's great. You'd love him. And he'll love me. Yeah. Well, he just wants what's best for me. So. Come on, he can't be that protective. I mean, you've been seeing me for months. Are you trying to say my dad don't care about me? You don't even know him? No, it's just he hasn't been near, has he? Not since I've been here. Oh, well, this is a great start, eh? Why don't I just ring him and tell him not to bother? Oh, well, hold the French fancies. Tina! Look, I didn't mean it's it. that kind of crap. It was a joke. Well, you're going to get right up his nose. OK, OK, whatever you say, all right? You're the expert. This is important. Well, you do care what I think of him, don't you? Not just what he thinks of me. Duh. Give the lad a coconut. OK. I'll keep my head down, keep my gob shut, and I'll never, ever be funnier than him. The first few times you meet him? Yeah. We might actually manage a proper conversation this time. <laughs> Come through. 
Kat, this is David. David. We uh, meet at last. Kettle's on. And no expense spared on the buffet. <laughs> hmm. Would you like uh, tea or coffee? Or can I tempt you to a glass of wine? Well, I'm driving tea, please. Tell me you didn't spend money on that tie. He gets dressed in the dark. Yeah? Yeah, can't you tell? <laughs> We've got something in common then, David. Hey! I bought him that T-shirt. Did you? Are you a red or a blue? Um, I, I don't really do football. Not anymore. That's right. You do hair, don't you? I was expecting kebabs. It's temporary. She's helping out a friend. He had a heart attack. Too many donors. <laughs> yeah, something like that. How's that work? Cash in hand, no stamp, no holidays. It's a proper job. I'm paying tax and everything. She's a bright girl. Yeah, she is. She could be anything she turned her mind to. Can we do this another time? I'm just saying. No. Oh. Quick cuppa, quick hello, you said. I didn't expect this Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. So, David. Apart from reruns of Monty Python on the box and the occasional trip to jail, what's your plan for world domination? Dad, you haven't been here an hour yet. Yeah, so what kept you? I know I'd have asked in the first five minutes if I'd have had a daughter as special as her. I also might have made a point of meeting me sooner and all. I did my homework. I'm good. Then you'll know that was a bit of a lad. David? A drifter. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. You don't have to explain yourself. It's complicated, and it's private. Well, I'm not drifting anymore. I've sacked me jobbing at my grand salon. No future in a back street shop. I'm enrolling for MVQs, so I'll be qualified in two years and an artistic director in five. And jail? Well, I was lucky she waited this time. But she wouldn't wait again. And I'm not risking it. grateful to you, Gail. <laughs> you don't have to say it every time you come. I mean it. Tina's mum as well. She didn't seem it at the time. <laughs> I can imagine. Teenagers don't come cheap. No, Joe. No, don't be daft. You'll not be getting much keep from the kebab queen. She pays away. And it's worth it to see David happy. Take it. Buy a frock or something if you'd rather, please. <laughs> you can buy me a drink sometime. Take it. Doesn't stop me buying you a drink as well. How does Sunday suit? I'm um, flying to Milan tomorrow. Family reunion. Oh. My dad's keeping his beady eye on these two. When you get back then, maybe? Maybe. Be nice. Hmm. Oh. Established as a sense stylist requires junior with energy and ideas. Experience necessary. Attitude essential. Hey, it's got your name all over it. Which bit? Oh, come on. That's exactly what you're looking for. Well, does it say knowledge of recent prison fashions an advantage? Well, that's your individual touch you bring to the job. Look, what experience have I got, eh? Mixing coloured rinses for 90-year-olds. I've no chance. Well, you won't know if you don't ask, will you? Here. Ring this number for further information. I mixed this blue rinse on a woman, yeah? Hmm? Must have reacted funny with her head. <laughs> right, it's engaged. Try it again. Came out in all these pukey green streaks. Graham went spare. Still. Yeah. Look, there's probably like 10,000 people going for it. And are they any better than you? Well, 7,000 of them, yeah. And how many have got your irresistible charm, eh? Right, well, I'll give them another go in a bit, all right? Friday afternoon's fine. And yeah, two, two o'clock suits me. Right, well, I'll, I'll see you then, then, shall I? I told him he'd at least get an interview. Getting yourself through the door is the main thing. After that, it's up to him. He'll be fine. Yeah, should be all right. It's David Platt. Yeah, P-L-A-T-T. -T. And I'll see you Friday then.
Thanks. Bye bye. What's up? They want references. Well, everybody wants references. Well, it's no bother, surely. What from a previous employer? Well, your grand is hardly going to do you down, is she? Well, she's not exactly been his best mate recently, though, eh? And she won't even give me a job brewing up and sweeping clippings. She's either going to say I'm God's gift to her dressing based on the strength for that, is she? Well, don't you worry. You stay positive. Something will work itself out. If not, leave it to your granddad. What, are you... Are you going to talk to Gran from there? She's a pushover. This afternoon. I don't know. Ask yourself. You should do something with your hair. Why? What's wrong with it? Well, nothing. Just, like, you use it to show them what you can do. Like, dye different colours or shave your initials in the back of something. <laughs> See you later. Well, I bet that's made her day. Eh? Gran. I called round this morning for that reference, yeah? She'd not done it yet. So I've just called back again now, still not done it. So she makes me sit down and wait while she writes the whole thing out, loving every second of it she was. So what's it say? I don't know. Sealed. Oh! <laughs> I don't believe it. Well... She didn't say anything bad, exactly. Yeah, she hasn't said anything good, either. Listen to this. David is generally punctual. Generally. You see, by saying that, it makes it sound as though I'm not always. Well, you're not. Yeah, I know. But I don't need her to tell him that, do I? And listen to this. Where is it? He can be conscientious. Can be? So, in other words, sometimes he isn't. What is that going to look like to them? Eh? You know, I, I might as well not bother. Oh, isn't this brilliant? Out there. Hey, what's up? I thought you were getting changed for your interview. I'm not going. Why? I feel like going over there and giving her a good slap. What's your manners, you? Oh, I see what you mean. Talk about damning with faint praise. Ben, it's invisible. You, go get yourself ready. I'll be back in a bit. We may as well go for the pint while we wait. What? You can still pull it off. Oh, Tina, get real, yeah? I need a miracle. I don't normally do requests. Some divine intervention. Is that a new reference? It's a reference. Is this for real? <laughs> Impeccable timekeeping. Outgoing and attentive. Well, yeah, right. I'm particularly <laughs> taken by driven and determined to excel. <laughs> Did you get order to write this? Uh, <laughs> what malarkey was jinx from the beginning. Talk about the Amityville horror. How did Claire take it? Well, put it this way. I made sure I was a first. A very highly strung young lady, according to the local rumour mill. Excuse me, they're the injured party here. Hey, I'm staying out of this. How are you? Oh, how did it go? Yeah, all right. Would you care to elucidate? Never mind, sweetheart. I mean, there's plenty of other salons out there. Yeah, you know what they say. Hairdressing's a growth industry. Tell him. I start a four-week trial on Monday. Really? Uh -huh. Paired and everything. Is he a star or what? <laughs> yeah. Cappuccino, Americano, latte. So, you're a glorified tea boy at this swanky salon, then? No. I'm a trainee tea boy. Takes months before they actually let you near the machine. Well, how long before they let you near anybody's hair? Oh, years. I'm just happy soaking up the vibe. How are you? Oh, hi. We're just talking about David's amazing new job. Mm. He's won best salon in the Northwest, yeah, for three years running. It's a really happening place. Yes. It's always best to keep your options open, though, I find. Are you going to tell them what's happened? No, no, I'm going to book in for a shampoo and set. Of course I'm going to tell them what's happened. Hello, is that Peter and Paul? Grand wait, don't do it! Please, this reference had nothing to do with me. 
Well, you do that, then my career in hairdressing is over. Yes, you're right. And you did have an accomplice, didn't you? Hmm? Maybe he should ring this salon and explain to them his part in it. Well, then, either way, I get sacked. Not my problem, lover. Grant, Ted is helping me out, yeah? Why can't you just help me as well? And you're right, this is all my fault. So why should he take all the blame? Well, I can't believe that David didn't give you a bit of a nudge. Grant, you've got to come and see it. It's dead posh. Listen, I'll even get one of the creative directors, yeah, to give you a tip. Creative di di Don't talk soft. Seriously? <sighs> Listen, they charge 50 quid, yeah, just for a wash and blow. Don't dob me in, Grant, please. I'll think about it. Thanks. Oh, look, just get off. Go on. <laughs> get out of my salon. Vamoose. Hello, Audrey's. Uh, Friday? Uh, well, I'll just see if, um, one of our creative directors is available. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm off the hook. She's not going to me in. Oh, well, for a minute there, I thought the cappuccino making world was about to lose one of its brightest stars. Yeah, I think this calls for celebration. Yeah. How about we throw a David nearly lost his job, but then luckily he didn't part. <laughs> That's a wicked idea. I don't think your mother would be too happy about that. No, she was not invited. Boo boo. <laughs> she got the wall. No, sorry, David. All right, it's, it's a word party that's just putting him off, isn't it? How about then if we call it a select gathering? Yeah, we're just a few movers and shakers from the world of fast food. You could even invite Peter and Paul. It still sounds like a party to me. It won't be. In fact, right, from now on, nobody even has to mention the P word. Just with some people, some alcohol, and some loud music. Mm, but not too loud, just a sensible volume. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, Ted. My, my mum will never need to know about it. Go on, then. I'll talk to Audrey, see what she says. Do you have anything planned for tonight? Well, what did you have in mind? I just wondered if anybody was using your spare bedroom. What's wrong with Gail? Well, I, it's uh, David. He's having a bit of a shindig tonight. He's having a party? Mm, so I wanted to make myself scarce. Ted, you've sanctioned this. I'm not the United Nations, Ord. What are you going to say to Gail when she comes back and finds all her carpets ruined? Curtains burnt and all her watercolours defaced. Sorry? I trust him. Well, I trust Tina. Oh, Ted, it just doesn't feel right. What's the worst that could happen? With David, mass genocide. <laughs> You're a good movie, you, Ted. Oh, they don't make them like they used to. Hey! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> What's going on? Me and your missus, we're just cutting some shapes in the dark floor. <laughs> Where's all the furniture? Oh, it's in the garage. Don't you think it looks fab? We try to give it the nightclub feel. <laughs> what, a nightclub where people are allergic to sitting down? Hey, we've gone through a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, you needn't bother. I know anybody's coming, it's only going to be a few minutes. Hey, you can't forget, it was my idea. You're just in time to help us take up the carpet. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> 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 don't you think it looks amazing? No, I don't look like my house. I best get out. Oh. Now you two behave yourself. Make sure nothing gets out of hand. As if. And if people want to smoke, send them into the garden. And there's to be no drugs. Ah, oh, well my deal's round in five. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> don't even think about it. Ah, oh, we don't need no artificial high, Ted. We're high on life. You know I trust you two, <laughs> but you don't know who you get at a party. Well, it's only going to be about ten of us. Ten of us, we know where to sit. Would you stop moaning and say thank you? It's been brilliant helping there. Well, thanks, Ted. I've had grief off Audrey about this. She thinks I'm crazy. So, don't let me down. As if. Me and Jimmy, we used to throw some fabulous dudes. Everybody brought their party piece, songs around the piano. You must miss him. I miss his Shirley Bassey. He just sort of became her. Oh, have a fab time. We will. And don't you go worrying your heads about us. Everything's going to be fine. Isn't it, David? Yes. Laters. See ya. Laters. <laughs> Who's he trying to impress? 
she's all right. Your brain's gone. You wiped out your long-term memory or what? Our Jodie brought you up, not her. Would you be slagging her off if she were a bloke? She wouldn't be our mum if she were a bloke. No, but like loads of families, dads just walk out and it's dead acceptable. Why should it be any different if it's a bird? Mothers are meant to nurture. Blokes are meant to leave. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but you are one sexist cow. Right, I have made an absolute boss party playlist. Seen your phone's been going mad. Oh, yeah. Um, I meant to say, David, there might be a few more people coming than you think. Well, how many? Ah, uh, not loads, but you know, I ask a mate, they ask another mate. No, we don't know. He's got no mate. <laughs> Before you know it, you get a house full. Yeah, well, I'm a free spirit. Oh. Talking of free spirits, do you mind if I get a top up? Mm. Help yourself, I made some punch in the kitchen. The kid. I know it's random, but you're not fuming at me, are you, David? No. Well, none of my mates are meths. He's fine with it. Mort met you. Right, shut up and listen to this. Education's overrated. I'm not the monster. <laughs> Whoa, she comes. Oh, she looks herself that way. Tag. <laughs> Hmm. David. What? Cool party. Where are all these people? Do you want to dance, David? Um, no. <laughs> what? You're making a move on my girlfriend. In my house. Okay. Matter, this is David. Of your information, David, if he was to make a move in either one of us, it would probably be you. You are joking, aren't you? I'm uh, sorry to be racist, mate, but I don't normally go for orange blokes. <laughs> that Rosie Webster really fancies herself, doesn't she? I'd love to swap bodies with her. I'd never go out. Just stay in and stare at myself all day. Later. You're sick, you. You've got a twisted man. So is there anyone near you fancy, Mel? No. Yeah? I fancy another baby. Anyone here you don't fancy, Dan? <laughs> Punch it well, Lee. Like. Oi, ten dollars. Get out of my way! Oh, oh you dirty bitch! Whose party is this? What's your problem? I'll tell you what yours is. Me. Uh, Mom, don't! Hey, you were listening to that! Uh, correction, you were listening to it, and now you're not. You can't do that! Get your hands off me! It's my property! Oh, sorry. You stupid cow. There's a sick husband next door! Yeah, and now you've just brought my iPod. Mom, please, can we just leave? All you had to do was ask politely. Yeah, and all you had to do was think. Do you want to give him another heart attack? Why don't you bring him round here? Maybe you could dance some of that fat off. And what's that supposed to be? The floor show? I think that's you, isn't it, Look, Mom? we just get out and we'll keep the noise down, OK? We don't want any trouble. Thanks. See? Man has got snout. Oh, please, we just go home. Yeah, why don't you get back to Jelly Roll Morton? <laughs> Cheeky little bitch. Mother! Go on, get home, Mum! Hey, Mum, she's a neighbour! Oh, is she now? I heard my Mum say I'm sorry. I hope you like sitting down, cos I'm going to put you in a flaming wheelchair. <laughs> I'll leave her. She was well out of order. <laughs> My bra's been digging into me all day. Stop! Which house is it? Stop me, you bad man! Where is it? Oh, you damn cow, she's a neighbour. She only lives there. Where is it? Mum, she's hit me. This cheeky cow needs to be taught a lesson. Get your hands off my daughter this instant. Oh, yeah? Gonna make me? Yeah, I am, actually. Oh, no. I call the police. Call who you like. She is a very rude young woman. And she dresses like a slut. Well, at least she's got fashion sense. Do you know what she called my husband? Who the hell is your husband? Jerry. Oh, Kevin, get her inside. Yeah. Get off your head. Do I call the police or what? Forget it. Don't you ever call my husband Jelly Roll Morton again, or I'll be calling the police for harassment. I don't know what you're talking about. Teresa, what's going on? Nothing. Get back inside. Mel, 
Mum, what are you thinking my dad's are? You lay one finger on my daughter again, you'll have me to answer to. <laughs> He's a very hard man, my husband. Oh, I'm shaking in my boots. Yeah, you should be. Why, what's he going to do? Sit on me? Oh, that was a bit below the belt. Oh, shut up, Claire. You vile piece of scum. Mum! All right, love, turn it down. Jeez, what's going on? Mum, get inside now, please. Don't think they can say what they like about us. Well, they can't. Do you hear me? You can't! Look, if all you lot want to make a movie, you won't see me complaining. David! Yo, I'm not standing for it, all right? Ted trusted us. David! Teresa, what is going on? Nothing! Through up. Remember? No. Oh, come on, let's, let's go back to bed. I can't. I've got work. Uh, flaming hell. Somebody's been stubbing the cigs out in the carpet. There's, there's holes. Flipping holes. Yellow. Oh, hi, Mum. No, no. Everything's fine. So is it your day off today, then? Yeah. They were mounting up, so I told them on, said I had to take some. It was either that or lose them. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but I wish your Liam would come back. <laughs> Not bad, is it? It's like working down the mines, only without the laughs. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, love. Have you managed your ride? Yeah, fine. <sighs> Thanks for dropping me off, Ted. Thanks for letting me stay. At least my eardrums are still functional. Oh. Which is more than can be said for yours, eh, Maria? Why? What's this? Nothing. I just had to shut the windows, that's all. You expect loud music from a party, don't you? Yeah. I'm brawling in the street. Not as bad as it looks. It couldn't be any worse. It could. I'll tell you, the parties that I've been to. <gasps> Just look at this place. And what's all this about the neighbours complaining? It was that mad woman from next door. Sally Webster. No, the other one. Married to the fat bloke. Scary eyes. What did I say when I went? Behave yourselves. We did. It was that stupid cow that didn't behave herself. She like broke the iPod and everything on purpose. Mind the glass. Oh. Right. If this place isn't spick and span by the end it of the day... It will be. No, I... Tina, listen. Absolutely, totally, back to the way it was. I'll give them a hand. Yes, you will. I mean, you're the one that said it was all going to be fine. Oh, dear. I shall come back after work to check things. Soz. Oh. Well, it's nothing that a bit of cleaning won't sort, I suppose. Actually. Oh. Right, well, I'm, I'm late for work, so... Hey, hang on. No. Thanks for helping. Ah. Oh. That's cheating. You said we've got all day to clean up. I said I'll be back after work. I didn't say whether it was afternoon or evening, did I? Don't be pedantic with me. You should stick to the rules. Oh, Ted, come on. This isn't a game. Anyway, where are the kids? I hope they're not leaving it all up to you. They're not. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Well, this isn't the Audrey Potter I know. I'm not Audrey Potter. I haven't been Audrey Potter for donkey's years. First time I saw you, you were up on a table doing the twist to Jailhouse Rock. Oh, well, I don't remember that. Well, you wouldn't. You were well out of it. All I'm saying is cut them a little slack. We've all been there, you included, even, even if it is hard to believe. 
and Harry's my handsome son. I'm over. Aww. You're me an iPad. Uh, I owe you a thick ear. But if you want to argue the point. Nah, you're all right. Anyway, I'm taking you out for lunch. My treat. Lunch? Why when we're up to his eyes in kebabs? So, if you work in a cake shop, you live on cakes, do you? True. Are you paying? Mm, I said I lost in top. In that case, you're on. Can manage here for an hour, can't you? Yeah, sure. And don't work in yourself. Lunch, didn't know you meant liquid lunch. How are you going? Back to work. Oh, come on. Come on, that's when you grow us, eh? Aww. You were always my favourite. Hey, do you remember that day I took you out to school? Told your teachers you had the dentist, and then we bought a lot of sweets and scoffed them all in the park. Oh, you don't remember, do you? Oh. We did have some nice times, you know. Bad. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh. Mm. Thanks. Hi, uh. Hi. You're on your own? Yep. Daryl's gone off for lunch with his mum. Should have been back hours ago. Did you, um, manage to get much clearing up done? Mm, no, not really. Well, I was trying to clean up that stain, you know, where Amber was sick. Only, I think I made it worse. But the good news is, Ted turned up and said he's going to sort it all. Go. Cool. Now for the uh, bad news. Guess who turned up with him? Oh, this is great. Thanks, Ted. Yeah. Oh, is, is that... Yeah, it's there to hide the cigarette burns. Genius. I haven't got a clue how to hide this, though. What happened? It's not my fault. How do you reckon your mother would feel if we redecorated? Stop me, Garan. Hey. Hey. Nice. Hiya. Cup of tea. I have to say, you've done a really good job. Well, actually... Yes, they have, haven't they? Oh, what's that doing there? Oh, it's uh, a thank you for Mum for when she gets back. Oh, that's nice. Mm. So are you not going to tell her, you know, about the party? Well, I suppose what the eye doesn't see, yeah. What about that cup of tea? Yeah, I'll make that. <clears throat> By the way, Ted, it wasn't jailhouse rock. It was all shook up. <coughs> What's all this? Look at the state of it. It's day off, isn't it? Oh, of course, no one bothers getting dressed on their day off. Oh, look at the state of this place. Don't worry, we'll tidy up before Gail gets back. It lands in half an hour, you know. You've got at least an hour's cleaning here. Yeah, and we've talked about that. I don't talk, just do it. It means there's no point going mad scrubbing the place. I want it to look nice for Gail. Right, we've been in our toilet for two weeks. She'll expect it to be a tip. If it was too clean, she'll be suspicious. She'll wonder what the catch is. And then when she takes one look at the walls... She'll be as chuffed as mint balls that we decorated. If somebody papered my living room while I was away, I think you were weird. She's right. 
She'll know something's wrong straight away. Not necessarily. She might just be glad to see it looking nice. And as for the plant? Which I can see you haven't watered. It sticks out like a sore thumb. It's a lovely plant. Its leaves just need spraying with a fine mist, though. Trouble is, you walk in the door and your eyes are, like, drawn straight to it. You think, well, look at that plant. So instead of hiding that burn, I reckon that we're just drawing attention to it. Well, have you got a better idea? Yeah. We need more plants. More? Well, just a couple, you know, like dotted around the place and that. Then when my mum notices them, she'll be like, ooh, look, plants. And we say... Yeah, we thought they'd cheer the place up a bit. We'll buy a little bit of oxygen and that while we're sleeping. So she'll be like, ooh, how lovely, how thoughtful. Well, she'll think, why have they turned the place into Kew Gardens? And where are we going to get more plants from? Garden centre on Brewerette Muse. Oh, and there's a stock clearance, quid each. I'll head down there after I get dressed. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I didn't expect a welcoming party. No, well, it's not. We live here. Oh, <laughs> oh ignore him. Did you have a nice time? I did. The <laughs> flight's all right. Oh, late and overcrowded. To call them low-cost airlines. By the time you paid for a sign in a bottle of water, you could have flown Concord. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> back. Oh, Mum. <laughs> Come on, let me see your time. I've got one. Kept out of the sun. Heat so oppressive. Come on, then. Let me get you kissing. Well, at least the house is still standing. <laughs> to be home. Oh, you're down on Titchmarshin while I've been away. We just thought a few plants would uh, cheer the place up, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah we did. And whose idea was it to redecorate? <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. Hey, back now, get your feet off the furniture. It's all right. Where was I? Sarah turning into an Italian. And she has. And she's picked up the language very quickly. Oh. Uh, she picked up any Italian men yet? <laughs> well, if she has, there's none she's prepared to tell me about. She works quite hard, actually. Well, that'll be a shock for her. She's still a single mum, so she can't go out every night. But I get the impression that the time she took off with me was the first holiday she'd had. Well, does our Stephen get out there very often? He phones her, but no. She wouldn't admit it, but... Uh, I think she's quite lonely, really. Oh, do you know, my eyes are stinging. Really? Oh, well, you'll be tired, love, after that journey. I think it's that. It might be one of these pot plants. I think I might be allergic. Well, no, we can't take that. We'll put them outside. Oh, no, I feel awful. They're lovely. No, no, it's all right. Oh. Uh, Mum, no, I'll do that one. Down. What's this? I took up smoking as well as botany while I was away. No way. I wouldn't smoke. But I know a lot that does. The thing is, Gail... No, Grandad, let's just fess up, all right? We had a party. What? More of a soiree, I would say. More like a rave. Anyhow, word got round and people turned up who wasn't invited and the neighbours went mental. I know, Mum, we shouldn't have done it. I'm really sorry. It was all my fault. And I'll pay for the carpet to be, um, repaired. How do you repair a carpet? What, are you chucking anyway, if you ask me? Well, then I'll get a new one, all right? I'll buy you a new one. But I'm not going to lie to you. Can I just say, I was against this party from the start, but I was overruled. Be quiet, and Audrey. And when they trashed the place, I was against covering it all up, but then I was overruled again. Well, I'm just very pleased David owned up. I hate this carpet anyway. Oh, good, cos I hate it as well. I think in many ways the kids have done you a favour. Well, I just wanted to know it was nothing to do with me. He was in charge, look what happened. Long, you little bird. Could have been a lot worse. A nice bit of seagrass is what you need. Or a wooden floor. Right. Who wants their prezzies? <laughs> <laughs> What's he done now? Oh, unofficial visit. I smell the chips from Rosman Street. Uh, I hope you don't turn up thinking you're taking over. Uh, just keeping a fatherly eye on you, son. You carry on. Have you got a minute? Uh, I'm rushed off my feet, can't you tell? Uh, somebody is. Your mum's going to be stopping on a bit longer. Whose idea is that? Yes, mostly. Well, you see, with you being away, I'm going to be stretched a bit, what with the kids and all this. Um, they all look like I'm struggling. 
Well, you will be. I'm knocking off in ten minutes. Well, I'll just scrub me holidays. Uh, get lost. Who will I go away with? Well, you could always go away with me, did he? No way am I taking my uniform on holiday. Look, love, I don't want you going the same way as our Jodie. Let your mother take a bit of responsibility for the change. It'll do her good. Uh, it's the arm she'll do to everyone else that's worrying me. Oh, come on, Mel. I mean, suppose I did have another term. You don't want the kids having to cope with that. Plus, I'm going to be slaving in here 27 hours a day. Was that slaving or sleeping? You know, it makes sense. Just while you're away. Come on, love. I mean, your mother's volunteered for something. The first time in her life. Come on. She's better than nobody, I suppose. And we both know how useless he is. Great, thanks. Love you too. Go on, man. Thanks, love. Mm. Oh. David has entered the building. How come you're back at this time? Oh, great. Aren't you supposed to say, David, what a pleasant surprise? Or how romantic it is you should rush on to see me in your dinner hour? Well, yeah, that, obviously. You know what Daryl said? To come round for a drink afterwards, if you fancy it. Yeah, great. So what, you on the email? Don't be so nosy, you. Oh, I've caught you. You're one of those nerdy little genius hackers, aren't you? Eh? Diverting missiles towards Washington. <laughs> Unless you get your hundred million dollars in your okay, bank account. You watch too many films, <laughs> that's your trouble. And genius, yeah. Nerder, I don't think so. Well, then maybe you're part of an international crime syndicate. <laughs> smuggling diamonds, eh? David! Well, if you are, can I have a couple? <laughs> <laughs> right. What have we got in the fridge? Oh, uh, your mum left some chicken salad. Excellent. You having some? No, I've had them fine, thanks. So who was it then? You what? Who was you emailing? I don't know, mates, why? I suppose that's all. Yeah. How much is lamb? And how much is fat? Well, I don't know, do I? There's obviously some sort of EU kebab directive somewhere. And how many do you think you've eaten in your life? What? About. Uh, have a guess. Oh. Hi, Gail. How was Sarah? Yeah, not bad. Nice to see them. Hope you're not going out drinking in your condition. Um, just the two halves. <laughs> well, as long as you keep taking the pills. I've got everything under control, thank you. I'm sure you have. Well, that's what she likes to tell everyone anyway. Well, someone's got to get a grip. I mean, left to your own devices, he either takes none at all or twice as many as he should. He damn near killed himself. Well, sure a double dose isn't going to kill anybody. Oh, and you know that, do you? I have a pretty good idea, yes, as it happens. Well, not straight off, anyhow. Still, if I've got women fighting over me in the streets at my age, I can't complain. Cheers, Gail. Thanks for asking. Sure you don't want one? Nah, what's your brain? So what's your excuse? Sorry, I'm late. Are we drinking already? Excellent. Right, music. I have either Fratelli's or Barry Manilow. Just kidding. <laughs> Just so long as it's loud. Uh, Arctic Monkeys. Oh, you would say that, wouldn't you? Left it in the house. Mm. Watch out. Work all right? Mm. Well, nobody's there fell out. You? Bit of this, bit of that. So, what took you so long? Oh, you know what I'm like when I start emailing, just rambling on. What, anybody in particular? Mm. Not really, just mates. Right then, volume up, windows open. Mates. I have got some, you know. <laughs> hey, where did you get to? I don't like snuggling up to a cold pillar. Oh, I woke up early and couldn't get back to sleep, so... You wake me up, man, will yeah, you? Yeah, all right, David, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. have a chat! <laughs> Sorry, I do apologise for my mother's dirty little mind. Oh, is that where you get yours from, then? So what you've been doing? Well, not the washing up, that's for sure. I just have to catch up on my emails. Anything interesting? Just the usual spam of bad jokes. Dabs your mental. I wonder why they call it spam. Don't know. Maybe it's because you fritter away your time reading them. All right, what did I just say about bad jokes? Come on then, let's have a look. Too late. Logged out. You're not missing much anyway. Where are you going? Um, just to meet some mates. Well, what do you fancy doing tonight? I don't know. I don't have time. I'll be back. Well, surely you can't be staying out all day. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. It's called having a life, David. <laughs> See you later. She's been on that internet since half past seven this morning, chuckling away to herself. Hope I'm not going to be landed with a big bill. You what? No. Don't worry, it's not pay as you go. Fine. Just as long as all this emailing's not going to cost us. Mm. Mm, higher and higher, baby. It's a living thing. It's a terrible thing to lose. Don't suppose you've got a little bit more content there. What, you're saying that sandwich isn't fresh? Tune wine. <laughs> Listen to me, my friend. ELO will always be contemporary. Never heard of them. And they wonder why society is going down the pan. They're contemporary, yeah, because the songs are, are timeless. Because they go on forever. Because they've got a lot to say, yeah? They've lived life. I mean, these guys talk about the big themes, you know, love, loss, loneliness. So the new bands. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. The nearest they know to pain is cutting themselves shaving. Well, them that need to shave. You need to listen to some Arctic Monkeys later this way. Arctic Monkeys? I mean, what does that even mean? About as much as PLO does. It's E-L-O, yeah? Electric Light... Oh, oh what's that point? What's up with him? Yeah, 1979. Yeah, I wish it was. Eh? Well, if it were 1979, then there'd be no flaming internet, would there? I can't believe you're wishing away the World Wide Web. It's like the nearest thing I have to a life right now. Tina started sending emails, yeah? Emails that are all that she doesn't want me to see. How dare she have friends online? It's just not natural, is it? Look, she's up to something, I'm telling you. Look, whenever I go near her, she just logs off straight away. Well, if it's bothering you that much, why don't you hack into her account and read these little secret emails? Nah, I couldn't do that. But she'd never forgive me for what? I know she wouldn't. So stop being so paranoid and just let it go. For your own good. Don't want the neighbours complaining. You mean the same neighbours that drove you mad last summer with their noise? Ah, well, things have changed since then. You been in all day? Yeah. No word from Tina? Well, after yesterday, I never went away from her again. You didn't think of going to the job centre? I thought about it, yeah, but about five seconds. See, the first question they ask you is, why did you leave your last job? And soon as though I was sacked from me last two. Well, it didn't stop you finding one after your grand let you go. What, fake reference? Can't keep using that old one, can I? Hello there. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just hang on. Um, I'll um, I'll just take this in the uh, garden and uh, let you listen to your music. Honestly, I've not felt this guilty since I was fourteen. Sneaking out to meet a lad called Nick Oliver. And my mum had banned him from the house with very good reason. <laughs> Last night. Probably the best time I've had in years. I'd love to do it again. Uh, hang on. David's turned his music off. <laughs> Stop it. If he comes out, I'll have to look serious. Uh, I'm just going out for a bit. Yeah, fine. Are you alright? No, yeah, fine. Just um, talking to someone I haven't spoken to for a long time. That's all. Right, right, I'll see you later then. See you. Did you hear that? Honest, all these close shaves. Not sure my blood pressure's up. You all right? Nope. I've got this stalker. The keys and sending me texts and making phone calls. I don't go out in case there's air waiting. Well, you tell Aunt Mel. She can arrest him. Then they can stick him back in jail and you can go visit him again. Oh, so you do know who I'm on about then? Tina, it's you always on about. Oh. Uh, well, I won't say another word about him. What do you want me to do? Don't not get a stalk then. What do you call this? Somebody who ain't got a job to go to. Because you got him sacked. You alright, Dev? You alright, Daryl? 
All right, look. I've still got the Leeds Fest tickets, right? I've paid for them. Don't want to waste them, so do you want to come with me? I told you. I know, we're not going out anymore, that's fine, but it doesn't mean that we can't go to the gig together. Just in my book. Alright, fine. You know what? You're stupid. Why? Because I wonder what you want. No, because you won't do what you want. Fine though, whatever, doesn't matter, just don't say I didn't ask you. Oh, oh you've asked alright, I just wish you'd stop! He's not going to find it easy finding another job. Especially when he has to tell him that he's been in Nick. It's not my problem. No, uh, oh. but it is one that you gave him when you lost him the job that he did have. I just think, you know, he wasn't very clever. Maybe not. So don't you think you should apologise? Oh! Look at her! Oh, thank you. Oh, David. Oh, it would be wonderful. You are. So, go on, take her! See if I care! Just thought I'd let you know. If you wanted to change your mind, tough. Ticket's gone. I think I guessed that after the performance you put on earlier. Sorry. No need to be. Let's be honest. If it were to change your mind, you go over there and grab them off that like a shot. You think? Yeah, I do, yeah. Well, since I'm not going to, you're going to be stuck with her. Well, have a lousy time. What, you mean a worse time than what I would have had if you were there? I don't think so. Why do you bother? Both beating each other up when I can tell you're still crazy about him. Well, what makes you think that? Should have seen your face when you were giving Amber that ticket. You were hating every minute well, of shut it. Shut up. All I'm saying. I is... said shut up. I wish you'd shut up. You could have jibbed work, you know. It's not like you're on a career path. Oi. Some people clang up the greasy pole, and others just slice meat off it. We have to keep changing the spec though, because of these seven foot freaks in there. They won't stop yakking, would they? Couldn't see a thing at one point. Bummer. Gonna try to get him VIP tent, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I would have liked to have seen that. Oh, you wouldn't, you know. No. <laughs> Muscle Mary on the door wasn't really buying any of it. I said, hi there, Otis Broadbent A and R, up from London. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll do flirting. Oh no. What if she leaves a totally gorgeous husband and wants to run away with you? Never say never, Tina. Never say never. <laughs> And the Ashton Kutcher in this equation. There is no equation. <laughs> oh, loss. <laughs> oh, and I saw David out in case you're wondering. No, not really. He thinks he can get me jealous over some sad schooler whose dad wants us to be home by seven o'clock. It'd be he... right on the money. You look worse than yesterday. <sighs> Thought a constitutional might book me up. Mm. I still think you should see the doctor. It's a bank holiday. There'll be a few on call, covering the area. Yeah, I don't know. Whenever I feel the need, Teresa can sort it. You two back together? You're trying to give me permanent heart failure. <laughs> that doesn't answer me question. She's shipping out tonight. Well, Amel's due back off her jollies. Clash of the Titans, eh? You said it. Mind you, I've got to hand it to her, though. She's has been amazing. She's played a blinder with the kids. And with you as well, by the sounds of it. Uh, nah, she doesn't want to nurse her ex. I'd like to have a bit of fun. Greetings, minimum wages. Greetings, dull scum. <laughs> Do we qualify for free chips? No. Spooky. My lips didn't even move. Friends got talent, mate. Yeah, but you want, mate. You're right. My dad has always got me wiping down the shop. Drives me nuts. Yeah. Come on. One bag of chips. One poxy bag. Dave, yeah. no spells. Go on then. <laughs> Here, can we go at shed? Mm. Whatever. But uh, you might want to stick the trainers outside. Like oh, it's going to be a run. Give us a chip. I don't think I heard a please. Give us a chip, green ah, 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 All right, all right. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Ah, that nice. Pretty good. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. Good day at the office, dear. Well, 
profit margins went pear, but I think I'm across it. Good <laughs> Ooh. It's all tidy and audible in here. <laughs> oh, oh, home sweet home. <clears throat> well, mum used to be a right pig. Now she's like Mrs. Mop 24 7. Why well, come you knocked off early? Well, Tina said she'd hope fought for a bit, so. Very noble. Mmm. It's boiling in here, dude. Shall I get some more? Are you sure? Like that wasn't the biggest hint ever. <laughs> <laughs> Change the top. So? And she's put some slap on. Has she? Look, stringing her along just to get back at Tina. It's dead tight now. Hmm. Working, love. Are we going somewhere posh for lunch? Because if we are, I'll put my new top on. <laughs> Joe McIntyre! My boob tube days are well and truly over, thank heavens. Let's go. See you soon. Bye. Morning. Um, hopping into town later, a few bits and bobs. Oh, yeah, could you get us some shaving gel? If I remember. And then write it on your hand. Uh, I am a woman of a certain age. I'm not scrawling things all over my hand. What are you doing today? Same old, same old. Well, your bedroom could do with a good going over. Been months since I've seen a duster. Hmm. And there's a few odd jobs need doing. There's a nasty stain on the landing carpet needs a good scrub. And there's some uh, grouting needs doing in the bathroom. Yeah, I'll just build you a conservatory while I'm at it. I look forward to it. See you later. Hmm. Oh. oh, good morning, girl. Anything interesting? Well, there's someone here wanting to buy old tin baths and ceramic bedpans. The mind boggles. They put plants in them. They look quite pretty. Bedpans in the garden. <laughs> I've heard it all now. As long as they give him a good scrub first. Mm. All right. Hi. Amber, what are you doing at dinner? Oh, big question. Shall I have a sausage roll or go completely mental and treat myself to a pack of Eccles cake? Eccles cakes, that's all the ladies' food, isn't it? You used to call them dead fly pies at school. Sausage roll it is then. Well, I'll tell you what, I do fancy coming round to mine. I'll get us a butter, stick on a DVD or something. Yeah, who else is going? Well, no one, just me and you. Uh, I don't think Tina would be too impressed, would she? Look, me and Tina are a history, try and keep up there. Don't you have to go and rearrange the baked beans or something, you know? <clears throat> right then, Um, what time do you want me? Uh, well, I've got some things to do first, so I'll come round later, give you a shout. OK, great. All right, cool. All right. You're easily <sighs> pleased, aren't you? Oh, I'll have to go home and get changed. You're joking. Butty in a DVD at his house at dinner time. Not exactly a date, is it? Just me and him. Together. <sighs> That's so is a date. A woman this morning gave me a £20 note for a box of matches, I ask you. Very inconsiderate. Uh, and then Deirdre comes in, 100 grams of mint imperials and a sherbet dip. Only wanted to pay by cheque, if you please. Right, three fives and the rest in change. Oh, thanks, that'll do very nicely. Oh, say, somebody's looking at Bobby Dazzler today. Uh, going somewhere special? Just thought I'd make a bit of an effort for once. Oh, well, it does your credit, love. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for the change. Blimey. You brush up well. Ta. <laughs> um, should I get some food, crisps and that? Some ginger nut biscuits there, past the sell-by date. Uh, no, you're all right, thanks. Wouldn't mind a kebab, though. All right, calf, my treat. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I am a total disgrace. Hot bird like that living opposite her, I didn't even realise. Is she buff or what? Stop drooling, Daryl, you're making a holy show of yourself. Yeah, but she's so, like, smooth and shiny. Nice. They'll have you back in, you've got a record. What for? Lightroom with intent of watching DVDs? 
Pushing alcohol to kids. Your bird's a kid. Yeah. And this is an 18. OK, one, she's 17, same as you. And two, she's not my bird. If there was a crime for being a sad liar and a jealous loser, you'd get life. Come on. Admit why you really came round. To tell you to quit this stupid performance. Walking past the shop and suddenly all over her. Even Daryl said how obvious you were. What's it bothered you? What bothers me is people looking at me and going, what's wrong with her head's going out of the pathetic idiot like him? Mel, get off the back. I'm not going in there. Why don't you just ignore me, Mum? I do. Yeah, and don't I know it? Look, Tina. Oh, stop stalking me, freak. Oi. Oh, and don't you start, OK? It was my break. I'm saying oi, because in the shop is locked. Now, you're going to get over yourself. Oh, being a drama queen, am I? It's all right for you, innit? You lived your whole life with your flaming headphones on. Well, maybe you should have tried it. <laughs> all right. And who'd have looked after Kaylee then when she was sobbing her heart out? Who'd have gone and checked that Dad was all right after Mum had quit shouting and stormed off? Mel, we're not kids anymore. No, but Kaylee is. And I'm not doing that again. I'm not going in there to be called a sulker and a gal because I won't ignore what she did. Well, for me dad, then. <laughs> and what about the fights, the affairs hurting him? You actually think she's not going to do that again? Look, if my dad wants to pretend that that never happened, then that is his stupid lookout. So you just keep my bag, Daryl, because I'm going anyway. Uh, I'm on a fitness regime. Uh, we've got some shredded lettuce. Oh, I had a salad for my dinner. Now I'm hungry again. What do you need a fitness regime for? You look fit for me, huh? Come back to mine, eh? How about a donner and I'll hide the meat under the lettuce? Calories you can't see, don't count. Bargain. All right, I'm jealous. There, I've said it. I was only after something to eat, mate. Oh, ignore him. I'm working, David. If it's not written on them boards, I'm not interested. Then I'll write it on them boards. Er, uh, staff only. Tina, I'm admitting it, all right? I get jealous. Mad jealous. Just please think about why. Because you're a psycho possessive control freak. Because I can't bear the thought of losing you. All right? Because every time I look at you, I think, why did you ever want to be with me? Because I'm sure every other human being on the planet wants to be with you. Would you like some chilli sauce and a fresh chilli? Aye, go on then. Mate, if I didn't care so much for you. Don't ask one if you don't want one. I do. <laughs> Tina, I love you. All right? I can't imagine my life without you being in it. I'm always finding them out there. I'm being honest, all right? You could be an all. All right, tell me the truth. Do you not want to get back together with me? No. What's to do? Jerry, I asked if I could do out, but that tree's one bit me head off. Do you follow on? I'm coming with him. Don't be so selfish, Daryl. You've got a car. And keep those ghoulish rubberneck neighbours out of our faces. Are you OK, mate? What's happened? Me dad. <laughs> Don't want to be spotted. It's like we're a couple of teenagers. Aye, without the acne. <laughs> or roller coaster emotion. Oh, I don't know. Do you think they'll sort themselves out? Our real teenagers? Couldn't call it. Once our Tina's fell out with someone. David's very taken with her. Do you think that'd change if you saw his mum sneaking around with her dad? It was only lunch, wasn't it? I'll text you. Really is like being a teenager. What? That face. I have no idea what you're talking about. You back to work this afternoon? Afternoon off. Oh, quick drink. You can go walk to bed. Tina's dad, will it? I'm the seat at the bus stop. Unbelievable. When I walk back from the kebab shop at night, I count how many have been chucked. Do you? Yeah, it's like magpies. You know, one for sorrow, two for joy. You know how many I saw just now? Go on. Six. Six? That's... Well, that's six for gold. Nope. According to my mum, the one that goes up to seven's a cheat. 
They had to change it for some old TV programme. The real one goes up to ten. Yeah? Mm. My mum's dead superstitious. Well, what's six in hers, then? OK. One for Sarah, two for Joy, three for a letter. Not a girl? Four for a boy, five for a wish, six for a kiss. Your mum was going out with your girlfriend's dad. I mean, boyfriend's mum. My mum was going out with my boyfriend's mum. I mean, dad. You know what I mean, you'd hate it. Somehow, if they're your ex, then it's not so much of a stress. But you're not allowed to think that. David loves Tina. I want what's best for him. And you're going to sacrifice what you've got? We haven't got anything. What you might get with Joe. Yes. Then let's secretly, very secretly, know that if they stay split up, that may not be so bad. So silver lining on a dark cloud. Sit down, yeah, I'll get the drinks. If it means I'm finally forgiven. Well, I'm not promising anything. I'll wear you down, McIntyre. Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, what's after six? You know, your superstitious chilies. Five for a wish, six for a kiss. Seven for something better than this. Eight for silver, nine for gold, ten for a secret, never to be told. Something better than this, eh? I fancy that one. Except I lied about having six in the first place. Oh. Oh, why would you do that, eh? Cup of tea? <coughs> Hi, Gail. Ted. Uh, this doesn't feel like an argument to me. Good. Good. So are you staying in? Oh, no, no, we're not. No, no, oh, no, we don't, no, we, we, no just... we don't want to disturb you, no. no. Right, well, uh, see you later then. <laughs> Bye. I'm pleased for them. You just go to Deb's for a bottle of milk. Cause she likes the froth. Mum, do you think Jerry will be all right? I don't know, love. I mean, if he's still unconscious. Well, when my granddad had a crash, they kept him sedated for a week. They do that so they can mend while they sleep. Well, there you are then. Would you sit by my bed if I were in a coma? Yeah. Till I've had heat covered to cover and eaten all your chocolates. Is this the start of a whole new David and Tina? What do you mean? Are you thinking of moving back in again? See, I'm not the only one asking. No, uh, I'm not asking. I was just, you know, wondering. I'm OK at my dad's for now, aren't I? I mean, I can stay here like I did last night and you can stay at ours. Yeah, but it would be a lot easier if you wanted to. Well, I thought we were OK, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are, but would be all right. Right then, I mean, if it's working, why rush it? Quite right. Mm. And it's lovely to see you so happy. Right, that's me. I'm off. See ya. Just met Jerry's wife. Funny woman. How is her? He's regained consciousness, so you and David can stop worrying about Daryl. Just on my way back to work, so I thought I'd check see you're okay on your own. Yeah, God, no one nagging at me. Have you had a break at all? Uh, no, but I don't want one. You know when you're asking me about moving back in? I just wondered, it's not a problem. No, I know, but I didn't want a sound. I did like staying at yours. I know you did. It's really fun. And anyway, I want to be home for Dad. Keep my eye on him. Not for? I know the signs, see? He's got a woman. You think so? It's never the same him and me when somebody else. I end up hating her in the split. He says he don't blame me, but I reckon he does. I just wish I could be glad for him. Hiya, what can I get you? I'll, uh, leave you to you. Jo. Hi. No, I'm, I'm fine. Um, are you doing anything? I think we need to talk. Um, no, no, 
Oh, so I'll resign. Then neither of us will have a job. Is that what you want? Yeah. Well, I'm not doing it. Oh, he's not, because I'm working tonight. No, again. You're working again tonight. Can't help that. There you go, last one. Oh, it's the lucky one. Thank you, my dear. Have you looked for jobs in last night's paper? No, he hasn't. There's no point. All they want is the same every night. Chefs or telephone salespeople. What about, and I'm sure someone will tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. Go on. Going to college and getting some qualifications. Sounds like a good idea to me. Well, you do it then. He yeah, hated school. Hello. Did he? Me. And who's me? Saru. Is that Sarah? No need to be offensive, you know. I can always just hang up. No, you don't. Give it here. Hello, look. How are you? Ah, oh, great. He hasn't even opened up. Do you enjoy working here? Well, it's work, isn't it? You're not supposed to enjoy it, are you? Morning. Oh, hi, Daryl. But work can be enjoyable, you know. The only people that say that are them that don't have to do it. Oh, well, probably. See Bye. ya. Yeah, pick your letters up. Yeah, but most of them are for us. They're flat upstairs. It's just easy for the postman to put through our letterbox. There's one here for Miss R. Webster. Rosie Webster, oh, it's... Mm. It's weird. I've never one of her before. So what are you going to do with it? Oh. Hello. Oh, I love... Oh, this door, do you know, I'm going to have to get it fixed, otherwise nobody will be able to get in or out. Talking to your granddaughter this morning. Sarah, how is she? She's fine. But for the first time, she was talking about coming home. No. Said she was thinking about it, and uh, what did I think? Well, I hope you thought it would be wonderful. Well, yeah, it would be, if that's what she wants. Anyway, um, that's just between you and me, okay? And she probably changed her mind next time she rings. Hiya. What are you doing here? Found myself in the area, I had this fantastic idea. Why don't I have one of your famous kebabs for lunch? Only now I'm here. You're having one and you like it. Um, a special donna for my dad, please, Daryl. Right. Actually, it's perfect time in this. Couldn't be better. You're short of money. No. But David, my David, he's um he's short of a job. So why couldn't he work for you? Cos I'm a one-man show. I, I don't employ anybody else. Not now you don't, but you could. Oh, and you'd be doing me such a big favour. He's dead miserable without a job. And his mum will be pleasing all. Let me think about it. No. Oh, yeah. Didn't know you were a regular in here. Oh, I thought I'd give it a try. So, what do you think? Oh, do you want to hit Daryl's feelings? No, no, it was, um, it was good. I, uh, I enjoyed it. Thanks, Daryl. So, you don't want to hurt Daryl's feelings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still looking for a job. Hi, Dad. Yeah, me and most of the royal family. Huh. Yeah. Before you say anything, I am still thinking. Right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, I've got to get going. So there's a chance? Oh, there's always a chance. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Oh, bye, David. Yeah, see ya. Well, I'll have a look for it when I go home. All right, now. Now. I'll have a look for it now. All right, I'll leave you straight back. Yes. All right, bye. Can you believe that? Still bossing me about, even when he's in Spain. Will you go on and check if you can find Achilles' immunisation certificate? Because he thinks he forgot it. And later won't do. It's going to be right now. This second. Snake is a kebab, will you, before he gets back? Hey. Bin me off. It's no fun, is it, going out of an ex-jailbird who can't get a job? <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought I'd nip down to Old Trafford this afternoon, pick up a football or two. Yeah, you could, though, looking like you do. Ah, oh. But they'd never say out sweet like that, would they? So, maybe I won't bother. Hey, any news on Rosie? Yeah. She's a thieving scumbag who's done a run-up with 25 grand of the lottery winnings from the factory. What? Rosie, seriously? Ask the police. Makes everything you've done look a bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm no longer the baddest kid on the street, then. Respect to Rosie. Gail. Oh. 
Is he right what Audrey said? The sir might be coming back. I told her in confidence. Is it then? It's possible. Why? Not that it's any of your business, but she's been seeing someone and it's not worked out. Serious? Well, you've hardly let the grass grow, Jason. So she means that she might be coming back? Look, I really don't think she'd want me talking to you about it. Right. When you do talk to her, we tell us asking after her, eh? Could strangle me mother sometimes. At least Jason's got too much going on to notice me and you together. Might be no bad thing if he did. Not having to sneak around. We're like dodgems the number of times we bump into each other. I just don't want David and Tina to find out yet. You're that ashamed of me. I'd just rather wait until David's got a job. Give him something to focus on. And then I don't think they care if we're down snake it down the street. So if he gets a job, I can show me Fandango to your neighbours. If he gets a job, I'll show them mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> there you go. Kebab. No, Ta. Do you know where your mother is? Oh, when people ask that, she usually owes them money. Do you? Don't know, don't care. Why? Well, I've just seen her in the precinct, drunk. Oh. Is that it? Oh. This is your mother we're talking about. The worst thing you can say about your dad is he's a bit cheesy. My mum, where do I start? Well, I'll take over here if you want to go see her. You know in them horror films where there's an escaped loony on a rampage and a group of kids in an house and one of them goes, oh, there's something in the cellar. And they have to investigate. Well, for cellar, think precinct. All time lowest before I even thought about asking Daryl for a job. And I'm going round there later. It's not that bad. Look who's here. We, uh, we just bumped into each other. Like dodgems. Are you skiving? Yeah, working for yourself takes all the fun out of it. Any luck on the job front? Nah. I've ruled out the police and been an airline pilot. How about working for me? What? Fit in kitchens? Well, don't make it sound so bad. No, no, I mean... Yeah. Fitting, designing, selling, interesting work, varied. Well paid. Don't push it. Are you practical? Well, I'm a fast learner. Well, in that case, a three-month trial should be plenty. You want time to think about it? No. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how to thank you. Take dancing lessons. What is he on about? Nothing. Start Monday. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Reckon that's it for lunchtime? So? Your mother, remember? Amber, the woman is a nightmare. I don't even know what she's still doing round here, any road. You're all she's got. Oh, thanks. I feel so much better. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Daryl! All right. I'll wait till we close, and then I'll go see if she's still there. But there's still time for one or two more customers, yeah? A couple of donors is more important than your own mum. <laughs> a couple? One's more important. Okay. I've only had a decent bedroom for like five minutes and now Miss Mullan wants it back. That's tight, is that? I mean, she's the one who left. Yeah. My mum's all, we'll be reasonable, David. Sarah and Bethany will need a double bed. What about you and Tina? Well, we've to bunch up in a single, haven't we? We'll probably get curvature at spine. I won't mind, you know, it's just... Well, Bethany will only end up being in with my mum, so then Sarah and Jason will be larging it up in a king size. On bottom of the food chain, I'm telling you. You really know how I am. Years of servitude for my James. Sorry, but why are you getting tied up for my dad? You fit in a kitchen. Well, yeah, it's no ordinary kitchen, though. It's the Windasses, and they're a really big client. Besides, you said make a big impression. I did? Yeah. 
Tell me you didn't use those words. Every syllable. No way. That's so old for me. No offence. None taken. You look rather delicious. You must be contagious. Well, David's all spruced up for his big day with his new employer. What's your excuse, eh? You're the lucky fella. Oh, it's Dad. I beg your pardon. He's at the door. I'll let him in. Saved by the bell. Hello, Hiya. You all right? Yeah. Morning. Morning. You all set? Uh, yeah, just give us a sec. I'll give him a final pet talk. He's, um, trying to make a good impression. Well, for me, <laughs> you're joking. You must have that effect on folk. You don't just blank out like you usually do. And don't touch any of my dad's precious tools, okay? They're his babies. And as for you, don't be boring David about the type of granite and marble. He's too polite to say put a sock in it. And don't be singing whilst driving. It means I have to live with this. Try 17 years. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> I think that's our cue to leave, kiddo. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. Bye. Bye, good luck. Excuse me a minute, love. Could I just have a quick word? Oh, whatever it is, I haven't done it. Oh, no, nothing like that. In fact, I wanted to make you a proposition. OK. Well, you see, my colleague, Norris, he did his back a minor injury recently. Is he that relic with the attitude? <laughs> Do you know, I couldn't have described him better myself. Look, if you want me to go over and read to him, I'm oh, sorry. No, Don't perish think. the thought. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. OK. What's his proposition, then? Well, I wanted to offer you a job. In the cabin? Yes. Me and you? For the time being. I'll go £1.50 over whatever Jerry was paying you, and you can have all the magazines you can read. Now, I can't say fairer than that. When do I start, boss? I could just see you in 40 years' time. Air up in a beehive, still behind that counter, dispensing sherbet crystals. Yeah, I shall have a little helper in glasses and cardigan. Yes, wittering in her ear all day. <laughs> yeah, nice one. <laughs> you can laugh, it'll be you. Don't they make you proud? What are you still doing here? Well, they dropped me off earlier and I haven't been able to shake him. He's staying for supper. Supper? Supper. Supper? Supper? Supper. Do you know I teach you to drive myself if I could? Left at the lights and straight on at the canal. You should have your own sitcom. I wish life was like a sitcom. Can laughter and people clapping when you walk in the room. There's an intensive school of driving near my house in London. A week of lessons after which you take your test. It's called the Deep End School of Driving. How appropriate. In exchange for the bit of DIY, I'll pay. I'll give you the week of work. No, it'll be worth it. We can share the driving. You know, I've always wanted to drive a transit van, so I could have tabloids on the dashboard and tabs behind our ears. Mm. And you come out the page three girls out of ten. Uh, that's not to be encouraged. Yeah. Keela Hazel, ten. Maybe we should go around Wambers, you know, check it out. Well, Daryl's round there. Well, even better, ruin it for them. <laughs> you nasty beggar. <laughs> Are they in action now? You haven't read the Society columns. Oh, I did. The Mortons and the Allahans. I said to be quite thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of relegating this to a bed shirt. No, don't do that. Do you think it's still got legs? Well, I think there's a few minutes left in it, yeah. So, shall you and me do some kissing? Shall I say? <laughs> Amber, it's David. Oh, oh this is really curious. How would you like it? I mean, this is Detective Inspector Platt. <laughs> I want to speak to a Mr. Daryl Morton in connection with the theft of a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Amber, it's DT. Are we getting a look at this new pad of yours? I'll tell you, I take my hat off to your dad. This isn't just a bachelor pad, it's the bachelor pad. All he needs is a Globe tarantulas to complete the look. Hey, where's Tantalus, dummy? Still don't know what it is. Oh, it's a drinks holder. Oh, talking a witch. 
Time for a refill. Do you mind if I help myself? I'll be my guest. Yeah, I'll grab one and all. Check out that kitchen. We should check out door. They're doing it on purpose. They're never going to go. Well, then it's up to us to get rid of them. And I've got a plan. No, it'd be great to live somewhere like this. I love this kitchen. OK, you're freaking me out. Am I going to find one of my dad's brochures under your bed? No. It's bathrooms that do it for me, anyway. What does it for you, Mum? Like I'd know. Have you noticed how cosy you and my dad are getting? Nah. Nah, look, we're going out, all right? So they wouldn't want to get it together. Hope you're right. But a lot weirder things have happened in families. A lot weirder. I quite fancy a movie. Yeah, it's just some of these Bollywood ones that are tend to go on forever. I'm in no hurry. Oh, this sounds a good one. A sprawling saga of forbidden love and thwarted ambition among the Mughal emperors spanning three centuries. Yeah, might be just a bit too long, though. Nah. It's only two and a half hours. Oh. Where's your DVD? It's Dad. Hello? What now? I thought you were going to a club. All right, can't stand the pace. Well, I'll see you in a minute, then. He's on his way back. He'll have to leave. We've not done anything wrong. Well, except sup all his ale. He'll go ape. Please, you have to leave. Mm. Uh, you come in. Nah, go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll want to cramp your style. All right, bye. See ya. <laughs> Worked a tree. Of course it did. You know, there's one thing you learn from Bollywood. It's that true love always triumphs in the end. Yeah. What's wrong? <sighs> Sorry, I can't get into it now. They've spoiled the mood. Well, I'm still up for it. Yeah, you don't have to tell me. But it's different for girls. Well, I'll not dim a switch down a bit, put some music on. Should do a trick. If I wanted to snog my dad, yeah. Well, we'd be letting him win if they'd spoil his night. Well, there'll be other nights. What, there? Yeah, of course. I don't think I'm just going to knock it on head because you're not putting out. I'm not that kind of bloke. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like it as much as next guy. More, probably. But that's not why I'm weird. I mean, we can wait as long as you want. Oh, it's all right. You don't have to wait. If you want, no, I'll no, just... no. It's got to be right. I don't deserve you. Who does? I know. I know. He's absolutely gorgeous. Who's absolutely gorgeous? Oh, you're home. Oh, right. I've got to go. Yeah, Dave is back from the smoke. <laughs> all right. Talk to you later. <laughs> The parallel parker of old London town. Uh, hold on. A, who is absolutely gorgeous. B, who with that you were chatting to. And C, what's with the smoke? Okay. That was my mate Cheryl, which I think was B. Mm. And we'll talk about our other mate's new boyfriend. And what was the last one? The smoke. Oh, I was just trying to sound cool for Cheryl's sake. <laughs> Do you fancy this lad? It was an objective opinion. Now, are we going to argue about it? Are you going to come over here and kiss me? I'll take a kiss. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> That's a passing your driving test. <laughs> Twice to welcome your own. <laughs> and then three times for a laugh. <laughs> now, first things first, what's a Ted's house like? I know, yeah. She's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, no, just messing about. Right, I'll see you anon. No, I don't know what it means either, I just heard my granddad say it. Yeah, that's right, the gay one. <laughs> All right, let us buy. Who are that? Remember Graham? Graham, Graham? No, just Graham. What does he want? He's told his way out, detention centre. Oh, shut up. No, nah, he's got released and just wondered what we're up to. I'll stay clear from that lunatic if I were you. It's coming around in a bit. Oh. And what are you doing till then? Well, I thought I might keep you company. Define company. The cross from garage. Doors open. Oh no, but don't come in, Tina's naked. 
Hey, how's my boy? Hey, boy. <laughs> Tina? I don't think so. Oh, she doesn't know it. What, you didn't tease you to her? No, I was a bad pupil. <coughs> so, when did you get out? Uh, yesterday, uh, but I had a massive row with my big fat man. <laughs> so I thought I could keep on you so far, so good. Uh, I'll have a word with Gail, yeah, but she should be cool in the gang. So, uh, this car you want to borrow? Yeah, uh, I've got 300 quid, right, to put towards it. But I'm undecided what to go for, though. Yeah, I can get you a car for 300 big ones. Do you want allies? David, don't get into this. By the way, uh, you got dressed pretty fast, didn't you? Or was that just a joke? No, it's true. I really was naked. Uh, David's not in. I could just wait, pass the time, make the most of having the house to ourselves. <laughs> you don't miss a chance, do you? Nope. And what if David or Tina walked in? Seeing us together could traumatise him for life. What about me being traumatised? My girlfriend pushing me away like this. Girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> it's a long time since I've been a girlfriend. Exactly. <laughs> you ought to behave like a teenager more often. Do you good? Hmm. Do us both good. Really? David's out and about somewhere and Tina's only in the cabin. Either of could walk in. You said you didn't want him to find out about us until David got a job, so I gave him a job, and now you still don't want him to know. Well, maybe I like keeping you and me a secret. Gail, we have nothing to be ashamed of. Even so, I probably think either of us having a love life's a bit icky. <sighs> Can you imagine them catching us having one together? <laughs> OK, OK. You win, I lose. <laughs> you give up too easily. Did I mention that I might want some wardrobes fitting in my bedroom? Uh, uh, should we take a look? Why not? Where are you then? Right here. I can't believe what he did to you. Class it or what? Take it back! Why? Where'd you nick it? Scary combination. Looks like your girlfriend, sounds like your mother. Are you telling me you don't want to drive around in this? No, you'd be arrested after five minutes. Why? Would you rather sleep with him or me? Oh, I bet you're talking to him. Because if you go off in that car, you two will be sharing a cell again before you can say, this time my girlfriend won't wait for me because I'm a stupid pillock. Oh, when you put it like that. Hey, it'll be difficult to take it back. Garage. Seems like a plan. You've not even asked what he's done with your money. <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't see your van. Yeah, I, I, uh, I went to the cafe, had a cup of then just walked down. You know why I pay for them when you can get them down here for free? Just what your mum said. Oh, this is uh, Graham, by the way. Uh, I think we've met, but I can't think where. Let me out, I'm innocent. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> you know, once there'd have been some shame about having been locked up. Reformed character. He's doing all right for himself, though. He's got a belt in motor. We just uh, stuck it in the garage while he stays over. Stays? See, I said she wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, I'll just make us a coffee. All, all the time, David was enjoying Her Majesty's pleasure. He never stopped going on about how much he missed his mum. What a star you were. Top girlfriend, top mum. Top man. Whilst I have no objection in principle to Graham staying here, I would have liked to have been asked first. 
sorry. Do I get to be told how long he's staying? Just a couple of days, Mum. You'll hardly notice him. I'd better not. You up for an early start in the morning? Joe, don't ask him. Tell him. You are the boss. I like to keep everyone happy. You do? I'm sure. Anything special? Uh, the Windesk kitchen, another problem. You are joking, it's perfect. Apparently the customer's always right, and as they're not paying me until they're happy, half eight. Yeah, see you then. So, Mrs. Platt, you made your mind up about the wardrobes yet? Um, I'm still undecided, Mr. McIntyre. I'll, um, I'll come back another day. Talk you through my ideas again. Is he ready? It shouldn't be too long. Just time to say good morning to his mother then, eh? Mm. Mm. Could be down any minute. Ah, uh, we'll hear him a mile off. And Tina and Graham are up there as well. Then how about I come back later? When? Dinner time. It's your afternoon off, isn't it, Wednesday? You're working, aren't you? We'll be finished by one. I thought you had some troublesome clients to deal with. The wind asses. Be somewhere to note, won't take long. Well, if you want to ask me out for lunch, I could have my arm twisted. Morning. You okay? All ready for the freight? Yeah, ready as I'll ever be. Good. Well, that's the wind asses sorted. Get some money in now, any luck. So do you often swing an afternoon off work then? It's called the prerogative of the self-employed. Fancy a quick pint? Love one. On your 18th birthday. Anyway, I have things to do. All right. Oh, and Joe, don't leave her waiting on my account. Cheeky. So, there was nothing wrong with his kitchen, then? No, it was just loads of little dumb things, like... They wanted the fridge here to open from right to left instead of left to right. What difference does it make? God knows. <laughs> and you think my dad's gone on a date? I was just winding him up, that's all. He said he had loads of things to do. Hey, do you want to go eat these in the car? I'd be the kings of cool. Yeah, you know, well, I did pay 300 quid for it. At least we could do is go sit in it. Hey, I know forensics finding bits of my hair in it. Well, I'll say I forced you in at gunpoint. All right, come on then. Makes you happy. A <laughs> Brazilian what? Not on the leather. All right. All I've ever done behind a wheel is just sit round here listening at radio. Except when I went down to Ted's and I actually did some driving. And if you're getting your stuntman audition, that time in the canal. You gotta admit, it is sexy though, isn't it? I mean, all this brushed metal and leather. Pity you can't drive it. Yeah, let's see, why not? Because it's nicked, because you're not insured. Well, we could take it for one quick spin. <laughs> we? You're not scared of getting caught, are you? It'd be me that'd get in trouble, not you. And who'd be shepping it to the Young Offenders Institution every week to visit you? You know you're dying to see me three point turns. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That examiner never seen anything like it. Very fun air. He said it's like poetry. Still, if you want to miss out, on the three point turns. Oh, let's both die carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, that wine. There you go, pal, keep the change. Pity the coffee in that place wasn't up to much. What are you suggesting, Mr McIntyre? Well, I can't drive home yet with half a bottle of wine swimming round my system. Just have to walk then, won't you? Come on, Gail. I'll see if David's there. I'll wait here. Watch for the white smoke. Not 
push it, right? You, you've not been out in that. No, it's a hologram. Yeah, we're still at work, really. Did anyone see you? This is a first. You bricking it? You know it's Nick's. No. We thought you bought it for three hundred quid. Well, it's a pity about that scratch. <laughs> oh, you've not scratched it. <laughs> he ran it into a police car. Yeah, and there's kebab stains on the leather. <laughs> Chill out. <sighs> I was supposed to take it back earlier. I only borrowed it from my mum's mate while she was on holiday. Now she's come back and reported it missing. Oh, great. Right, just put it back in the garage so no one sees it till I work out what to do. Oh, when do I get my money back? Ah, slight problemo. Ooh, real coffee. Don't want you complaining all afternoon like you did about the restaurant. All afternoon, eh? Figure of speech. Sorry. <sighs> you just gave the game away. 120 back. What well, was the rest? Well, you know what it's like when you've been inside. What's going on? I can explain. I'd have thought it's pretty obvious what's going on. Tell me this isn't real. It's real. You and him? David. This is what we joke about. You two at it. It's not supposed to actually happen. Tina, listen. Were you going to tell me about your cosy little setup? I was hiding part of the fun. Tina. Good to know you care. Cup of tea, anyone? surfaced yet. I've called him twice already. Tina? Your dad's here. Come on, love. How are we going to iron things out if you don't even speak to me? I've seen this on Jeremy Kyle. It's like I said to Gail. They've got some adjusting to do. We've got some growing up to do. Last. Morning. Do you get my messages? I ain't played them. What's the point? I'm sorry you're upset. You lied to our faces. We didn't enjoy sneaking around. <laughs> All the earache I get about lying. I'd rather have a thief than a liar. I know. Life isn't always that simple. Total waste of stress, dude. Look at them. They just want to go for long walks in comfortable shoes. We're sorry we messed things up. Well, There's no worries. I just have to find a new job now. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, come on. We'll have to go flat hunting as well. Why? Anybody think we were mass murderers? We've fallen in love, OK? Too much information. We're entitled to a love life too, you know. It happens all the time. It happened to you two. I'm going to work. Yeah, I'm going to kill myself. He won't. I'm off to work. Whatever. Talk later? You mean you'll do the talking and I'll do the listening? Come on. Don't worry. I'll have a word, OK? See you later. Take care. Oh, brilliant, Mum. Bag yourself another psycho. You've always got to be centre stage, haven't you? No. I've got bad news for you. The sulking, the guilt trips, the silent treatment. It's not going to work. You've got so many good things in your life. Tina's one of them. I'm one of them. You have got the best mum you could ever have. And you resent her feeling happy. After all, she's done for you. She's entitled to a life as well, you know. Somebody to hold her, to cherish her. There's enough of her to go round. You're better than this, David. Get a grip. I'll 
I'll sit out here all day if need be. Gail and me had a pact. To lie to our faces. I know. Oh, great. So now you're going to get me the sack. We both hated the secrecy. We didn't want to make a big deal of it. There wasn't that much to tell at first. We flirted a bit, had a date. It grew stronger and stronger. All right, get the picture. We didn't want our relationship to affect yours. Come on. You can understand that. Gail and I have spent most of our time together talking about you and David, whether we should tell you, how, where, when, whether you're going to be mad or sad. At least now it's all out in the open. Oh, yeah, such a way off. <sighs> Not. Dad, we've been acting different for ages. Wearing new aftershave and new clothes. I skitted you about it. I know. And you told Gail you always ended up hating every woman I went out with. Did I? Hmm. She called a summit. Tried to dump me. You put the fear of God into her. No one's died. No one's got cancer. I've fallen in love with your boyfriend's mum. We agreed no more secrets. This is different. I'm on top of things now. I'm not going to mess this one up. Why can't all four of us be happy? You'll always be me number one. Listen, how do you fancy running the bookies for a while away? Collie Nolan's quite fit. You're joking, are you? She's old enough to be a man. Exactly. Knows what she's doing. Hi, boys. All right, Mrs. Pete. What you two need is space. Freak. Unhappy about me seeing Joe. Boring. One minute's a state secret and the next one talking to death about it. Well, I do have a life of my own, you know. At least I'm supposed to. Yeah, I know. I think the world of Joe. I love him. You said. He makes me laugh. Makes me feel safe. Makes me look forward to the day ahead. Well, they have been in a good mood lately. Now we're starting to think you're on happy pills. <laughs> if you want me to stop seeing him, I will. What, for real? For real. For you. I don't want you moving out, checking in your job. We've put a lot behind us. I won't jeopardise that for any man. Yeah, you'd be all right, Misery, though. <laughs> you'd be on my case big time. I hope it's perfect. And Gran would be giving it. Oh, the light's gone off inside her. No! I don't think so. Those spotlights are exactly where you wanted them, Mr. Windass. I can show you the original plans. I've sorted every snag you've come up with. What? No! No, you have to pay up today! The workmanship will be there within the hour. Flaming windasters, I have just aged five years. You know, he well milks that cripple routine. What's up with it now? Oh, you name it. Stalling, basically. Can usually see it coming. Right, we tell them straight, pay up. They're gonna try and knock me down, I know they are. Tell them to swivel. I need that seven grand, David. All of it. Every penny is spoken for. So what are we waiting for, then? See that? See what? It's meant to glide. Like Tarblin Dean? It's fine. 
Well, that cupboard up there, you've got to yank it with all your might. It's an accident waiting to happen. Oh, it's easy for you. You're a fella. There's nothing wrong with that door. There's nothing wrong, full stop. They're playing for time. Dream kitchen, you said. We have fitted the kitchen you ordered. It's time to pay up. We spent more on this kitchen than any car we've ever had. You haven't spent a bean yet. I want me money. Disappointment doesn't even begin to cover it. Th them handles aren't what we picked. I can show you the paper what you signed off on them. We're at cross purposes, mate. I'm not your mate. Twisted iron, I said. Gothic. And then you changed your mind. And then I changed it back again. We've got rights. So have I. The right to be paid for a job well done. It's a botched job. Mr Windass, there is nothing wrong with this kitchen. If your wife's gone off it, it isn't my problem. I want the kitchen I ordered. If you'd like different handles, I'll sort it after you've paid me the seven grand I'm owed. If you're going to play silly beggars, you, you can do one. Look, he's not a registered charity, all right? He's running a business. Go on, get out! Sue him. Think people like that are frightened of the law? I bet he's well coining that disability. Seriously, take him to cleaners. By the time he gets to court, I'll have gone under. No way. That seven grand was all that stood between me and ruin. Bankruptcy? I've lost that contract in Mond. You're messing that, you all 12 houses! Mm, they scrapped the whole development. No one's buying anything, least of all kitchens. I turned down three jobs for that London contract. This is bad. That seven grand would have kept me afloat. So what then? You just roll over and die? You've got to sue them for every penny. You slugged your guts out on that job. You don't get it. The wheels have come off, David. I lose the business, the roof over me head, the woman I love. So no opa like me got to offer a woman like Gera. You give us a minute and I'm supposed to phone Daryl. We're meant to be on the lash tonight. Yeah, no rush. Dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Eddie! Vernon, I'm on you. Joe's thinking of changing the name of the business. Kitchens for scumbags, what do you reckon? Sling your hook, lad. Oh, I think it's got legs. Well, speaking of legs, can I just say congratulations on your miracle recovery? Well done. Uh, for your information, he has good days and bad days. Well, have you informed the benefits office the happy news? Don't push it. Me? I'm the one sitting pretty. Well, sitting, anyway, and you. Seven grand kitchen, and what's it cost you? Ten mugs of tea? Look, things are a bit tight at the moment. Shut it! Well, we're not paying! There's nothing wrong with this kitchen, all right? It's, it's chavvy and horrible, OK, but it's well made and well fitted. How are you going to pay up or what? Put it down on Palump. You can't even reach the worktop. Seven thousand pounds. Deal or no deal? Have a name for what you just did. Obtaining money by menaces. Oh no, sorry. There's nothing clever about violence, you know. There's no Nobel Prize for thuggery. Oh no. More to the point, anything like that scares the life out of me. And me too. So why the hell did you do it? 
Because, Joe, I couldn't just stand by and watch somebody treat you like that. And I know how much you need that money. And plus, if I'm honest, I like having you around. And so does me man. Spare me the soft soap. I'm being serious. Look, she's been skipping around like a teenager since you came along. And it's nice to see. The fact remains that if customers get the idea that I send bully boys around every time they're late with a payment, you and me's out of business. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, go and treat yourself. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. On condition you never pull a stunt like that again. I don't think we ought to stand it. Right then. Okay, I'm gonna bank this. You can take the rest of the deck off. Thanks, brilliant. And David, dog on telling your mum and Tina we've had money troubles. This is just between you and me, okay? Not a problem. Good lad. See you later. Threat him in, isn't there? So, I gave him my best stare and scared him out after death. Ooh, <laughs> what's your best stare like? Oh, believe me, Graham, you do not want to find out. Oh, yeah, I do. All right, well, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> what? You look like a... What? Like a... <laughs> A disgruntled glove puppet. Yeah, like you could do better. <laughs> yeah, alright, brace yourself. What was that? What was that? Oh, yeah, well done. <laughs> so, what exactly did this bloke look like? Evil scum. Brink said there are three basic human needs. The most important is food and shelter. Number two, it's being loved. What's number three? On in a widescreen telly, but whoa, <laughs> one step at a time. I haven't got a girlfriend yet. <laughs> so what kind of girl are you looking for then? I'm not fussy really, as long as she's a supermodel. <laughs> I like Kate Moss, and I reckon she'd like me too. I mean, she's always had a soft spot for dead legs, but... Well, she lives in London. I mean, it's a five-hour bus journey. So, I've decided on Agnes Dean. She's a local girl. All right, sorted. All you need to do, then, is find out where she lives, go around her place, and ask her out. Nah, that's way too obvious, no. Now, what I need to do is, I need to find out where her mum lives, then knock on her door and offer to do her garden. Free of charge. One day, when I'm weeding the garden, up drives Agnes in a red Ferrari. Agnes's mum says, Allow me to introduce you to Graham. He does my garden for nothing. Oh, that's very kind of you. Graham, why don't you come to Paris with me? And off we go. Anyway, enough about me. Let's hear about you. So, after you gave him your baddest stare, what happened next? I already told you twice. Oh, go on. Yeah, tell us again. I looked at him and I said, uh, are you going to pay me or are you going to get battered and still pay me? It's up to you, Windass. Say that again. Windass. The Windasses? A bad bandido, senor. They are not the kind of people you mess with. <laughs> it must be a wrong family, mate. Nothing scary about the bloke I saw. Uh, Eddie, you were called. Eddie's not so bad. But Gary, his son, he's a maniac. And his uncle, Len, he's even worse. Yeah, yeah. A mate of mine, right? had this ice cream van. Well, Len told him not to play his jingle when he drove past his house. My mate ignored him. So, Len and Gary hijacked his van and took him for a little ride. Oh, yeah? And what happened? No, wait, let me guess. The force fed him 99s and drove him round round the park till he was sick. <laughs> no one knows what happened. My mate refused to talk about it. 
But a week later, my mate sold his ice cream van and now he just stays at home. Never answers the phone, never leaves the house. Yeah, so what? So, if I were you, I'd put that money in an envelope, shove it through their letterbox and flaming leg it. I'm not scared of lying, cheating, low lives, all right? You are a plucky little jockey. And it's been very nice knowing you. Big, was it? Not exactly, but what size got to do with it? Hey, the Cray twins were only five foot seven. Or was he bigger than that or smaller? Smaller? How much smaller? About an inch. 20s, 30s, 40s? No, he was younger than that. Younger than 20? A bit. Sounds to me like you lot have just been mugged by a little Jimmy Cranky. Nah, he was armed. What with? A stick. A stick! Oh, well, not a stick. Dad said it was more like a, a rod. <laughs> like one of the metal ones that you used to pry stuff open with. It would have hurt. You big Jesse. so cheerful about. Seeing you for one thing. What are you doing this weekend? Not a lot, as usual. Why? I wonder if you fancy a few nights on the Cornish Riviera. My treat. Well, that would be wonderful. Can you afford it? Oh, yes. Things are picking up nicely. David's a good lad. Is he? <laughs> There's nothing to look so hey, that's him. <laughs> What? Him over there, that's the joker who sold us the kitchen. I thought you said he was a kid. No, that's the kid's boss. The fella who set him onto us. Mm. Come on, what are you waiting for? Well, not now yet, Lemon. There are witnesses. We need to wait until he's on his own. He's laughing, see? He won't have much to laugh about <laughs> by the time we finish with him. <laughs>